Hello, everyone. Good morning, evening, afternoon, or otherwise. We are back with Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood, post Stormblood, New Game Plus. On the last time, we met Asahi, also known as the brother of the former Viceroy uh, Yotsuyu, Viceroy of Doma, who lost her memory in an accident. Not an accident. <laughs> Calling, calling the siege and flooding of Doma Castle an accident. It's kind of like calling, like the hurric uh, Hurricane Katrina, a little bit of a of a storm. But uh, yeah, it uh, we we sieged Doma Castle and like took it down basically, and it fell on top of her and Gosetsu. They both survived. However, Yatsuyu lost her memory. And, uh, just a little bit of a whoopsie. And, uh, Asahi, her brother, came to collect her. Um, however, uh, unfortunately came to the knowledge that she lost her memory. And, uh, proposed that we make peace with Garlemald and has been suspiciously reasonable in both his acknowledgement of of Garlemald's, uh, the Garlean Empire's shortcomings and their fault in the summoning of, uh, in, the, in perpetuating the Beastmen to get so desperate to summon more uh, primals and is just like being super duper sus. He's telling us everything we want to hear and being super duper like, condescending about it and then at the end he just straight up said I hate you to the warrior of light so uh yeah suspiciously reasonable yeah but uh yeah and right now we're gonna go meet with Gosetsu again Gosetsu and Suyu who has been the uh that has been the new name that Yatsuyu uh, that uh, Gosetsu has given Yatsuyu shortened it to Tsuyu Ah, Victor, impeccable timing. We have just received a letter from Lord Hien. Oh, whoops. Uh, he writes the Doman efforts with the blue to maintain contract watch over the red. Sorry. By staying on the lookout for signs of crystal hoardings and the like, they mean to nip any summoning attempts in the bud, thereby satisfying the conditions for peace set down by the ambassador. For the Garlean's part, the Popularis has have sent word that the vessel bearing Doman cons uh, conscripts is soon to arrive in Yanksha. Oh yeah, this is another thing. A an exchange of prisoners of war. So, uh, yeah. So they have some of our people, we have some of their people. Twould seem that the prisoner exchange is to proceed as planned. Lord Hien requests your presence, and I share his view that you should be on hand in at this critical juncture. Yep, gotta have a bodyguard. According to the letter, Yotsu's memory has yet to return, so it looks like she'll be living out the rest of her days in Doma, assuming the ambassador means to honor the agreement, of course. Before we get to that, however, I think it would be wise to assess her condition one last time. If the Domans have missed any, uh, any change in her mental state, however slight, it would be better if Asahi weren't the one to spot it. Agreed. Let us make straight... Uh, straight ways to the Enclave, then. Lord Hien will be waiting. Victor looking good? Thank you. I trust you will cope in our absence, Tataru. Don't worry about me. I'll be f I'll be fine. Just be sure to come back safely. Ba -da -da. Ba -da -da. Alfredo's been keeping a very careful count of his coin lately. I doubt he'll be asking for a sip of water without asking the price first. Hee hee hee. Oh, Tataru, you... world-destructive little pint, you. Oh, jeez, all the way over there. 
Okay. Uh, tile docks. Wait, can I just like take this dock to Yangsha? Is there a way to see? Dome and Enclave? Okay. That is a good idea. Do, 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 do. Tataru would be a scary addition to the Syndicate. I would much prefer Tataru on the Syndicate than, you know, Lollarito or that all according to plans chick. Because Tataru, Tataru is actually benevolent. Map doesn't let you check the Enclave from Yangsha for some reason. Yeah, weird. Ah, I see my letter reached you across the Ruby Sea. Thank you for coming so swiftly. Though I wrote at some length on the subject of the forthcoming exchange, there was one other matter I neglected to mention. It concerns Gosetsu. As you may have observed, he returned from his ordeal rather worse for wear. And despite his best efforts to conceal his condition, or perhaps because of them, he recently collapsed. Oh, uh-oh. Good gods, is he alright? Confirmed to, uh, confined to bed and grumbling without cease, but he has shown signs of recovery. He made me promise not to tell you, lest you worry unduly, which w was all we very well when you weren't here. <laughs> now that you are, however, I think it high time he receives some visitors. Might you spare him a moment? Yotsuyu has scarce left his side. And I imagine you are curious to see what has become of her as well. We will visit him as once. Victor, Alize, shall we? Open wide now. <laughs> Please to you. I'm not so frail that I cannot feed myself. Oh, sure. <sighs> Grumpy grandpa. I'm weary of the taste of gruel. You don't like it? Can I fetch you something else? Aww. Hi, wine. Or if that is not wholesome enough, I don't know. A sweet persimmon from Namai? I enjoyed them in my youth. You almost forget that You almost forget that she was a war criminal. <laughs> I mean, it's not the same person anymore, you know. She uh, for all intents and purposes without her memory of who she was, this is practically a new person. But you know, it's hard to it's hard to get rid of that mindset, you know. Yeah, she's hey, been ship of Theseus. No mind. I am full. Besides, we have guests. I hope we are not interrupting your meal. We had heard you were confined to bed and thought you might welcome some visitors. Wife? I don't think anymore. I think, uh, do we wife? No. I, th I think she's like, her, her like, mannerisms and I think is too childlike to really wife. Like she, she might as well be a child now with how little she knows. She is baby, yes. Confined to, a gross exaggeration. A trifle drain from my exertions, perhaps, but with a little rest, I shall be fighting fit again in no time. She is daughter now. She is baby. A baby. Take off your clothes. Oh. Gosetsu, is this how you've been spending your time? Gosetsu would never. My lady, I assure you, this is not. them we need to wash you you stink <laughs> there we go see <laughs> only wholesomeness in this house 
What are all these scars? There are so many of them. Oh, yeah. Uh... Yeah, those are bullet holes. A life of battle will leave its mark upon a man. Is something wrong to you? It's nothing. I'm fine. Did he ever get the bullets out? I don't think that's all that relevant. But leave me be, woman. I will not be fussed over like some newborn babe. <laughs> <laughs> Grumpy grandpa. They make a convincing pair, do they not? On first acquaintance, I would think him dot a gr doting grandsire and her a model grandchild. Indeed. Had someone told me a year ago that I would live to bear witness such a, sh a scene, I would have declared them mad. That aside, I am relieved to see Gosetsu has, not lost, uh, has lost none of his spirit. But what a turn of events. I mean, for her to suddenly be watching over him. It couldn't make it up. Although I suppose Kosetsu is an old man. You call me old! <laughs> With the way he charges through life, it can be easy to forget. Aye, he has resisted decrepitude with the same defiance he showed the enemies of Dorma. But no matter how adamant his will, no man can carry on forever. He has pushed himself beyond the limits of endurance too many times. Even if his health returns, the fact remains. He will never again be the warrior he once was. He has given his all for liege and land, and he will ask no more. Oh, we will ask no more. And what of his nurse? If Yotsuyu is feigning that, well, she certainly has me fooled. This is no pretense. Who said that? Oh! <gasps> Now that's wife. Yugiri! Out of all of us, I would think you the hardest to convince. So what makes you so sure? I have been spying on Yotsuyu from the shadows, waiting for the misstep that would betray her ch charade for what it was. But her mask has never slipped, not once. She has remained in character from the first. One evening I watched her as she sat in her chambers unguarded and alone. She had taken the dishes from the cupboard and was pretending to prepare dinner right there on the tatami. A child's game. Even the wearier shinobi would not go to such lengths. I can but conclude that her mind is truly broken. Well, that's good enough for me and everyone else I would hazard. Aye, the matter is settled. Yotsuyu will become Tsuyu and begin a new life here in Doma. Before that can happen, however, we will need to present her to the ambassador one last time to prove that her memory is truly gone. But I would not risk parading her in front of our returning conscripts. Her precedence at the exchange would only stir up her mutinous thoughts. Understandably, she is as good as fastened... Uh, uh, Fasten the chain, uh, she's as good as fasted the chains around their necks. Aye, which is why I mean to conclude this business with Tsuyu first, out of the sight of my countrymen. Will you help me? We are at your service. There is no higher purpose than the pursuit of peace. My thanks. The Garleans are on their way, and we must prepare to welcome the ambassador. We will meet you at the docks of Tsuyu, with Tsuyu. That's uh, really generous of you, Hien, to give them one last chance, just to be sure. Not that the Garlands would give us that same uh, thing. Oh shit, I'm still on Baomung, that's right. Oh, I forgot about that. 
Uh, it's because I was playing with some friends on Balmung last night. I'll be moving back to Brynhildr soon. <laughs> uh, once we're out of the Enclave. I promise, that's, that's it. That's the only reason why I'm on Balmung. I have a couple of friends on Balmung, and I was helping them through some Shadowbringer stuff. We like to meet on the same server. My bad. I'll be hopping back to Bryn soon. <laughs> Don't know if chat will. Chat never believes me. Shall we wait here then? Lord Hien should not be long. By the way, let me know how the audio sounds, if it's too loud, too quiet. If I'm too loud or too quiet. My friends, have you seen Suyu? She is nowhere to be found. Oh, already? We just left. What? But the Garleans will be landing in a matter of moments. If she fled, could it mean her memories have returned? I know not. Yugiri is scouring the streets as we speak, but is it possible Tsuyu has left the Enclave altogether? Time to search. Captain, a word. Did you perchance carry a fairly skinned woman across the river? A fairly skinned woman, my lord? I don't rightly know. I think... Uh, yes, yes, my lord. Now that you mention it, there was a lady among the passengers whom I do not recall having seen before. Her face was hidden by the brim of her hat, but I remember taking her hand and helping her onto the boat. White as new-fashioned snow it was. She was someone important, my lord. Have I done something wrong? Wrong? No, no. I was merely hoping to catch our guest before she departed. Be at ease, Captain. Okay, so now she's in Yangshia. Twould seem that Tsuyu has crossed the river. Kami, help me. No good can come of this. All right, well, Suyu lost in Yangsha. It would seem Suyu has gone unrecognized thus far, but Kami help us if someone catches a clear view of her face. I must find her before that happens. The responsibility of her dif disappearance for all of this lies with me, but I would ask for your aid nonetheless. We're at your service, Lord Yen. All right. Let's go find her! We have no way of knowing where Suyu is headed, so we had best divide our forces. I will take Kasukari, uh, Kusakari and its surroundings. Alfno, if you would take the road to Castrum Fluminus. Victor, forgive me, but I... Could I ask you to interrogate the res, uh, resides of Yuzuka Manor? One of the Namazu may well have seen our quarry. If everyone is in agreement, let us board the skiff and hope the Kami smell upon our efforts. What could possibly go wrong? You know, the nation that she has ever tortured for so many years that see her as, as a demon and a devil, possibly seeing her again without her, her knowledge. What could possibly go wrong? All right, I'm gonna swap back to Bryn real quick. Sorry, I just feel more at home on, the, on my home server. I didn't even realize I was on Balmung. She's that bad. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's a she's a war criminal. Straight up war criminal. Murdered people make people murder each other. Torture. Gave up uh vital information from her nation. She betrayed her own nation. <laughs> Gave international secrets away. Emperor uh, Capybara, thank you for the read. Welcome, everybody. All right, let's not let's not throw stones at Balmung, okay? The memes of Balmung aside, Balmung is a fine server. It's no better or worse than any other server. Let's be nice.
Well, welcome, Emperor Capybara. Welcome. This is Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, do be careful of spoilers, not to spoil uh, the chat or anything like that, because although I have played through this, uh, there are some people in the chat who have not and are experiencing the story with us. Is something wrong with that server? No, it's just got a reputation as the RP server and all of the negative connotations that comes with it. But, like, it, it's no better or worse than any other server, in my opinion. Like, sure, there are a lot of gatherings in certain areas, but I think any server with a high population is going to have that eventually. And there, not that, the, and there's nothing even wrong with that. Like, RP, even ERP, like, we meme about it, but there's nothing wrong with ERP between, like, two people in a private area, two consenting adults, you know? Welcome to your, uh, Yuzuka Manor. Yes, yes! If there's anything you care to know, you need only, hmm, a pale skinned woman. I have seen no such traveler, I'm sorry to say. Most sorry. Scaly skin Namazu, on the other hand, we have an abundance. Hmm. Your RP in Japanese DC makes for decent gil? Oh, yeah. I think it's like 100k an hour. Not that I would know. I'm making a guess. long as it's not public RP. Yeah, it's like, find a private place. Unusually pale skin, yes, yes! I saw this woman on the way back from my fishing trip. She had just crossed the shallows east of here and was headed in northeasterly direction, for the most part. Her steps did not seem certain. If you hurry, you might still catch her, yes, yes! Uh, what is... What's going on here? Hmm. Yeah, use an apartment. There are apartments in the game, and they are in huge supply. On occasion, and not just on Balmung either, on occasion I'll see like two people with the RP tag in like their small clothes in like a secluded area in a town, in a starting town, and I'm like, why? Go, go somewhere else, please. In fact, that happened last night when I was playing with friends. Hmm. RP is explicitly allowed as long. So the thing about RP, right? RP is not inherently lewd. The term roleplay does not have lewd connotations to it. It just means roleplay. Right now, what I'm doing is roleplaying. I'm roleplaying through the story as my own character, you know? I think there's there's such a dumb stigma that RP is automatically associated with erotic roleplay, but it's it's not. Roleplaying in an RPG, yeah, it's it's literally in the genre RPG, role-playing game. Roleplay is not inherently lewd, and people who think uh, don't RP around me clearly don't understand what RP means. D and D is RP, you know. See, there's nowhere to be seen. Uh, a cursory glance is all that is required to confirm the suspicions. It is the same hat Yatsu was wearing when you first saw, when you found her in Sasazuki. Ooh, Sakazuki. Victor, before you ask, our search for Kasa, uh, of Kasukari, uh, Kusakari and its surroundings has yielded exactly naught. Save this chance reunion with you, I suppose. Mistress Alize has gone to assist her brother at the castrum. It was she who informed me of the situation. I joined Lord Hien here shortly after, thereafter. How did you fare at uh, Yuzuka Manor? Any signs of our missing guest? I found this hat. Towards Namai, by the Kami. If the villagers recognize her, I will not. It will not end well. We must hurry. You, Giri, and I will check the pad paddies. The village square is yours. Oh, 
What could she be doing all the way out here? Don't actually remember. Greetings. Might I have one of your... Wait! Please! Oh! I only wanted a persimmon! She wanted persimmons! Oh! For Gosetsu. Kami, save us! Her spirit has returned! She's back from the dead to seek her revenge! What happened to her hat that she wore on the boat over here? I'd assume she's just being clumsy like a kid. Like, she's got the mind of a child, essentially. It can't be. She couldn't have survived. Oh, she's starting to remember. What did I... What, what did I do? As if you don't know! Good people of Namai, be at ease, I pray you. You have naught to fear. My lord, forgive me, but what is that monster doing here? They told us she was dead! I too was surprised to learn of her survival. More even than you, I would hazard. T'was I who cut her down, I who left her to her fate. But it would seem the Kami had other plans. By some miracle, both she and Gosetsu were spared when the keep collapsed, though Yotsugu's preservation came at the cost of her memory. You're saying she's forgotten? Forgotten everything she's done? Lies! Lies! My lord, she would say anything to escape punishment! What does it matter? We have not forgotten her crimes! And we demand justice! I beg of you, Lord Hien, draw your blade and rid us of this canker! What I saw then, it's all true. I'm sorry! I'm so, so sorry. You're sorry, and what? We're supposed to forgive you. Here, there's no need to cry. Can't you see how scared she is? How can you be scared of her? She's not the same. Until such time as her memories return, this woman shall be known as Tsuyu and treated as a citizen of Doma. I will, however, see that she is watched at all times. Rest assured that there will be no more unannounced visits to the village. As your lord, I ask that you leave her fate in my hands and suffer her to live for now. Please, Issei. All right. I'll keep my peace. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters.
Now that cutscene brings up a very interesting question and continues the, uh, the themes of the cycle of violence. Now, some, now that, I think that cutscene does a lot to make you sympathize for Yatsuyu. And I don't think Yatsuyu should be sympathized with. I love Yatsuyu's writing. L let me make it clear. I think she is one of the better written characters in Stormblood. I don't think anything redeems her. I don't think anything can redeem her, really. But I don't think the story is trying to. Um, I, and I feel as though that people who forgive her are missing the point. She's not to be forgiven. Even if her memory is lost, you know, someone did those things. The person Yatsuyu did those things. Even if this person is not Yatsuyu anymore. Even if she came from a shitty background and, you know, a lot of things kind of justify her anger towards the world, it does not justify her actions. Um, because her actions were a choice. They were a choice that she made. Yeah, it's very much cool mode of still murder, but I, I say the the alternative that this game is really, really good at, where it's still murder, but I get it, right? No, she shouldn't have done. It's like yes, you can sympath. You can. I, I think she is a tragic character. She's not a sympathetic character. She's a tragic one. Yatsuyu is to be pitied. Yatsuyu is not to be forgiven or empathized with. Um. And, you know, you have to keep in mind, and I say this because I think a lot of people are more forgiving of Yatsuyu's character's actions than I think she deserves. Um, people tend to forget all the scenes where she did awful shit just because she has a scene where her new per this new person is feels bad about all the things that the previous person that she was did. Tsuyu is a completely different person, might as well be. Yatsuyu is, yeah, and Fordola, exactly, yes. I think Yatsuyu and Fordola are both great examples of, like, you can get where they're coming at, but you still can't, you still gotta condemn their actions because their actions were their choices. They chose to do that. Nothing forced them down that path, you know? And there are other characters that we have met in the past and will meet in the future who have shitty situations who didn't choose to go down this route. Namely, guess what? Raoban. Raoban is someone who chose to be better than the circumstances of his life, who decided to do choose not to go down the dark path. And he is the answer that I give when everyone's, and anyone who says, oh, Fort Dola or Yatsu was justified. No, they weren't, because Raoban exists. But she's hot, so she's totally forgiven, anyway. That would have been better avoided, but at least it did not end in bloodshed. And judging by Tsuyu's reaction, she remained oblivious to the events of her former life. This is no escape attempt. Nay, it seems it was an offhand request of Gosetsu which brought her to Namai. She came in search of persimmons. Ah, and they say fruit is good for their health. I do hope Gosetsu finds the taste to his liking. Well, we certainly taken long, uh, the long way around. Let us continue on to Castro Fluminus and our meeting with the ambassador. Alphano and Alize should still be there conducting their search. What shader am I using? I'm using a custom shader, uh, where I base it off of G-Shade Gameplay Legacy, but I've made so many, like, alterations to it that it might as well be an original preset. So, uh, in case you want to see them, here are the settings. Uh, if you want to just, like, clip it or screenshot, here are my settings. And it's very, very subtle. It's just, uh, a slight bloom, some anti-aliasing, uh, a slight saturation boost and contrast boost as well. I think it does, and also depth of field. I think it does a lot for the game. The slight bloom especially, I really like. And also one thing, um, keep in mind that F uh, UI restore has to be at the bottom because if it doesn't, then you see the, uh, the depth of field is going to mess with the UI. You see at the top right how it's like blurred as well. So 
UI restore needs to be at the bottom because basically the order it's doing is making sure that that happens after everything else is done. Thank you for the umbrella, Danny. Nice samurai outfit. Became a member of the syndicate after uh, earning enough money in the arena. It took him seven years. Yeah. Now, did he? Should he have had to do that to actually be respected? No. But you know, victim of circumstance, which you know, Yatsuyu and uh, Fordola are also vi victims of circumstance. That is the only thing they are v a victim of circumstance. Nothing else. But uh, Raoban shows that you can be better than the circumstances of your life. It seems our Imperial guests have already arrived. It is time to meet with the Ambassador. Now, one thing that I think most people can agree on is even though, you know, they, they should have done better in their shitty situation, I think it's of everybody's responsibility to make sure that shitty situation does not happen again to anybody else. Basically, make the world a better place so that there will be no more Fordolas or Yotsuyus in the Lord world. Hien. Not to mention my dear sister. A pleasure to see you too, Ambassador. Forgive us our late arrival. You have our people aboard the airship? Exactly as agreed. We would leave you in no doubt as to the purity of our intentions. I dare say it was the self-same spirit of cooperation which prompted you to bring Yotsuyu here today. Mm. Indeed. Before excluding her from the exchange, I thought it only fair that you see her condition for yourself. Physically, she is in fine health, but her mind is unchanged. So I see. He seems snide. Oh yeah, every word he says is extremely snide. He he talks like we're babies. But all need not necessarily be lost. In anticipation of this tragic turn of events, I took the liberty of inviting some special guests. Oh fuck. He is very much Teleji, yeah. Credit to the writing team and the VA for making him so punchable. Ah, Yotsuyu. You look well. Like, he is Dolores Umbridge levels of hateable. Yeah, or Joffrey, yeah. Uh oh. It's her parents. <laughs> of all the people. Is something wrong, dear sister? These are our beloved parents. Does not the sight of them bring back sweet childhood memories? Oh, oh, using trauma as a weapon is a new level of low. Yeah, adoptive parents. <gasps> I have to take this to Gosetsu. Yes, yes, go to Gosetsu. <laughs> it would seem my little surprise was not sufficient.
Mm. You needn't glare at me so, Lord Hien. I merely did what any loving son would do for his family. Lest you doubt, I am content to leave the acting viceroy in your care. Pray, treat her as you would any daughter of Dorma. Oh, God, this guy. Ugh. We can't punch him. He has diplomatic immunity. We're trying to make a peace treaty right now. So we can't punch him. Do not grow too fond of this place, dear sister. You will come back to us ere long. Yep, also, yeah. We continue with the exchange as planned, then. Holding war prisoners is also... We can't really... Very good. The structure across the river should serve our needs. We shall await you there with the conscripts. If you would bring your captives. Agreed. Since when did diplomatic Until immunity then, allow you to be a butt? Since the fact that he holds a bunch of Doman citizens in his, you know, care right now. I mean, there's unfortunately nothing we can do. I knew better than to trust Asahi, but that was a dirty trick. Still, unpleasant as it was, we have a, at least put the matter of Suyu's future to rest. I have sent her back to the Enclave with Yugiri to give Gosetsu his precious persimmon. Come, let us follow them. You have that look, Alphano. What is it? Oh, nothing of consequence, most like. We can discuss it upon our return. <laughs> the schemer. I'd definitely risk war to punch him in the face. I would, after we get our civilians back. We should pay a visit to Gosetsu. All right. Gosetsu, are you awake? My lord, come in, come in. When Tsuyu returned, her eyes were red from weeping. She spoke not a word, simply sat and peeled some fruit she'd brought for me. She then claimed weariness and retired to her chamber. Tell me, what happened to upset her so? The ambassador arranged a surprise reunion with her foster parents. A misguided attempt to restore Yotsuyu to her senses. It was plain their presence caused her great distress, but she seemed otherwise unaffected. Yotsuyu was mistreated as a child, was she not? It was a cruel trick to use her tormentors like that, knowing the pain it could cause. I like this Asahi less and less. I think what the main thing that's bad is not, I think what makes it worse is that Asahi's basically torturing a new, a, a person who is not Yotsuyu now. Like using the trauma to give mental pain and, and agony and regret to this essentially new person who does not bear the responsibilities of Yotsuyu. Be that as it may, he has agreed to allow Yotsuyu to remain with us in Dorma. Our primary concern now is to hand over the prisoners without incident and bring our people safely home. 
I mean, there was one other detail at the meeting which caught my attention. I mean, aside from the fact that she's in the same body, like, it's not his sister anymore. But I guess the memories are flooding back. Foster I sister, assume you yeah, all but noticed the rather suspect crate within the castrum. The Imperials were quick to retrieve them afterwards, but I wonder. Out with it, brother. You fear they might contain bombs or war machines? Probably, yeah, actually. If the ambassador wanted me dead, he has had ample opportunity. No, assassination is not his intent, but we should be on our guard for other acts of treachery. My lord, forgive me, but the lady yachts you. She's gone. Oh god, not again. Gone? I beg your pardons, my lords. I was certain she'd fallen asleep. No, no, the responsibility is mine. Twas I who gave her a room instead of a cell. She may simply have wandered outside. We will organize search parties. Might I call upon your assistance? All right, here we go. Ah, oh, shit, here we go again. Sephiroth Strife, thank you for gifting a sub to Jam and JD. Help! Help! Careful with the spoilers, chat. Like, your your comments about your opinions of these characters when we don't know them yet. If only I hadn't remembered. He should hate me. But I will not suffer his kindness. Not after what I did to him. Now, one second. I think this is an interesting... I don't think it's fully just Yotsuyu saying this. I think this is a mixture and conflict between Yotsuyu and the new person this new consciousness sue you because now she's having a conflict of interest the normal yatsuyu i feel as though would not have this conflict but the fact that sue you this new person that has grown to be this kind-hearted soul who just wants to help gosetsu i think that is influencing and just kind of like conflicting with her old self and I think that's cool. Who's there? <gasps> oh, it's you. What are you doing out here in the dark? This is the Enclave, is it? When the soldiers dragged us back to Doma, you were the last person I expected to see. She probably can't handle this kindness. I think that's true as well. I think both can be true. I think it can be a mixture of Tsuyu's influence on Yotsuyu and Yotsuyu, like, I, I think Yotsuyu without Tsuyu's influence would not pay a second mind to a random act of kindness because she is so far gone and just, like, doesn't care anymore. Um... 
but I think it's, yeah, with this new person, Tsuyu, and her personality kind of being willing to accept kindness, uh, influencing Yotsuyu's trauma has made her just, like, realize that uh, maybe she doesn't deserve this kindness. You're the bane of our existence, Yotsuyu! A font of misery! Yeah, yeah, Dragonfire, I agree. You couldn't even do us the simple courtesy of dying, could you? Oh, no. You had to live and taint us with the shame of your failure. We had a perfect life in the capital, and now they're making us wallow in this muddy ruin like common swine! I don't deserve this! Oh, oh boy. So, I try to look at the perspective of every character, even in, in the ones that it shouldn't be justified, but, um... who oh boy. Now, now, dear, that'll do. There seems little point in berating the girl when she scarcely remembers her own name. Our time would be better spent contemplating how we're to survive this unhappy predicament. <laughs> You've kept your looks at least. I suspect you'd fetch a handsome price with the right buyer. <laughs> Maybe enough to get us to Kugani and start a new business. Oh, you abs... Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm urged to murder. Oh. Ah. <laughs> 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 <sighs> uh. My beloved parents. No sooner do I wake from gentle slumber than the world returns in all its cruelty. Yes, this is how it always was. How it was meant to be. Very well. If I cannot escape my nature, then I shall embrace it. To the very depths I have sunk, my soul steeped in spite and rotten to the core. The self-righteous hide behind justice, but I need no such mask. Father, mother, was it not you who made me into this monster? Who taught me the truth of this miserable world? And that is the whole lesson in this. And I know we meme about the whole, we live in a society sort of thing, but like, again, I really like Yotsuyu and um, uh, Fordola in that like, they are of victims of society, you know? It's like society made them in a way into who they are. Now, of course, once again, it is their choice what they do with what society gives them. So they're not justified, but you kind of get, you know, how they got there. For years, I knew naught but the taste of pain and humiliation. But the time has come to savor my vengeance against Dorma, against all my enemies. And here, once again, and it begins with you! Yotsuyu! <laughs> what? And they are getting their just desserts. They created Yotsuyu, so they have no one to blame but themselves. No! Did I not say you would come back to us? The Imperials didn't exactly force her Doman parents to sell her. No, but the Imperials did provide a, an environment 
for Dolmans to feel so oppressed that they might get so desperate as to sell their own daughter, you know? They provided an environment in where people get so desperate as to do awful shit like this. Brother dearest, what a surprise. Basically, fuck the Garleans. There's a lot of... Th you always were a cold-blooded little worm. I doubt you thought twice about sending our parents to their deaths. Here's uh, a, my personal belief, and maybe this is a, a naively optimistic one, but I feel as though most people would not, most people who resort to awful things would not do those awful things had they been in a better, you know, had they have a better life or have a better circumstance that doesn't, you know. It's like the whole thing, right? Where it's like a man steals food when he's starving, right? Your dagger yet drips with their blood, and you presume to judge me. To be frank, I didn't think you had the strength to slay them so cleanly. A single thrust each. I'm impressed. But surely you can't be satisfied with murdering a pair of doddering elders. You yearn for a deeper vengeance. Asahi. And the power to see it through. Asahi, you're enabling right now. Yeah, maybe it didn't affect these particular parents. Who knows? We don't really get to know them well Please. enough to know what they would be like. I don't want to die. Mm. Any sign of her? What happened here? So, uh, Yatsu, you, uh, her parents are awful. I knew what would happen if she recovered. And still, I did nothing. You say she left with her brother? Whatever he wants with her, he was willing to pay for it with his parents' lives. But, this is neither the time nor the place. We must gather the others. Is this her fault still? Eh, there's a lot of gray. I think this is one of those, like, quandaries that has no right answer. I broke the news to Kosetsu myself. He was quiet. I think it best that he be allowed some time alone with his thoughts. This is where I think more sympathetic characterization of the parents may have helped. I don't think it's necessary. You know, like I say, a lot of people are victims of their circumstance, but like it is true. Chat brought up that some people really are just genuinely shitty. I don't know. They're they're fine. They serve they serve their purpose, and they don't need to be any deeper than they are. So, my friends, that which we have feared has come to pass. Yotsuyu has gained, regained her memories and returned to the Imperial Fold. It is, by any measure, a cruel twist. Not least for Kosetsu, but one which does not invalidate our agreement. According to the terms of the contract, we were bound to surrender Yotsuyu into the Garlean's hands should her condition improve prior to the hour of the exchange. By that reckoning, all is, if not as it should be then, as it must be. This I can accept. Those were the terms. But what I cannot accept are the unconscionable lengths to which Asahi went to achieve this outcome. Given his recent conduct and his apparent admiration for Xenos, it is plain he cannot be trusted. Oh, really? You don't say. And that is to say nothing of the unexplained con uh, containers he insists on bringing to our meetings. Whatever the ambassador is planning, I think it unlikely our negotiations will end peacefully. In the events of hostility, the safety of the conscripts must be our first concern. 
As such, I would have an escape route in place before her meeting begins. The meeting begins. A wise precaution. If the main structure of the Castrum flu uh, Fluminus is to be the stage for the exchange, then I believe a thorough inspection is in order. The Citadel has stood empty ever since the Imperial withdrawal, while we took steps to ensure that it c can could not be defended by an occupied force. It is entirely possible that the Ambassador has arranged things there to his advantage. I will slip inside and make certain that we have unobstructed, uh, an unobstructed exit. Pray allow me to join you. I have some experience of Imperial facilities, and should matters take a turn for the worse, I would hope to do at least some use. Very good. That should be enough to guarantee us a way out of the Castrum. Beyond that, however, we will need a ship to ferry the conscripts back to the Enclave. With every skiff we have, it would take several trips to evacuate, it, evacuate everyone. Our confederate Sekibune, eh, Sekibune, on the other hand, would require only a single run and leave us far less vulnerable on the water. Assuming, of course, Rasho can be convinced to part with one. Might I take the lead on this? I've had dealings with Rasho and his pirates before. Uh, yeah, no audience spoilers. Even though it is New Game Plus, we're just keeping the it's spoiler f spoiler free for the audience. And I would not be alone, will I, Victor? Uh, <laughs> you can count on me. Yeah, fun time with Alize. Much appreciated. I quite fancy parlaying with pirates again. I just it's just a shame Lise won't be there to reprise her role. I am certain you would make a persuasive pair, but I think accompanying you in these negotiations all the same. My lord, if the ruler of Doma should not be seen uh, should not be seen consorting with common brigands. Come now, you giddy. They stood with us against the Empire. If we would ask their aid once more, we must treat them as equals. My presence shall serve to demonstrate our sincerity. Damn. He is such a good leader. Indeed, my lord. Pray forgive my presumption. By your leave, Master Alphano, and I shall be about your task. Did you deliberately go with silver hair for Victor because all the signs have silver hair? No, I did not. It actually used to be like dirty. I actually went for a dirty blonde because he's based on my first D&D &D character, Rat, which is also who is also named Victor Quibbles. But it slowly got more gray over time and I kind of liked it. It still got more color than the other scions, though. There's a hint of like dirty blonde in there. We should be on our way back to Onokoro. Time is short and Rasho may take some convincing. So many signs are white haired, yeah. I guess would you count Tataru and um I mean she's she's a scion, but she doesn't go out and do the field work. Cause Tataru's got pink hair and uh Cryo has blonde hair. Now, there is a face I did not expect to see. What brings the noble lord of Doma into the company of bilge rats such as we? If you've come to offer Doman chains in place of Galleon ones, then I'm afraid you've wasted a trip. Ha ha ha! And what fine subjects you would make. With the, your fleet at our disposal, our restoration efforts would be hastened tenfold. But let us speak seriously. I stand before you not to demand your fealty, but to request your aid once more. Falamin is blonde too? Yeah, but, you know, I think she's retired. That'd be amazing if she came out of retirement to fight in Endwalker, though. Mayhap you are confused. Doma's liberation was but a means to an end. We aided you only to save ourselves. Now we have no such incentive. We have sworn no oath to you and will not come running like hounds at the master's whistle. 
and I would not presume to treat you thus. I come to petition your cooperation as an Isle ally of equal standing. Equal standing, you say? Seems a bit lopsided to me. Where's the profit for us in all this? Profit? Must you always think in such short-sighted terms? Have you ever heard of doing the right thing? Have you ever heard of pirates, little miss? You'll find we're sim we're simple souls. You pay our tithe, you sail in peace. Deny our due and we'll take it by force. You, uh, we'll pull out the water if, you do, uh, if we see you're drowning, but we're not in the business of doing something for nothing. <laughs> Calm yourself, Mistress Alizé. We, will, we did not come here to moralize. We came here to talk, and there is more to be said. According to the records recovered after the liberation, relatives from your Doman-born brethren were among those conscripted into the Imperial Army. And as you may be aware, we recently negotiated the return of said conscripts. Many, alas, will arrive to find no families waiting for them, no homes to grant them shelter. I would ask that you offer them a place in the Confederacy. Whoops, I didn't read the rest of that. I accidentally clicked. You seem well informed of our affairs, Lord Hien. The losses we suffered at the Garlean's hands are no secret. But since we drove them out of Dolma, the Ruby Sea has come alive with traders and travelers. So many vessels to tax, so few pirates to tax them. We could do with some more hands on deck, and doubt doubly so if they're familiar with the inner workings of the Empire. Man, you guys would love it in Uldar. Very well, the Confederacy agrees to your request. We will have your ship. But before that, you must do something for me. The vessel I have in mind was damaged during your battle with the Empire. Though we have mended her, she has yet to declare seaworthy. She is sound enough down below, but when you load her up with conscripts and the water rises, those upper planks had best be free of cracks. All right, fix the boat. Not this, Doman Lord. If we each inspect a third of the ship, it shall be done in thrice. In trice. That's a spirit. All right. And I thought I had a knack for parlaying with pirates. For the record, my previous attempt was an unmitigated success. And yes, I should have quit while I was ahead. Oh, I was say. Ever the prideful. Well, I thought the room is exaggerated, but the young lord lives up to his reputation. Oh, they like him. That's good. It's good when even the low lives uh, <laughs> see you as a decent leader and trust your word. Time to do a little bit of chores. Clean those cracks. Fix it. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum 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 bum. What up, Captain? Hi, I'm the shipwright, er, uh, apprentice shipwright. Did you find anything? The section I inspected seems solid enough. I found a few cracks in the front. On the port side, near the boat, you say. All right, I'll have a look. My apologies, I seem to have lagged behind. I could float in that gentle sea all day. Otherwise, I am happy to report no visible crackings or holes in my section of the hull. Oh. <laughs> You, you, your Lord Hian, the captain sent you to inspect the hull. Kami, have mercy. Forgive us this discourtesy, my lord. Ha, huh. this is quite all right. In fact, I rather enjoyed it. I take it you are from Dolma. Yes, my lord. The Imperials took my father away after the uprising, and I had nowhere else to turn. The Confederacy became my family. But someone told me they're releasing the conscripts now. Maybe my father will be among them. Not that I can go back. There's no leaving once you've joined. 
How fares our lady? Is she sip, ship, uh, is she seaworthy? Captain, we found a small crack in the port side, but I'll have it fixed before you know it. Mm. it seems you've got a few prisoners of your own. I see you have met the boy. Did you tell you his story? He babbles when he's nervous. Should his father be among the conscripts, as he hopes, I mean to give him the choice to leave this life. If he so chooses, I expect you to see they are provided for. Oh, that's nice. I have heard that those who joined the Confederacy forwear all ties with kin and homeland. Is that oath so easily put aside? If I allow it, I see him, uh, I see in him the lad I was 25 years ago. You say the words, you mean them. But the yearning for home still lingers. My family is long dead, and I know this life is my lot. But he has scarce dipped his toes with us. If there is life for him in Doma, he should have that chance to live it. Well said. The Empire's conquest has uprooted many and more, be it in Yangsha or out in the Ruby Sea. We have the duty to ensure that Ihanashi and the others like him are free to dwell where they desire. Then the matter is settled. I will make preparations to cast off. He's a good captain. Well, my friends, it seems we have our ship. Let us return to the Enclave. Alright. Back to the Enclave. Yeah, there's a lot of nice writing for the minor NPCs. Seems you carry an alpha not completed a task before us. All right, we scouted the structure and. Determine the swiftest path to safety. In the event of hostilities, we will leave the conscripts outside with all possible haste. From there, the Confederacy has pledged a ship to ferry us across the One River. Now we have but to attend that, the exchange and pray that the Kami, to the Kami, that these precautions were unnecessary. Ooh, <laughs> that's a nice little composition there. While we are, were putting our contingency plans in place, I left ha Hakuro in charge of the organi organizing transport for the Imperial prisoners. He will see that they arrive at the appointed hour, leaving us free to rendezvous with the conf uh, Confederate allies. Come, they wait us on the riverbanks, uh, riverbank not far from the castrum. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, everyone. Let us go save those prisoners. Exchange. Exchange those prisoners, I guess. Several billion cutscenes will play in order. Please assure you have eternity set aside for them. To Castrum Fluminus. Not now, this is in Praetorium. Praetorium isn't even that bad. Well, actually, it is. I'm probably... It's probably Stockholm Syndrome. After you do it so many times, you're just like, ah, whatever.
party is assembled then. I am I'm ready for whatever lies ahead. Regardless of the ambassador's intentions, we'll bring, we will bring our people home. Yugiri, you are to evacuate the conscripts at the first sign of trouble. And meanwhile, uh, we, meanwhile, shall cover their escape and lend what support we can. Our ship awaits you at Castrum Loading Docks. She will see you safely home. And all stand ready to play their part. Come, let us be about it. Pray better than Castrum because of more alt-tab options, yeah. And higher XP rewards. Never do I feel safer than inside a Garly and Imperial Castrum. A more containers. Okay. At last, the hour has come. The conclusion to these negotiations will mark a new beginning for Dorma and the Empire. A first step on the road to peaceful coexistence. Why are you still talking Indeed. like that? We are ready to proceed with the exchange when you are. <clears throat> Forgive my curiosity, Ambassador, but is there a purpose to these containers you bring with you? Oh, the supply crates. They are filled with materials we hoped might be of use in Dorma's restoration. I meant to gift them to you at our last meeting, but we had so much else to discuss. Supplies like what? Like, g give me examples, Asahi. I need... I need examples. How very generous. I confess I had not expected such compassion. Welcome though it is. But then I was also surprised by the news that one of our captives had delivered herself into your custody ahead of time. A minor discrepancy I shall overlook in the spirit of the occasion. Are you Literally perhaps all referring to me, Lord Hien? Oh boy. Yotsuyu. Orphan of the Nayuri. Widow of Sashihai. Please don't judge, but I'm in love with a tyrant It doesn't irk me that she's bitchy and violent And maybe one day she will notice me And gently tell me to remain silent And I'd follow orders and be like a good boy She may be evil, but she's also hot She's back, baby! And acting viceroy of Dorma! You and your people are mine to govern! Alright, now we can mine kill her! Mine to punish! <laughs> now we can kill her! Well, well. It would seem your shattered mind is mended. As per our agreement with the Ambassador, you are free to return with him to the Empire. Your authority as Acting Viceroy, however, is no longer recognized here. Damn right. <laughs> My position is not for you to decide, little lordling. Oh. All who resist the rule of the Empire must be purged. Such was the order given to me by Lord Zenos himself. Zenos is dead! At least, as far as the public knows. I will reign here in this putrid, pestilent swamp until the last of you has been broken. This land shall know no dawn. I will spew forth darkness and drown all in eternal night. And high above you I shall shine, uncaring, cold and distant as the moon! I don't think you believe that, Yotsuyu. You want to be. Oh my fucking god, it's crystals. Hey, look at those supplies. Oh boy. Ah, 
shit. What has you done? Oh, gods. This is a summoning. Everybody put your sunglasses on. citizen has called forth an icon in direct violation of our primary agreement. Oh my god. The negotiations have failed. Abandon the captives and make preparations to withdraw. Oh, I hate Asahi so much. Oh my god. He planned this whole thing. You can't... Oh, you know what's really despicable? Is he's taking her back as a Garlean citizen, and yet he called... You can't have it both ways, Asahi! But how, that's how he's gonna spin it. Fucking he oh, it's a Doman citizen. Oh no, they broke the pact. Fucking oh, fucking ooh, oh. Now this is a hateable villain. <laughs> but ambassador, disobey me, Pylus, and you disobey the Emperor. Make preparations to withdraw now. As you command. Yeah, he knows something's up. <laughs> but Ambassador, you're full of shit! My lord, you must fall back! You ask me to run? Don't want to be tempered, do you? Uh, a strategic withdrawal, just like we planned. Spare my pride, would you? <laughs> I know this foe is beyond me. The field is yours. We will withdraw, but not without our countrymen. I want every soul accounted for. Every soul! My lord. I knew you would not flee. I see now the strength which flows from that baleful light. Uh, well. But I am become Skuyomi, goddess of the moon and divinity of night. What power can compare to such celestial majesty? Uh, at the very least, we finally have a chance to talk. I shall plunge all I despise into darkness. And within that black abyss, even your light shall flicker and flicker. Fail. Yeah, the Japanese Kami of the Moon. Yeah, it's a moon bunny. Come. Look, she's even got bunny ears. Let us cast the stalks and look upon the fate of Dormen. I see a future in which the sun sets on this wretched land. Once and for all! Luminous. All right, first, I'm going to go back out um, to uh, where everyone else was to recruit some people. So, uh, Yangsha, I'm going to go pick up everybody. 
and I will use the duty finder over there. <laughs> because everybody's waiting outside, I assume. Bye, Sukiyomi. <laughs> Wait, come back. Oh, what do I do now? <laughs> Yep, on my way. Can you do these fights solo? I think I possibly could. They're level 70, and if I unsync them, I think it will take a little bit longer than a synced party. <laughs> I can't believe Asahi betrayed us. Whoa, who would have called that, guys? Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. What an asshole. I couldn't see that coming. All right, now this. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna need my A team. So, Danny, you're coming along. Minori, you as well. Graha, you. Zeke, you. Um, Valerie, let's see, what is that? That's five, six, seven, eight. We'll go, we'll take Valerie. And rival, I think sometimes you haven't had much of a chance. So, uh, uh, crystal? Yeah, crystal. You haven't. I don't think you've gotten a lot of chances to play. Pew. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And our last spot, we'll have a uh, loyo. Whoop. There we go. Oh, sorry, Ash. <laughs> a little late. Maybe next time. Let's see. So I'm going to write down the names of the people who aren't in this trial so that I can bring them into the next one. Hold on. I'm going to get a pen and paper or something. I'm gonna actually write it down this time so I can remember. Uh, there's a pencil. Okay, so. High priority for the next duty will be Turvy. Um, Megalar. Rival. Saranthos. Greenage. And Ash. You guys will be high priority next time. I have you written down. All right, Confederate Skipper. Actually, I can just use the duty finder right here. Okay. Castrum Fluminous. And uh, let's see. Wanna do min eye level? Or nah. So I got plenty of time today. Lots of time. <laughs> Good with that if the others are. All right. Minimum item level. Let's go. Shoop. This one's fun. Minimum item level. Also, I just like it to uh, be longer. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, we didn't see the cutscene. Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna exit real quick before we need. I, I want to show the cutscene. Hold on. I'm so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> so sorry, everyone. I forget. I turn that off whenever I go and play. You know, off stream, and I keep forgetting to turn it back on. <laughs> so so sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we we beat her. Look, see, we're back. <laughs> We beat her. All right. Oh, Zeke's watching the cutscene. Oh, whoops. Give it a bit. Okay. So sorry, Zeke. Yeah, Zeke's uh, going through this the first time, so we'll wait for him. Finally, I may- wait, where'd you go? <laughs> Best speed run ever. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now Zeke's back. Okay, so sorry, everyone. 
Gotta go fast. Danny one punched her, yeah. They call they call him punch your face for a reason. She became a hot bunny girl before bunnies were a thing. Actually, I don't remember. Was this was the uh, Stormblood Alliance raids out during this patch? At least the first two must have. I think we met Fran at that point. That's a long pipe. This was the same patch as Lighthouse. I'm pretty sure Lighthouse is when we met Fran. Alright. Here we go. Oh, 5.3 was Lighthouse. Okay. Oh, it's going to be a long night. Oh boy, don't threaten me with a good time. Well. Ah yes, insult me more. Owie. Nightfall. Oh, the fans. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh, boy. There we go, safe. And there we go. We're only 4.3, yeah. This is uh, reaching towards the end of 4.3. I think, or like the middle, I'm not so sure. The audio sound good for everybody? It's not too loud, because it, it's extremely loud for me. All right, time to kill the ads before they reach. Thank them. That's good, that's good. Okay, Ooh, stack, stack time. Oh boy. Oh, wow. So that's a, a line stack. <laughs> Rip, Zeke. Your death will be all the sweeter. Owie. Why does it fade away? Ah, I understand. It feeds on my spite, on my suffering. Come forth, shaders of the dead. Shades of the dead. Curse my name, strike my body, fill my soul with blackest malice. Oh, it's her parents. A font of misery. That's what you are. Oh, it's her parents. Ah, oh, shit. This is sad. Yep, and the Empire. Grab those. I was the bane of your existence unto my very end. And Asahi. Xenos, the one she feared the most. Your pitiful fortunes can bring you no lower. Be gone. Stay behind me, Tsuyu! Yes! You have no place here. Yes. 
You must survive, Suyu. The Kami spared us, and we cannot repay the boon in death. Perhaps, but it is too late for me. There can be no redemption. There can be atonement, though. You just gotta stand in the different one before you reach a full moon. Ooh, like this. Them. There we go. All right. Oh, Danny, I got you, bud. All right, I'll stand right over here so that we can quickly flip between them. I don't remember this one. Oof, all right. What? <laughs> Her delivery is really funny with that. What? All right, here they come again. I think this is the safe spot. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I too far to stack with that. Uh, I was in the line. Yes. Web. Web. <laughs> she just sounds kind of like Star Scream. <laughs> Frieza, yeah, yeah, Frieza as well. All right, kill the ants. Watch your moon as well. Your end is near. Oh, sorry about that cone. F for crystal. Oh. In sunless gloom, black tendrils tree. Oh, that's a hard hitting raid wide. Y'all might not want to stand there. She does a cone. I'm just gonna direct over here. No. No. Not yet. Not yet. Yes, please. Oh, that's a that's like an Ockmorn. Okay. Whoa. I moved out of that a little early. Reprimand. I think that's a okay. Just gonna move her over here so that her cone doesn't hit anybody. Yep, here's the good one. Very nice. Very nice. Man, she has a lot of health. This side is the safe one, I'm pretty sure. Well, over there as well, yeah. I'm gonna move over just in case if there's gonna be a stack. Twenty-eight percent, we got this. 
Yeah, it's just routine now. I'll grind you under my heel. Oh shit, this is bad actually. A does it. <laughs> Ooh, that's getting dangerous, Lula. <laughs> Wow, you guys are so good. Watch yourself, Valerie. Valerie! Valerie! Oh, Valerie! It's where you weren't supposed to stand. Yeah, she's just repeating now. Okay, we're fine. As long as we can recognize I'll patterns. Twelve percent. All right, come on. We just got to do that one more time. The quicker we can kill her, the less we have to worry about mechanics. Yep, there we go. Very nice, very clean. And Bard LB! Uh, yeah. All right, two percent. We got this. I'll grind you under my heel. Point five, and you're dead. Top five most fun normal trials? Agreed. Ah, uh, I wish we had that scene because that, that would have been a great place to screenshot. All right, thank you, everybody. Hell yeah. Yes. Good. Let's take a screenshot, shall we? Everybody do your thing. Sit reset if you have to. Yeah, white hair. Let's do this. All oh, joy. I'm gonna keep Yahtzee you in the shot. That's really funny. <laughs> we did it! Yahtzee is dead on the floor. This isn't about her. There we go. Perfect. Hooray! We killed a war criminal. Look, she's right there. Uh-oh. Oh, no, Danny. Oh, no, Danny DC'd. Oh! Rip. <gasps> Crystal? Hi! Hey! Is that Crystal the coolest person in the world? Hey, guys. We're doing Final Fantasy XIV. We're approaching the end of 4.3. So keep in mind, uh, be wary of spoilers if you don't want to be spoiled. 
Uh, but yeah, we just beat Tsukiyomi. Uh, Yatsuyu, the war criminal, with a sympathetic backstory that does not necessarily redeem her. I, I had a long, uh, in-depth conversation about the nature of these villains, so I won't go back into it. If you wanna, if you wanna hear it, it's earlier in the stream. Welcome back, Danny. But yes, welcome everyone. I'm currently doing New Game Plus, uh, 14's MSQ to catch up before Endwalker to get a refresher. I have played through the story before, but for the sake of those who have not, in the chat, no spoilers. Just in case anybody is experiencing the story with us, either in real time or for the first time ever. Uh, you know, and ha do, does not have the game. So please be respectful of keeping spoilers out of the chat. Uh, as best you can that includes things like oh, I you know like l Giving your opinion on characters because you know the people don't know But uh, yeah We killed Yatsuyu Well Tsukuyomi Yatsuyu is still alive Okay, well Oh, also, 10 minutes ago, Tavern Cat Records. Hey, Tavern Cat, that's the person who makes music for me. They make music for Necro Hunt, and they wrote the, the, uh, the full version of the Crap Guide theme. Okay, that's a little unnecessary. You really must learn to finish the job. Ah, uh, I had it under control, thank you very much. Tis true that a gaudy mirror and a handful of crystals make for a feeble summoning. But even the weakest icon is a god of souls. Oh my god. A threat that must be put down. And here, so... Here's, here's another thing I really like about 14, is it makes the power scale reasonable, you know? Just as he confirms, this is a weak summoning. You know, we were lore-wise, the cannon, although we fought with a full party, the cannon is that we fought her on our own. Now, at this point, the Warrior of Light is a very skilled and experienced fighter. So fighting uh, Primal on their own would still be a hard task if it weren't for the fact that it's a very weak summoning. Just like he said, it's a weak summoning. There was only one person summoning as opposed to the many, uh, just a handful of crystals, you know. She's not all that powerful. So I like that it keeps the power scale kind of in check. My, my, such hostility. These beings are the sworn enemies of the Empire. I merely did my duty as an Imperial officer. Oh, shut up. Will you surrender to anger then? Slay an anointed emissary to avenge a fallen foe? Ugh. You know what? I very well could. Hien and Yugiri are going to save the civilians. I don't have use of you anymore. You already broke the pact. Ha! You cannot, of course! To do so would be... Burn the bridges we have labored so hard to build. Oh, but I can tell your intentions aren't good, so fuck those bridges. Oh, but I'm forgetting. They're already ash. Yeah, exactly. This doorman woman has seen to that. The Empire cannot ally itself with any nation that refuses to renounce summoning. Oh my gosh. I believe I was most clear on that point. Oh, fucking, oh, fucking, ooh, this guy. <laughs> ooh. It should have been mine. The power he bestowed upon her. I should have been the one to govern Dorma. I would have repaid his faith. No one alive loved him more than I. Okay. Instead, this harlot betrayed his trust. Useless piece of filth. Worthless whore. It wasn't me, I promise. Though I had full motive. Thank 
thank you, dear brother, for this precious gift. Vengeance. These people, our people, they ignore the corruption which festers beneath the surface. Cast aside that which is dirty and broken. Speak not of things which would disrupt their dreary little lives. Like you, Asahi. Always pretending not to see. You were the first. The first I swore to kill. Yeah. She killed so many people when really all she needed to kill were the people that made her hurt in you the first place. Audit, dear brother. I saved the last of my strength just for you. <laughs> Maybe the real people we needed to kill was the friends we made along the way. <sighs> ah, boy. What's the matter? The Witch of Doma will soon be dead. I like the second one because I feel like the f you shouldn't live for someone else. So you deserve the kinder fate. Uh, her happiness was never to be. Not in this world. And I like that that has double meaning. She's not just talking about Suyu there. I think what she's saying. Hold on. I, I, hold on. Uh. I think this is a double meaning, that not just for Tsuyu, but Yatsuyu herself as well. She believes the world too cruel to live in uh, for anyone so innocent. And that's tragic. That's real sad. I wonder, was the fruit as sweet as he remembered? Tsuyu did nothing wrong. Yatsuyu, on the other hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... It's over, Asahi. You've lost. Oh, no. Lord Zenos. Oh, he's alive. I mean, we saw that earlier. But is he alive alive? Is the question. I am at your disposal. Asai, you were born of Doma, yes? Yes, my lord. I am 
honored that you would remember me. How may I serve? You are hereby appointed Ambassador Plenipotentiary, and empowered to speak with the voice of the Emperor. Return to your native land of Doma, and announce your intention to sue for peace. Mm. For peace? Once negotiations are underway, you are to locate the acting Viceroy. She lives? Uh, that is to say, I will, my lord. Now, why would Xenos know that Yotsu is alive? When you have found her, you will initiate a ritual to call forth an icon. I will instruct you in the necessary steps. And why would Xenos want Primos to be summoned? Yotsuyu's faith is unreliable. But as a child raised to believe in the Kami, she will serve as a vessel for one of the Kojin's gods. She need only wish it to be so. The power will seem a gift, but the icon's essence will consume her. She will be no more than a husk, a slave to whim and desire. He may have fused with Shinryu, but he never summoned. I'm sure Xenos knows how summoning works. I mean, fucking, he's the son of the Emperor. I, I'm pretty sure he's well-read on icons and the, and the like. But the Xenos we know has no interest in summoning primals. So this is a, a strange change of motivation. My lord, ever since the day you saw fit to save my miserable life, I have dreamed of repaying your benevolence. Upon my honor, I swear to devote myself wholly to your service. All that you command will be done, no matter the cost. But, but, I fear the subtleties of your plan yet elude me. From the reports I have heard, the champion who aids the Dolmen resistance would make short work of a single icon. The icon is merely a message. The pacifist teachings of the popularis spread through this city like a plague. And I would remind the people of the threat we face. And the Xenos we know doesn't really care about running the empire or the reputation of their, you know, goals. Or or rather their their main goal to rid the world of icons. Xenos doesn't care about that. So why now? You will be my chosen agent. The hand which tolls the warning bell. The salvation of this world will not be won through the signing of treaties. Your chosen agent. Finally, a tier three sub paying off. I will not fail you, my lord. <laughs> when the tier three sub is invited to play in the lobby. <laughs> my, my master. Lord Xenos, he will come for you. <laughs> you have prevailed, I see. Oh, you brought Kosetsu. Um... She is gone. Wherefore did the Kami spare us only to inflict this pain? Oh. 
Death shall not want for company this day. You spared us a worse disaster, but I fear our fledgling peace with the Empire was beyond saving. Yeah, it was fleeting anyway. Lord Hien! Mm. Maxima, is it not? I assumed you long fled. I entertain thoughts of escape even now. But our negotiations have yet to reach a satisfying conclusion. The ambassador insisted that the summoning spelled an end to our mission here. But it seemed to me there was more to the tale. Ah. Hmm. Xenos was behind this plot. Xenos. Of course. Maybe he... Had a change of heart, a motivation. I have Who heard knows? tell of this power you wield. And in your vision, you witnessed Lord Xenos giving these orders. How can that be? Xenos is dead. He took his own life after the battle in Alamigo. I saw his body with my own eyes. But apparently you didn't see the, the eyes of Nidhogg. Lord Xenos is very much alive. He granted our party an audience prior to our departure. That he was gravely wounded is certain, but... His recovery appeared to be proceeding apace. I'm afraid I share Lord Hien's confusion. The man's death was confirmed and his remains interred. These are matters of public record. Hmm. I have no doubt you believe what you say. But what then is the explanation? That an imposter has infiltrated the innermost circle of the Imperial Court? The idea is inconceivable, absurd. Worthy of investigation nonetheless. Our movement can ill afford to have a highly placed pretender undermining our efforts. Uh, not as absurd as you would believe, my dear friend. Your efforts may yet bear fruit. Tell me, what is to become of our prisoner exchange? Though we have already taken custody of our conscripts, we have yet to release your Imperial comrades. Do you still intend to collect them? Ah, uh, uh yes. As the late ambassador's second in command, it falls to me to speak on the Empire's behalf. And I'm happy to confirm our intent to proceed according to the original agreement. Good man. Then let us be about it. It would be a pity to abandon such a promising beginning. Indeed. You have my thanks, Lord Hien. As soon as our people are secure aboard our airship, we shall depart straightways for Garlemald. Hell yeah. There are three good Garleans so far. There's Sid Garland, uh, Nero Tolskeva, and Maxima. Hell yeah. Tread lightly, Pilus. I sense treachery awaits you there. Lucia? Oh yeah, Lucia. That's right. I forgot about Lucia. Sorry, sorry. Chat's blowing up about best wife. I'm sorry. Jeez. Might I accompany you to the capital? Is Nero really good? I love him. I love Nero. <laughs> Nero's not good, but I like him. Alphano, have you gone mad? Probably. Imposter or no, if Xenos was instructing Asahi on the finer points of ritual summoning, then experience tells us there is an Asian waiting in the wings. Nero's best neutral. He's chaotic neutral. He is absolute. He's he's chaotic. Fuck with Sid. That is a line. That's his alignment. <laughs> Without our knowledge and expertise. Our new friends will be hard-pressed to contend with a foe for whom death is but a minor inconvenience. They need our help. You know, Garland, that, you know your second boyfriend after me, when he touched your leg and you nutted immediately? That was me, Sid. I used a Magitech device to cause you to jizz in your own pants so that you thought that you came at the touch of another man. It was me, Sid. Were you indeed willing to share your knowledge of this enemy... We would not shun your counsel. You truly mean to do this? In full knowledge of the danger? I have seen the warrior of light risk his life on countless occasions. Next to him, I'm scarce more than a distraction on the battlefield. 
Aw, oh, don't cut yourself some slack. You do great in a fight. But in the meeting room or the audience chamber, there I can make a difference. I can strike bargains, forge ties, and change minds. And where better to do these things than in the home of our old enemy? You do like your politics. <laughs> I believe in you, Alphano. You were born for this. It is not for me to stop you, but I would have you consider an alternative arrangement. Rather than braving the Empire as a simple traveler, go forth as an emissary of Doma. Such a position should Aww. offer you some measure of protection. He has come a long way. He's realized that leading is not his forte, but diplomacy. Go then. You've obviously made up your mind. Oh, no pleasant little goodbye. Just try not to do anything reckless, all right? Hello, kettle. <laughs> Hello, pot. Meet kettle. I shall be on my best behavior. Farewell, my friends. Maxima's a bro. All right, Ian. I knew Asahi was planning some manner of treachery, but a summon. Thank the Kami you were both, uh, you were here, my friend. None of us would have escaped Yotsuyu's vengeance had you not interfered. She was a pawn eye. She still had a choice, and she chose to submit to the ambassador's plan. It is little wonder Kosetsu departed in silence. Yeah, Kosetsu must feel awful. Like, like none of the shit that he did mattered. And, and that's, I think that's the lesson in this. Let, let me overanalyze the story one more time. I think, I think that's the lesson in the tragedy of Yotsuyu, is despite all the sympathetic nature and, and kind of a product of her environment that she is, she still chose to do these things, you know? And I think that makes her a really interesting, in-depth, three-dimensional character, is is that, you know, it's there's a lot of angles you can look at it. She still had a choice, yes. You can feel bad for her, you can pity her, um, but she had the choice. And I really like that that makes her a very interesting villain. Then I suggest we put this doleful place behind us and make for the Enclave together. It would be a shame to miss the joyous reunion. She made the wrong choices, but you can see why she made them. Yeah, absolutely. Like, although I say Raubon is the, the prime example of, of where you can turn it into a better situation, it could not have been easy. It was absolutely not easy for Raubon to become the man that he was. Aww. Let's get you out of those dirty rags. How often have I imagined this moment? Thank you for helping it come to pass. I hear people crap on Stormblood all the time. That's internet exaggerate. That's internet hyperbole. Even even me, as someone who actively criticizes Stormblood, acknowledges Stormblood has good writing. It ha it does. It does have extremely good writing. And not just in post-Stormblood. I think post-Stormblood definitely is where it shines the most. But even regular Stormblood has its moments, you know? Has good moments. I, I am confident in saying that Stormblood is good. I call it messy, I call it, you know, kind of rough in certain areas, but I do believe Stormblood is good. In before, I, I reach another messy point and then I go back on what I said. Uh, 
the internet has a problem where if something's not at least an 8 out of 10, it's trash and garbage and the worst thing in the world. I still would... Ah, there you are. I would play it over ARR any day. Your hair. My friend, what have you done? <laughs> Is this a symbolic thing? An old man who cannot raise his blade has no place in the service of a young lord. Thus did I decide to devote my remaining days to pilgrimage. I will walk this land, offering prayers of repose for all the souls who left this life in suffering. Aww. All of them? Aww. Safe travels, Gosetsu. <laughs> A fulsome farewell makes for an enjoyable journey. Scarcely have we said our goodbyes to Alphano, and you leave us too. But tis well that my companions find their own way forward. I must endeavor to do the same. I have faith that you will find the best path for Dorma without me, my lord. Pray forgive me this last act of selfishness, and grant me your blessing. You have earned it a thousand times over. Go in peace, my friend. I shall make of Doma a land where children laugh, and none need live in fear. He's not leaving the country? Well, the country's pretty big. Doma's huge. There is no better way to honor those who went before. <laughs> I love you, Gosetsu. And with that, I take my leave. So long, best character in Stormblood, Gosetsu. Setsu, fair journey to you, my friend. A bittersweet occasion, but there is yet ample cause to be grateful. Pray join us in the Kain, uh, Kain Khan. Uh, hi, hi on? I would thank you properly. Hello, everyone. I'm glad everyone was able to see Gosetsu off. Kien Khan? Kien Khan? Okay. Our brothers and sisters are returned to us, and the dream of Dorma's restoration is that much closer to being realized. It is a day that will live long in, a, in memory, and one that will never have dawned without the courageous actions of the Scions. On behalf of the Doma, Doma and her people, we give you our deepest thanks. Aww. Lest you think me complacent, I assure you, I have not forgotten the dark cloud on the horizon. That Xenos yet lives is a source of grave concern. 
Mayhap the gravest, yet there is little to be done but wait for Alphano to send word. Until then, I plan to devote myself to fulfilling the promise I made to Gosetsu by building a nation in which none need live in fear. Ah, I confess I miss him already, but the thought that he has uh, at last found peace goes some way in softening the blow. I wonder, did you ever think, stop to ask yourself why he showed Yotsuyu such kindness? I believe the answer lies in the past tragedy, specifically the death of his wife and daughter during the invasion. Though he did hide it well, they were never far from his thoughts, and in Yotsuyu's ch uh, childlike mind, uh, me mean? I believe he saw not a fallen tyrant, but a little girl who was lost to him. After the loss of his family, Gosetsu devoted himself wholly to the service of his countrymen. He suffered any hardship, strove beyond the limits of endurance without hesitation or complaint. Though Tsuyu could never truly replace his daughter, I had hoped that with her at his side, he might live out the remainder of his days in relative contentment. Would that the Kami had been so, so minded. Even now, I labor to discern any meeting in Yotsu's fate. To deliver her from certain death with no memory of her sins, only to leave her at the mercy of her stepbrother. Can that truly have been their will? That I cannot tell you. The will of the Kami is not for us to know. But what I do know is that for a brief moment, a girl known as Suyu lived among us. And that she brought with her a whisper of respite for a grieving heart. Gosetsu's arc is really good. Yeah! He was a killer for the Garleans for a little while. I think it's time we were going, don't you? We've done all we can here, and we have a lot to report. But before we head back to the Rising Stones, let's call call in at Rolga's Reach. We should be the ones to tell Lise about Xenos. After everything we went through together, we owe her that. Hien, Yugiri, it's good to see you all once again. Dorma owes you a great debt, my friend. Thanks to you, we have everything we need to prosper. You and Alize must promise to visit us, uh, us again soon. And with Alphino, too, when he returns from the Empire. Know that my thoughts go with him. Damn! Alphino gets to visit Garlemald, like, two expansions early. <laughs> However far his pilgrimage may take him, we have not seen the last of Kosetsu. Of that I am certain. Back to Eorzea! Ooh. Shiny Palace of the Dead weapon. Is that what that is? Yeah. Pajali Greatsword. I like the Palace of the Dead weapons. They're cool. I actually have, have the uh, Paladin one. So now what? Well, now we need to go check Xenos' grave. Make sure he's alive or dead. Because that's a fun little... I like that this game actually, like, acknowledges loose ends and tries to tie them up, right? It's like, if Xenos is dead, obviously he should be buried somewhere, right? So let's go check. Hi, Lise. Victor, Alizé, you're back. Hmm? No, Alphino. It's good to see you, Lise. As for my headstrong brother, he... Excuse me? Headstrong? Alizé? You're calling him headstrong? Okay. He's off on what will almost certainly turn out to be a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Garlemald. It's a long story, but we have evidence that Xenos might still be alive. But what? But that's... If this is a joke... Gods, this had better be a joke. We're not grave robbing, we're gr grave checking. 
Look, I know what I saw, all right? We all saw it. And you're here saying that he's alive and well and living the high life back in Garlemald. I know how ludicrous it sounds. I'm still having difficulty believing it myself. But while I might doubt the words of an Imperial envoy, I'm inclined to trust Victor's. He saw the Crown Prince through the Echo in a meeting that could only have taken place in the recent past. Uh, Xenos is alive. I'm not going to say it was him, but a Xenos is alive. No, it must have been, I don't know, some kind of really convincing imposter. Xenos is dead. He had a great big hole in his neck. We buried him. Aye, and some went to the trouble of desecrating the bastard's grave, remember? All right, well, that's, that's taken a little far. Falls Gilded Halls. What are you talking about? <gasps> Thancred! Thancred? What brings you to Rolga? Uh, what brings you to the Reach? Alphino had me lending a hand at the Salt Tree, keeping an eye on the rebuilding work and so on, just until operations were up and running. And now that they are, I thought I might look in on, uh, might look in on you before uh, wending my weary ba way back to headquarters. Forgive me if I misheard, but there is some suggestion the late Crown Prince could have gotten better. If so, might I suggest a quick look inside his coffin as our first order of business? As much as I hated the man, it doesn't feel right to defile his grave. But if it will put this rumor to rest, I suppose we have to. And when there's no, uh, when there are no curious eyes about, if we can manage it, Xenos is buried at Bloodhow in the locks. His grave was set apart from the others and left unmarked so as to not upset the locals. And it shouldn't be too hard to find. Nago, you're in charge until I get back. Girlfriends. When did I start playing Final Fantasy XIV? That is a long story that I'm turning into a video that I hope to get out before Endwalker. Projections for that are uncertain. Oh, looks like there's somebody already there. Oh God, please don't grave rob the war criminal. What classes would I recommend to new players? That depends. For a new player, I would recommend whichever class looks the coolest to you. Because they're all pretty balanced and have their own difference in complexity. If you're looking for easy classes, I would highly recommend either Warrior or uh, White Mage. Maybe White Mage is a little too basic and simple. Because uh, especially in combat, they have like two combat buttons. Yeah, Red Mage is extremely easy, although that does require Stormblood to unlock it. Dancer is also very easy, although that requires Shadowbringers. Um, if you want something really, if you want a easy to learn, hard to master class, uh, Black Mage is very high skill ceiling, even if a low skill floor. Um, oh, Samurai is really easy, although that also requires Stormblood. Dragoon, yeah, Dragoon's pretty, pretty, like, ease you into the DPS role, I would say. This is it. God, you better be in there. Someone scrawled all over the stone a while ago, but I had to scrub it off and though no, uh, thought no more about it. So no one thought to check in the coffin, uh, if the coffin was still occupied. Uh, oh, that's Thancred. So no one thought to check if the coffin, coffin was still occupied. Well then, we are presented with but one course of action. <laughs> are you guys dancing on Xenos' grave? <laughs> And we had best be sure we are not observed in the doing of it. Shall we begin? Hold on, I gotta shove all these people off. Get, get, get off. Oh dear. We seem to be missing a corpse. Uh-oh. Oh, the lightning, the cheese. 
Well, it must be somewhere. I only hope it isn't walking around. Hello, random member of the Reach. What are you doing? If there's no corpse, then are we to conclude the rumors are true? Not necessarily. We might have been de uh, we might still be dealing with a doppelganger of some kind. An agent could have been set sent to dispose of the body in a bid to lend credence to the tale of Xenos's resurrection. More and more, however, I find myself siding with Alphano's theory of Asian possession. Speaking from experience, I can tell you they have no qualms over about taking a living host, let alone a dead one. You're saying an Asian is walking around in the in Xenos's body? It seems a distinct possibility. Once I have put this grave back the way we found it, I shall pay visit to the people responsible for interring the Crown Prince. Before I leap to any conclusions, I want to know for sure if the, a body was ever buried here, and how certain we are that Xenos was properly dead. If he wasn't, that was some trick. He's as good as cut his own head off. Anyway, Raoban needs to hear about this. If you find anything out, send word to me at Rolga's Reach. Uh, I don't know why I'm surprised. With matters settling down in Dorma, we were due another crisis. Shall we make for the Rising Stones then? In past time, it's past time we shared these developments with the others. Oh, jeez, just teleport me to the Rising Stones, why don't you? <laughs> that was fast. Well, I was full waiting for your arrive, uh, you to arrive. I spoke with Uriange over Link Pearl and gave him a full report. Ishtola is on her way and should be here any... Ah! Hey, Ishtola. Haven't seen you in a while. Alizé, Victor, tis good to see you safe and sound, uh, safe and well. What news have you from the East? Mop, mop, mop. Is everyone teleporting with Etherite's cannon? Yes. Although not everyone. Thankward is, uh... He's got performance issues, we'll say. <laughs> Disturbing developments indeed. Given all that we know, I too would conclude that an Asian now inhabits Xenos' body. A doppelganger might fool the Crown Prince's subordinates, but Victor? Nay, Alphano had the right of it. Would that his own wisdom extended to the question of his own safety. Capable though he has become, he ventures alone into the enemy's stronghold, and the shadowy web of the paragons like as not. When it comes to making rash decisions, I'm hardly in a position to criticize, but... I'm worried. I just wish there was something I could do for him besides pray. Oh, don't worry, he's got good friends. Ever since the uh, incident at Ulta, I think Alphano has become a much better judge of character. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. We cannot suffer icons to exist. Was I not clear on this point? More than clear. The icon in question was summarily dispatched by the Warrior of Light. The summoner is dead, and the right beyond repeating. Everything proceeded according to plan. Every party behaving exactly as required.
My methods may seem extreme, but there is no cause for concern. I work only to ensure the salvation of this star. Yep, and now we know for certain that that's not Xenos. Xenos don't give a shit about this star. He doesn't care about ensuring any plans. Doesn't care about summoning any icons or any of this five head 8D chess. Hmm? What are you doing fiddling with that thing? I asked you a question, soldier. What are you? Have you lost your mind? Oh shit! How'd you do that, random soldier? I have lost many things, but my mind is yet my own. There upon the stage I stood prepared to take my final blow, only to find that the finale was but an intermission. Shall I use my chance to repent for my sins? Embrace goodness and mediocrity? Nay, I think not. While the one I yearn to face yet lives, the hunt must go on. Hunt, you say? It's been an uh, eventful few days, hasn't it? But I suppose all we can do now is wait for the word for word from Alphina. Hmm. I don't recall the last time I had nothing pressing to be getting on with. We should probably make the most of it. Shall I put on some tea? <gasps> tea would be lovely. You may regale me with the tale of your adventures in the Far East, and of your encounter with the new Primal especially. I've heard the term combat sexual thrown around seems apt. Oh yeah. I'll put on the kettle then. The table looks free if you'd like to take a seat. <gasps> <gasps> Tea time! Tea time with the girls! Upon sitting at the table, several cutscenes will play in sequence. All right. It's recommended that you set aside sufficient time while viewing these cutscenes in their entirety. I'm gonna go grab a snack. Let me be right back, chat. Snack time. I'm gonna see, while that's popping, I'm gonna see uh, how we are progressing in this MSQ. MSQ. Do, 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 do. Emissary of the Dawn. Legend returns. Emissary. Oh, this is the final. Oh, this is the final 4.3 quest. 
Shit. So this is the, the like, ending chapter of post-Stormblood uh, before setting up a bunch of uh, things for Shadowbringers. All right, sweet. Yeah, I'll be going into the next patch. Nice. This is the end of part three of Stormblood, and then I'll start part four. I should probably disband before I go into that cutscene. Okay, I'll disband. Yeah, for instance. Okay. Apparently there's an instance. Very chill scion time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl talk with tea and cookies. What snack am I going to get? I'm going to get some popcorn. But uh, I'm not going to use my hands because I don't want to grease up my keyboard and mouse. Actually, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. It allows my, my hands to move faster and I'll have higher APM. My fingers will be able to glide across the keys. Makes me a better gamer. <laughs> Notification spam warning? That's a good idea. I might want to just like system sounds off. There we go. Out of the bag after it cools down. All right, everyone, get ready for a movie. Here we go. Interesting. So, this Tsukiyomi was summoned in this much the same manner as Susano via the medium of a sacred relic. That's right. They believe their gods, or kami, reside in physical objects. Given the danger they represent, it may behoove us to begin a catalogue of such relics. But if we are to contain the threat, we will require a better understanding of the summoning method itself. I believe I shall pay visit to Doma and learn what I can on the subject. A fine idea, and I should know for a fact that our friends in Doma would be grateful for any information which could help to prevent further summoning in the region. I will pen you a letter of introduction. Lord Hian will wish to welcome you, our, uh, welcome our resident expert on etherol etherology. Greetings. Could it be that I'm in time for tea? <laughs> it certainly looks that way. Come on, sit down and tell us how your investigations went. Ah, uh, tea time with the Scions. We need a beach episode. After you left, I went about questioning Bloodhow's gravekeepers. They all told much the same story. Once Lise and her officers had confirmed Zenos, is, uh, Zenos dead, his corpse was interred under strict supervision. There seemed little reason to doubt their testimony on that point. When I mentioned the de uh, defacement of Zenos's grave, accounts grew rather more vague. None reported have seen any suspicious persons in the vicinity, and all assume the act to have been perpetrated by a vengeful Alamegan. Crucially, however, I was able to confirm that when the offering's uh, offending scroll was removed as per Lisa's instruction, no one involved thought to check the contents of the coffin. By that stage, it is like that the corpse was already missing. Assuming Xenos has not, in fact, risen from the dead, we are left with two possibilities. Either the body was disposed of to lend credence to the claims of an extremely committed imposter, or an Asian has taken up residence within it. If Asahi has a fervent, uh, has as fervent a devotee as you believe, he would not have been fooled by an impersonation, however committed. We must assume that we are dealing with an Asian and proceed accordingly. Agreed. The question is, how many more such mon monsters are waiting in Alphino, for Alphino in Garlemald? 
Their presence was his chief reasoning for going. He understood the risks. I only hope he did not underestimate the extent of, his, of the infestation. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, on an Imperial hypersonic assault crafter... F what is that? 75? Holy shit. Mark 75. Oh, L25, sorry. Master Alphino, we are making good speed towards our destination. Is all to miss? Nay, tis just... I can see naught from my cabin, and was curious to know the land over which we flew. Ah, I'm afraid our military craft are built with little thought for such niceties. Uh, I am happy to indulge your curiosity, however. We are presently passing over the burn on the western edge of Arthur. Even with the benefit of a porthole, your gaze would have been greeted with naught but mounds upon mounds of lifeless earth. I have read something of the burn. It was described as a desolate wasteland, bled dry of every last drop of ether. Aye, it is believed that a succession of icon summonings was responsible. When the Emperor Solus first came to Othard and beheld this blight, he is said to have reeled at the scale of the devastation. Such was not his intention. He declared icons a threat to our very star's existence and issued an empire-wide decree ordering eradication of all such entities. Report, and real quick, I wanna go, and here we can see a little bit of inkling of the Empire's motivations as well, where it's like, you know what? They, they kind of, you kind of see where they're getting at as well. It's like they want to protect the land, although by through subjugation and fascism, but they do have a place where they're coming from. We're under attack, sir, Magitek armor, no visible designation. Magitek? But who? Uh-oh. All cannons, return fire. Damage report. Uh, the Empire is bad and what they do is not justified, but they have their reasonings. Yeah, it's not just like, haha, I want to rule the world because I want to rule the world because I'm evil. It's like, in their minds, they're in the right, you know? They, they, in their minds, they have a good reason, but obviously it's not a good reason. I mean, reactor's been hit. Helm unresponsive. We're going down, sir. Damn it, they knew exactly where to hit us. All hands, brace for impact. Glad to have you back, Master Alphino. We have landed in one piece, more or less. But the air filtration system is da damaged, and the ship is filling with smoke. We must gather the survivors and get out while we still can. Oh, well, looks like Alphino's gonna have to wait two weeks like the rest of us. Aye, aye. Yeah, let's go very easy. <gasps> I get to play as Alpha now? Oh! Whoa! Oh, try shackle. Luckily, it only has three buttons and limit break. Okay, Star Storm. Wow, I get to play as Alphino? Can I emote? Ah, oh, no, I can't. Oh, I can't emote. That sucks. Okay, that's fine. 
Understandably, they wouldn't build emotes for everything. All right. Might I ask you to search for survivors? Okay. So this is the first instance of role-playing, experiencing what it is to be someone else. That's really cool. Yeah, see, remember, I didn't play Stormblood. I story-skipped in and watched the cutscene, so I didn't get to experience this. Wee! <laughs> Look at me! I'm Alphano Levier. I know how to talk to people. Hmm. Search for survivors. I can't sprint. <laughs> Wee! Where are the survivors? I can physic. Um. Oh, there we go. I got you. There we go. Heal. And lift. I am a strong boy. Oh. I don't think I would have made it. Oh, never mind. I'm just aiding him. Yes, he very likely uh, have saved his life. Question of who... Oh. Wait. They've not come to parlay, I fear. Ready your weapon. Why are you killing... Why are you attacking your own men? These are your people! Moonstone Carbuncle, protect me! Strongest Carbuncle. Wait, I can slide cast. Alphano, I'm teaching you how to slide cast, okay? You better learn how to do it when I have you as a trust. All right, see? See, you can move while the cast is towards the end. Better remember this, Alphano. Oh. Oh, God. Jesus. Confound it. Not here. Not like this. Alpha, no, no! Ooh. Oh! What? Who in the Emperor's name? Enemies of our enemies, introductions can wait. You are calm in a crisis, Master Alphano. Let us finish this then. He's trained. Excuse me. Yeah, um, Fordola knows those moves. 
That's the move that Fordola used. To do a to do a caster limit break. My thanks. Your intervention proved most timely. Well, well. I did not think to meet an Eorzean in this place, let alone a Scion. You know of me, sir? I have some small history with your order. But I would speak of the present. Know you your assailants, and the severity of your predicament. The soldiers bore the insignia of the Emperor's personal guard. And I could venture a guess as to their motive, but you yet had us at a disadvantage, sir. Will you not tell us who you are? Our names are not yours for the asking. And as for your for our pur purpose, let this be your answer. An Asian mask. The face of our prey. Damn. Where'd you get the white aura sight? We must away before more arrive. Come with us or stay, but make your choice now. Even should we manage to the long trek out from the burn and secure passage to the capital, we would no doubt be greeted by the Emperor's guard. Indeed, we accept your gracious offer, um... Shadow Hunter will suffice at the present. Shadow Come. That's a lot of Asian masks. Look at that. Interesting that white one though. Yeah, no spoilers guys, no being cheeky either. Uh, this is intolerable. Much as, but as much as I wish it were otherwise, there's nothing we can do for Alphano but to pray for his success. Yeah, I'm wondering, where did he get all the white orosite? Must have been a lot. Well, that is not entirely true. Who says he did? That's true. Maybe he doesn't know about the Asian like resurrection stuff. While your brother journeys to Golomold from the east, 
I could make my way there from Alamigo and find out where, uh, what there is to learn in the Empire's western provinces. Then I'm coming with you. I can't very well sit here, sipping tea if there's action to be taken. The Black Assians don't need it? That's true, yeah, Black Assians we can just kill normally, but the Red Ones, those are special. Forgive me, Thancred. Uh, uh, forgive me, Thancred. Uh, forgive me, Alizé, sorry. Fucking, I cannot read today. But the provinces are hostile territory, and stealth is all important. It is safer than I go alone. I can sneak well enough when the situation demands it. Don't patronize me. <laughs> um, I'll go with him. I'm stealthy. And how exactly would that be any better? <laughs> um, I must refuse your company as well, my friend. Formidable though you are, the success of my mission depends on moving unnoticed. Unless you forget, you have grown rather famous. I trust you understand. Oh, thanks. Fine. Just promise me you'll be careful. Can there be voice cutscenes so I can eat my popcorn? I still have it. It's cooled down now. No, no, I guess not. Okay. It seems that praying is to be the extent of my contribution, after all. But I will stay behind, as I have been for, uh, I have been bid. We all have our talents. Mine just happens to involve a silver tongue and soft souls. I promise to send word the moment I learn all of consequence. See that you notify me, too. I mean to depart for Doma as soon as I find a suitable East uh, Aldenard vessel to bear me thither. But I shall return if I am needed. Be sure to drop in whenever you're next in the area, Victor. With any luck, I'll have a plainly, uh, painfully detailed report from Alphano to share. And thus, the end of 4.3 and the wrap-up of Stormblood's story, setting up for the next expansion. It's interesting that this one uh, leaves more loose ends than... Um, than either Heaven's Word or Shadowbringers did. Or rather, it doesn't end as definitively as Heaven's Word or Shadowbringers did. Oh, ponder. Oh, careful. Uh, waiting room. Uh, whoops. Waiting room, because there's spoilers in this room. Until, uh, I'm gonna keep it on here until I find the, uh, the next New Game Plus. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Give me a sec. There we go. I'm I'm keeping you safe from the spoilers. The Rising Stones, yeah. All right, and back we go. Stormblood Part 4. The shadow of mystery deepens as the man who wears Xenos' face continues to move unchecked, sowing the seeds of strife from the heart of the Empire. All indications point towards Asian machinations, and the arrival of a messenger at the Rising Stone sends the scions of the Seventh Dawn upon a path rife with peril towards an unknowable destination. Here we go. <gasps> Hori Boulder! Hey! After missions, uh, another mission fraught with danger, yet here I am still. Quiet moments such as this, spent in carefree conversation with comrades. I have grown to cherish most. Aw, me too. See, Hori Boulder knows that filler arcs are fun. Ocker Boulder? Though he is but half the size of my courageous brother, it would seem Alphino's bravery looms twice as large. Even Hori might hesitate before embarking alone into the heart of the Empire. He's a brave boy. It would seem Master Alphino has placed himself squarely in the path of danger. As a fellow scion, I shall render whatever aid I can to ensure his safe return. I know I need to give uh, Is, uh, Isildaur my undivided attention, but these waves of brotherly love makes my mind drift to naught places. Focus, Anor, focus! <laughs> oh, she is smitten. 
thirsty, sir? Come by the bar to get a drink. Oh, <gasps> really? I hope Isildur can find uh, someone to keep him company. With our missions, we can never linger very long. What happened? Isildur, what's up? Seeing Home going about his duties with a smile lifts my heart, even as it brings a tear to my eye. Glad though I am for his nation's liberation, I shall be saddened to see him go. Oh yeah, the the Makote, I think. Was was there a Makote? But there was a guy here that was Doman, basically, or Alamegan. <laughs> Real best boy. I'm gonna talk to you before I go get a drink. We gathered what scraps of intelligence we could. Myself from within the Eorzea and Alfano from his far eastern sources. But there is a limit to what a bloke can learn about the Empire from outside its borders. Still, I've never thanked to invite myself aboard an Imperial bloody airship. It was impulsive, reckless. You've got to admire the lad's style. <laughs> I love Riol, he's great. Alright, what do you guys got? I'm going to eat a few bits of my popcorn as well. Seven point oh will be exclusively about real. I hope they give real a voice actor. Ooh. Hey, Danny, what you got for me? Uh, surprise me, something special. Ooh, espresso. Absolutely, yes. Uh, here, I've, I've no use for this. But you could, I don't know if you have any housing, but uh, here's a pond. <laughs> Perhaps you could make do with it, but I couldn't. Thank you. I'm gonna take a few bits of popcorn. Mm, thank you, Minori, is that a kebab? Oh, no, no kebab? Okay, finger sandwich. <laughs> I will enjoy. Thank you, Danny. Hold on. I gotta eat popcorn. Must eat. Must consume. Mmm. Well buttered. All right. Back to it then. Thank you, Danny. Let's see, let's have this drink. Where is it? Uh, there it is. Get myself some energy. Victor, you're drinking nothing. <laughs> you just mimed it. Hello, Alizé. Patiently fussing with her Link Pearl. Please be voiced. Nope. Oh, Victor, you've come here hopes for new hoping for news. I'm afraid there isn't any. Everything is exa exactly as it was. Yushola is still investigating primals in the Far East. Thancred is still gathering intelligence in the Imperial Provinces. And Alphano is still out there somewhere. Hmm. There's been no word since his first scheduled report, nor does his response to call. Uh, does he respond to calls? And all the while, I'm just meant to sit here around, uh, around here waiting. It's driving me mad. Begging your pardons, I bear a message from the Aorzean Alliance. Thank the gods for that. We have a visitor. Alice a bored out of her mind. Welcome to the Rising Stones. If you have a message, I should be e most eager to hear it. Please. Please, I would like to hear it. My lady, the Alliance leadership will soon convene to discuss the matter of Asian interference, and they humbly request the presence of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Having assessed intelligence provided by the Alamegan resistance concerning the whereabouts of Xenos' remains, they too suspect Asian involvement, and wish to deliberate a suitable course of action. In the foremost authority on our foe, your Order's Council would be most welcome. Of course, 
We should be glad to assist in whatever way we can. With almost everyone else afield, I'd say this one falls to us. By which I mean, I'm not going on my own. Will you come with me, I trust? Uh, I'm not brave enough for top politics. <laughs> of course I will, Alze. Yeah, you and me, buddy. There you have it. We accept the invitation. Thank you. The time and date of the meeting will be shared in due course, but I can confirm the council will take place in Alamigo. By your leave. I somehow doubt we'll have anything useful to offer, but standing mutely at a meeting would still be better than nothing. I, I've been doing it late. Let's make ready to depart, shall we? Uh, Thancred, what's going on, man? <laughs> what's going on, man? Yo, Thancred! How's it going, baby? Alright, just be careful on the road back, you hear? Did I hear that right, Rio? Is Thancred coming back? Aye, that he is. Says he's acquired some important intelligence. Being in Garlean territory, though, he couldn't risk sh uh, sharing the particulars in case the Imperials were listening in. So he said he's headed back as quick as he could, and to make sure someone was waiting for him in, Al in the Alamegan Quarter. Understood. Victor and I will go. We're bound for Alamigo anyway, and there's sure to be time before the council begins. Come, let us be off. Oh, I'm so excited. It's like all my name days have come at once. <laughs> Actually, I do need to make some slight preparations before I go to Alamigo. And that is, since the liberation of Alamigo is all done and good, and it's time to meet up back with the Aorazine Alliance. I think I'm gonna go f put myself back in something more comfortable. Ah, shit, I can't do glamour plates here. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to New Gridania before I do. Not a new glam, uh, an old glam. Just one that I'm more familiar with. Kind of Victor's old outfit. And that is, go back to the roots. There we go. I had donned back my House Fort Tomp shield, since now I continue to fight for Ishgard. As once I did, as I always will. Return to the Red and White. Also, this outfit, like, I have just been so used to this outfit being, like, synonymous with Victor. Whenever I see somebody else wear it, I'm like, oh, they're doing a Victor cosplay, but it's like, no, they're, they're not. <laughs> they're not. They just like the top as well. But like, man, when you wear one outfit for a long time, it really starts to get attached to your character. Ingrid? You two are a sight for sore eyes. Now all I need is water for my parched throat. Fetch me a cup, will you? Uh, traipsing through the Imperial territory is thirsty work. If this were ARR, we would have to go through about five different NPCs to get that water. Uh, God, I needed that. Here. This can go so I can eat my popcorn. Breath. Whatever brought you galloping back to us, I assume it's urgent. Quiet. Without further ado, then. After the successful uprisings in Doma and Alamigo, Rebels in several other provinces were inspired to follow suit. Unfortunately, they did not fare quite so well. The Dalmascans paid the heaviest price. For their defiance, the Emperor made a show of raising their capital to the ground, prompting many of their neighbors to abandon thoughts of resistance. Holy shit. But not all have given up on liberty. Heartened by the news of Doma's prisoner exchange, some still believe that the Empire may one day be amenable to negotiation. We have the Shinobi to thank for spreading the good word. They have worked tirelessly to keep the subjugated informed, and a little knowledge can go a long way. There is at least a spark of hope then.
A spark in want of kindling, yes. The Alliance has already begun supplying materiel to resistance movements abroad, many of whom would otherwise struggle to continue the fight. The support effort has been led by the Sultana and the Elder Seedseer, who have both seen enough Alamegan refugees to know the consequences of oppression. And for their troubles, they have quickly earned a reputation as folk heroes in certain corners of the Empire. That is all for the provinces. As for the Garlean motherland itself. Our friends, the Popularis, have suffered something of a setback, I regret to say. Talk is rife that Doma has summoned a primal, and the Empire's more liberal voices are being drowned out in the fearful clamor for retribution. And who did they think orchestrated this summoning? <laughs> oh, any but those truly responsible. Xenos has seen to that. Speaking of whom, the Crown Prince is recovering remarkably well. Well enough, in fact, to enable him to personally tour the provinces, putting the fear of the Emperor into the hearts of any would-be dissidents. He walks in plain sight, and none suspect him. And it's as we feared. Yes. An Assian wears his skin. Dun dun dun! But it was not that which brought me here in such haste. During my time in the provinces, I learned many things. Yet at no point did I hear any report of a Doman emissary in the capital. But Alphano should have arrived by now. Could they be holding in there in secret? The possibility did cross my mind, but I have reason to believe he never reached his destination. As you know, Scions assigned to covert operations, such as Riol and myself, are issued special link pearls for communication in the event of an emergency. I mention this because it was originally Alfino's task to coordinate the response at headquarters, meaning he has one. And whose voice should I hear when mine recently crackled to life? You spoke with Alfano? Spoke with, no. I but heard his voice, and none too clearly at that. Two words were all I could make out. The burn. The wasteland on the edge of Othherd. Something must have happened to them there. There's no time to waste. We must make for the burn at once. I had a feeling you might say that. And? I can't very well sit around here drinking tea if Alphano's in trouble. You said yourself that this link pill was only to be used in emergencies. So I'm going, and that's the end of it. Me too! Oh, far be it from me to change your minds. Sorry for, for the silence. I was trying to get through my popcorn. I got through about half my bag. <laughs> Man, why is it always raining? <laughs> My cookbook arrived. Ah, I need to get that cookbook. If you don't know, 14 recently released a cookbook that's basically a bunch of the culinarian recipes in for real life cooking recipes. Loath though I am to neglect making preparations for the council, we must act swiftly before Alphano's trail goes cold. I propose we first pay Hien a visit. I'm sure he will want to hear about these developments and he may well be able to advise us on how best to reach the burn. Hey, it stopped raining. Nice. A sound plan. And Yishtola is in Doma, is she not? I dare say she'd join you in the search if you asked her nicely. While you see to that, I shall go and report my findings to the Alliance. You may leave any preparations to the Council for me. 
Thank you, Thancred. Right then, to Doma. We have much and more to share with Yishtola. To the Doman Enclave. Whoop. I know, Thancred's pretty hot, right? He and he and he stole her, you stole her, you stole her, you stole her, and Doma. Hmm, that is ridiculous indeed. While other matters demand my attention at present, I shall bear with you, uh, what you have, in, uh, have told me in mind. Should you notice any change, do not... Oh, oops. Thank you, my lady. You are most kind. Well, well, two faces from the dim and distant past. Come now, it hasn't been that long. How was that you were, uh, who was that you were speaking with? Yeah, so because this is like 4.4 now, uh, I assume the time between this and the previous patch in, in real time, like in IRL time was like, I don't know, like three or four months maybe? Two or three months, something like that. And that's what I presume in-game time is, is as well. Well, maybe like a couple of weeks, perhaps, in-game time. A local miner who has supplied crystals for the rebuilding effort. Of late, he claims to have struggled to find a crystal with so much as a trace of elemental energy. Upon learning that I had some knowledge of ether, he came seeking my counsel. Just now, he brought me one of his recent finds. That's the usual cycle? Yeah. It was precisely as he described, devoid of elemental energy and eerily reminiscent of the des uh, de-aspected crystals that manifested in Eorzea in the days prior to the Calamity. He would be wise to investigate this phenomenon more closely, or we would be wise. Actually, I want to see, hold on. Yeah, you see, this is what I really like about this shader, is you see the, uh, the gate uh, from Yangsha, when it's a depth of field and it's like blurred in the distance like that, it really makes it look far away. That's what I really like about depth of field. Indeed, but on a more positive note, the locals seem to have taken liking to you. <laughs> more an interest in than a liking to, I think. A sight of a Makote with a particular contraption upon her head has a certain novelty, uh, novelty value in these parts. Any actual regard may uh, they may have for me, I owe wholly to you and the others who came before. Everyone here has been exceedingly cooperative, and I am pleased to report that I have all but concluded my investigation. Simply put, by focusing one's will upon the ether-infused object of worship, it is possible to conduct a summoning. So the fact that they are objects of worship is the key. They are themselves suffused with the requisite belief. Ah! The object has all the belief and prayer that it needs that you would normally require from a bunch of people. Huh, that's clever. Correct. Such sacred relics as the Corjans collect uh, obviate, uh, obviate the need for religious fervor in the summoner. Yotsuyu being the most obvious example. She had but to associate the artifact given to her by Asahi with the divine, and it served to amplify her desires and give them form. A form nourished through the power of the crystals, also provided by her brother, and thus was Tsukiyomi brought into being. I like this, like this consistency with the rules of the summoning in this, in this universe. Which brings me into the question of preventative measures, to which I have yet to find a satisfactory answer. At present, I know of naught that will avail us, save to keep watch over the movements of relics and crystals. 
as if we did not already have enough to keep watch over already. Yeah, and it's not like you can just stop people from, you know, having sacred relics and stuff. Religion's gonna religion. We can't really stop that. But I doubt you, unless you're the Garlean Empire, I guess. <laughs> the Garlean Empire is like, oh, can't we? But I doubt you came all this way to hear that which may be perused in a report. Has something happened to Alphano? Hmm, I shall join you in search, of course. Thank you, Ishtola. I should be glad of your help, truly. Now, if there's nothing else, I shall go on ahead and request an audience with Lord Hien. Alizé puts on a brave face, but she has little talent for concealment. We should join her at the, uh, Kien Khan. Wow, never, never just sit around to have a chat, do you, Ishtola? <laughs> You know, maybe a nice little conversation would be nice. I don't recognize that. Wait! that from nobody tell me oh that's the mario airship theme mario 3 mario brother 3 dun, 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 dun. yeah pretty sure because it's mario playing it <laughs> greetings my friend alizé has explained all to me needless to say you shall have our fourth cooperation in the search even if alphano's trail does lead to the burn of all places Ah, feel the burn. The region known as the Burn occupies a special place in Garlean history. Every child in the Empire is familiar with the tale. In the distant past, it was vervent. Uh, it was a vervent land teeming with life, but successive summonings saw it bled dry of ether and reduced to a desert. It was upon beholding the devastation that primals had wrought that Emperor Solus was spurred to embark upon his crusade against their kind. And now we see as well, we're going to see, we have seen rather through Alphano being in the burn, the actual cost to the star. And when they say the star, they mean the planet. The cost of this, you know, to this planet of summoning where it sucks up ether, either passively or just like in a large, just burst. The burn offers a glimpse of the future we seek to prevent. Know you of any reason why Alphano may have gone there? Aye, mischance. Though it lies upon the route to Garlemald, it is no place to make a stop. My guess is they encountered some manner of trouble there. In any event, I am of the same mind as Alizé. We have no choice but to take our search to the burn. Given the considerable distance involved, tis best we went by bird. Victor, I... Victor and I have our yours. You, Giri, will you ready falcons for the others? I shall gather our swiftest birds. Near the House of the Fierce, there is an overlook. Pray join us there once you have seen your preparations. How's New Game Plus going? Pretty good. I like recapping the story for myself in the chat. And it's nice to have so many people along for the ride as well. It's a nice little refresher, and the fact that people are tuning in and playing with makes it all the cooler. Especially since I never played Stormblood, so... If everyone is here and possesses a bird, let us be away. <laughs> Remember, our destination is barren, a barren wasteland. There is no civilization to speak of a hundred moms in all directions. Take care you do not lose your way. 
All right. To enter the burn, let's see who's on the list. So, let's bring Turvy. Is Turvy around? Is Turvy here? Yeah, they are. There they are. Turvy, you got first priority. Then, uh, let me cross that out. Then Megalar. It's Megalar here. Um, I don't see them. Any heal and tank willing to help Zeke out? Oh yeah, Zeke is going through this as well. Somebody help Zeke. Megalar has work. Ah, oh well. Maybe next time. I'll keep them on the list. Next is Rival. Is Rival here? I guess not. Maybe they had to go do something. Uh, Saranthos. Is Saranthos here? Ah, oh, there they are. Saranthos. Then Greenage. Boop. And yep, that'll be it. Okay, next on the list uh, will be Kosa. Sa a. Uh, let's see. Valerie. Uh, Dracon. And Mimine. You guys will be the priority and Dark Quibbles. Quibbles. All right. Into the burn, shall we? We're going to do it unsynced just so we can speed it up. So, uh, undersized. So, we can actually go with all, all this, you know, three DPS if we want. I can be the healer. You don't have a healer? I am a healer. Make ready, friends! We are come to the burn! Hmm. Oh. Yeesh. The Burn and Gimlet Dark are my two favorite dungeons. Yeah, this is probably my number one favorite Stormblood dungeon. <laughs> All right, here we go. music too it's like man like it really gives you this sense of just despair like this is place is just bereft of any normal life lacking in the ether just sucked up from the land I think this one and a close second is the um, the Azim Step Dungeon. That one is, I really like that one's visuals. I just like, I'm a sucker for grassy plains and rolling hills. This is pretty, you know? Oh, well. running ahead, are we? You probably have the HP for it, all things considered. I got unaspected ether sand in my throat. Oh. 
Can I? Nope, can't stun that. <laughs> I hate sand. It's rough and coarse. It gets everywhere. No, you don't. And I do like the uh, some of the gear here. I like the, I don't know, the kind of like heavy brigadier sort of stuff. Oh, Allegan fuckery. Oh, the always with the Allegans, huh? Fucking Allegans. They're everywhere, I tell you. I'm not saying it's elegance, but it's elegance. Oh, hello. It's always the damn elegance. Damn elegance messing with everything. And now we gotta clean up their mess. That's a massive hole. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of cobblins. Defective drone. Hmm. Wonder what the Allegans were doing in this area before it turned into the burn. I wonder if the burn becoming sucked of all life happened. Did it happen during uh, our era or did it happen during the uh, Allegans time? not really known hmm oh is that spoilers okay because I don't remember you'll learn later good to know okay it is known when the burn is formed okay I guess we'll learn about it I don't know what about monochromatic areas like environments really ah like it's there's no color in this area but I don't know why I like it so much The art direction of monochromatic environments just really does it for me. I'll just eat that. I can't see anything. There we go. Oh, my Requiem cat! Ah, it's running out! Ah, yeah, sword! Ah. Oh. I'll take that. I'm fine. Doing a full pull here when Stormblood was the current expansion was hard. Oh, I bet. Yeah, sure. That'll probably turn into seals. The next boss caused so many wipes. Oh yeah, it yeah, it still does. It still really does. I kind of like it for that reason. I don't know why. It's you. Whee! Mist Dragon. Yep. We shouldn't have a problem, though. Good luck to Zeke in that party, because, uh... Actually, they might be unsynced as well. Some pals.
bunch of Final Fantasies have Mist Dragon. Oh, is this a, a regular occurring Final Fantasy boss then? Neat. That's right, because it's a DPS check. Usually anything that has a DPS check is usually something that will wipe people. And I shouldn't have hit that. There we go. Easy. I don't even think it's a DP the DPS check either. Yeah, it's well, it's the DPS check combined with not hitting the boss. Because it's like, oh boy, a, a target, I gotta hit it, and then you get frozen. Ooh, Mist Dragon card, hell yeah. Do I have that? Oh, I already have it. Never mind. Pants. Thank you, Mario. And you serpent serpent commander and uh Dragoon. Thank you. Thank you all very much. There you are. Hello. I see you made it through the storm. Between contending with bloodthirsty beasts and sand in my every conceivable place, <laughs> I had begun to despair of finding you again. Do you recognize the crashed ship over yonder? Mistress Alizé and I briefly inspected it. It is the vessel that bore Master Alphino away. But there was no sign of him, nor of Maxima and his people. Uh, that's that's a good sign, though, right? It means that they're still out there, somewhere. Elegant fuckery. Your machina. It would seem they were involved in a struggle. There may be clues. We should split up and search the area. You stole a sea's ether, so this place must look weird as hell. Oh, yeah. Probably really easy to see, like, things, since it's so bereft of ether. So anything that does have ether, it's like, sticks out like a sore thumb. These were no ordinary soldiers. Over here! The insignia on this man's uniform identifies him as one of the Emperor's personal guard. Hand-picked soldiers, answering only to the royal family. That would explain why all the casualties are Garlean. They were fighting their own. You're saying the Emperor was behind all this? That Alphano is his prisoner? Hmm. We don't know that for sure. Aye, we must not jump to conclusions. Besides, Alphino is more than capable of looking after himself, is he not? This will be his first time. I suggest we return to Doma to consider our options. Whatever happened here, Master Alphino is long gone, and any subsequent search may safely be left in the hands of the Shinobi. Alize. 
Where in the world are you, brother? If you die on me, I will never let you hear the end of it. I love seeing the more tender side of Alizé. Aww. Well, that was a deceitfully uh, uneventful journey. Decidedly uneventful journey. I almost found myself hoping for a, snow a sandstorm. Joking aside, I'd say our birds are due a good brush down and treat or two, wouldn't you? I had hoped to steal a moment's rest after our little outing, but it would seem duty calls. A foreign emissary arrived in my absence. Do not let us keep you, then. Actually, I was wondering if you might join me. I cannot think of a guest who could fail to be impressed by the presence of the Scions. At least, none I should be happy to receive. Yeah? Of course, if you think it would be useful. Thank you. Let us return to my manor, then. Ba -da -da. Yes. Best written siblings in all gaming. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree, actually. I can't think of a lot of siblings in gaming in general. Like, there's Mario and Luigi. There's, um... I'd have to take a while to think. Dante and Virgil. I, I've never played Double May Cry. I, I probably should one day. I'll just play 5, because I hear 5 is really good. Brother, A Tale of Two Sons. There isn't really all that much writing. I mean, there Please. is a little, but... Oh. What brings you here? Krom and Lissa from Fire Emblem. That is true. I like them. They're very fun. Oh, Alliance business. We have a request for Doma. Well, he and... But that can wait. They told me you were out searching for Alphino. Did you manage to pick up his trail? Five is very much a game for fans. Does that mean non-fans shouldn't play it? Well, if he wasn't at the crash site, he might still have escaped. We have to keep searching. You have to keep in mind my time is limited. I can't, you know. And we will. Alphino embarked on this journey as an emissary of Dorma. And I hold myself responsible if for I'm, a safe return. If I have enough, if I only... I will have our shinobi in the provinces search for him as a matter of urgency. Ian, please, I'm trying to talk about video games. If I only have time to play one Devil May Cry game. Chin up, Alize. You'll get to admonish your brother for his recklessness yet. Well, someone has to do it. Hmm. I'm sure he's going to be fine. There is one thing I'm Three? not sure about, though. Play two? Uh, but I hear two is bad. <laughs> or at least a lot of people don't like two, rather. You said it was the Emperor's personal guard that attacked Alphino's airship. But the Popularis would never have been able to arrange the prisoner exchange without Varus's blessing. So why would he sabotage his own mission? That's a good question. You know what? I'm going to play DMC. There we go. They may not have been acting on Varus's orders. The guard answer not only to him, but to his family. The crown prince included. When Yotsuyu summoned Tsukuyomi, Asahi was quick to proclaim that a dormant citizen had violated the terms of our agreement, that the negotiations had failed. And it is this version of events that is now being repeated across Garlemald. To hear the tale, one would think the prisoner exchange never took place. Plainly, mm. someone is manipulating matters from the shadows. Most likely Xenos, or whoever it is that wears his face. Asians do like to pull strings like that. Whichever Asian you mean, we all know the nature of our adversary. Yep. What's the one that's technically titled Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry? That's DMC. People refer to it as DMC with small m. 
DMC Devil May Cry. That's the reboot that everybody hated. <laughs> the servants of chaos are true to their name. Their meddling has cost Dorma a chance at peace. Whoever it was that loosed his personal guard, the Emperor cannot be ignorant of these developments. We must proceed on the assumption that our treaty is indeed in tatters. <laughs> but come, Lys, you have journeyed far. Let me hear your petition. Right. So the big news is that Alamigo has agreed to join the Aeorzean Alliance. Fuck yeah! To make it official and discuss where we all go from here, the leaders of the Five Nations are planning to hold a meeting, and we were hoping you might come too. We've already seen what we can achieve when we work together, and the Alliance hopes to work even more closely in future. They think it's our best hope of keeping the Garleans in check, and I agree. As do I. By coordinating our efforts in the East and West, we may be able to discourage them from committing their forces to a single front. I accept your invitation. I must, however, ask for time to attend to some pressing matters here. In light of recent events, the risk of Imperial reprisals is greater than ever, and I would not leave Dorma unguarded. Ere I depart, I must shore up her defenses. I know a certain, uh... Aura tribe that loves to fight. Understood. I'll let the Alliance know. We'll wait to hear from you before setting a date. The meeting's to be held at the Royal Palace in Alamigo, incidentally. Do you remember the way? Well enough. Please assure my hosts that I will not keep them waiting any longer than I have to. Consider it done. And thank you for agreeing to come. If we all put our heads together, we're sure to find the best way forward. I wouldn't trust Sadu to not run headlong into a laser rifle in order to feel the thrill of combat. No, 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 she wants to win the combat. She wouldn't run headlong. She would probably steal that laser rifle and use it. <laughs> My advisors and I will presently convene to discuss the matters of Dorma's defenses. You're welcome to stay, of course. Had you not offered, I would have requested leave to remain. Where the Asians are concerned, naught may be left to chance. As ever, we would benefit from your experience. I thank you for coming, Lise. Even if it was on official business, I had hoped there might be time to show you the land you helped to save. But I will settle for a fleeting visit if needs must. Uh, there never does seem to be enough time for anything, does there? But I did get to see a little of the Enclave. You've made excellent progress, I must say. And soon you'll have the chance to s see how we're getting on, too. To the meeting, then. Um, uh, Victor, I was wondering if I might have a word with you before I go. In private. Absolutely anything for you, Lise. Go on, my friend. I will send for Hakuro and the others in the meantime. Great. I'll wait for you at the docks. You stole it was out of commission in the first half of Stormblood? Oh yeah, yeah. She got uh, sliced pretty hard by Xenos. Why does Le what does Lise want to talk about? I, I wonder. She's finally going to pop the question to Monago. She wants me to be the best man. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to turn her down because I must be the ring bearer. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, I'm proud of her too. She's she deserves it. They deserve each other. What song was that? That was one of the Final Fantasy battle themes. I don't remember which one, but. Hey, Lise, how you doing? Thanks for coming. Knowing you, you've probably guessed what I wanted to talk about. You and Monago are taking a relationship to the next level. I'm very proud of you. Alizé, she's acting as if everything's all right, but it's clear she's barely coping. 
The Alizé I know is overbearing, willful, and reckless, and that's fine. It's how she deals with feeling weak. She has to keep moving, or she's afraid she'll fall apart. <gasps> hey, Digi, what's up? Hey, we're playing Final Fantasy XIV. How you guys doing? Uh, we're doing Stormblood, the post-Stormblood patch quests that are going to lead into Shadowbringer. So be wary if anyone wants to play this. Uh, be wary, there will be spoilers. But uh, hi, everybody. Yeah. And anyone who has played through it, please no spoilers, as even though I have played through the story, we're keeping the spoilers free for the sake of the chat, for anybody who is experiencing the story with us right now. But the thing about people like us is that we need someone to keep an eye on us. I had Papa Limo, and now I have my friends in the Resistance, and Alizé has you and the Scions. Before you start, I'm not saying you're neglecting her. I'm sure you aren't, and I'm sure you won't, but she's a good friend, and when I see her like this, I can't help worrying. So please, make sure you give her all the support she needs, alright? <laughs> Leave it to me. You got it. I'll look out for Lil, Lil sister friend. Thank you, Victor. It goes without saying, but if there's anything I can do, you need or you only need to ask. Well, I'd best be off. See you in Alamigo. <gasps> PT Protag, thank you for gifting five subs. Very generous of you, thank you. Hell yeah. And I like this, I like this arc that we're starting with Alizé. This really is, like, Heavensward was the chance to get to know Alphino, and Stormblood is the chance to get to know Alizé, and I really like this little bonding arc that we get with her. It's a fun one. Lise gets a lot of slack for her character writing, but I actually like her. I feel the same. She's got, she's definitely got problems, and I, I won't ignore that she, she has a little bit of things that could be worked on. But I, I also personally like her. There you are, my friend. Everyone has assembled. If we are to ready ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, Yugiri, and correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. But... And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. Ah... In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Suinosato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmaska. Wow, you're getting the entire continent in on this. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Oh yeah, Dalmasca. That's the uh, evilest raids, the alliance raids for this expansion, which I did not do because I don't have the time. Under the guidance of our I mean, I did leader, do, but not in New Game Plus. Soir, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten, but the Garleans have airships, lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. And how do you propose we do that? 
During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some elegant ruins. Right. Oh? As such ruins go, they were not particularly unusual. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. Oh? While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. That's true. What does that have to do As with anything? La was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an Agrius class battleship. Ah, you propose we do that same thing? It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. I have no proof. But the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. Damn, bringing it back. The callbacks. Yeah, I like... Ah, I love this. All right. But even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it? Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the empire greatly hindered its own operations in the yeah. region. So Rabanasta is uh, part of the Evilus raids, and it has been completely destroyed, basically, by the Garlean Empire uh, to basically swat down their uprising. It's uh, it's messed up. If an Imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel as the crow flies over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. <laughs> Nothing but red chocobos. Oh, God. Source of energy. Tell me, did the Allegans make a habit of launching things into the sky? <laughs> Ian, you have no idea. A curious question. Besides Aziz La, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the calamity. Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. I wouldn't be surprised if fucking the moon was made of Allegan tech underneath the surface. You do? I may. To find out for sure. We would need to visit the Azim Step. Hey, back to the Which step. Which would I now see present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes? <laughs> How very neat! What say you then? Shall we see whether this road leads? The Zayla tribes. It is settled then. I will journey to the Azim Step with the Scions. You, Giddy, and Hakuro, I leave our other neighbors to you. My apologies, but I won't be joining you. I'm no etherologist, and what skills I do possess are unlikely to be of any great use on the mission. More importantly, it would seem to me that the ruins of them in the burn warrant attention. And so, while you are away scouring, uh, securing an energy source, I will engage our friends at Garland Ironworks to undertake a complete overhaul of the field generators. We'll need them in good working order if the plan is to succeed. I trust there are no objections? Uh... <laughs> Come on, Alizé! Couldn't you get Tataru to do it? 
She could bully Sid. Hmm, I'm sure she'd, uh, she'd love the burn. <laughs> Joking aside, I was planning to enlist her help with the organize, uh, organizing and everything, but we'll still need a scion on the ground. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll manage without me. Good luck. She'll just talk down the monsters. <laughs> just the three of us, then. Very well. Shall we make for uh, first for a reunion? Yeah, she turned. Yeah, she turned the burn into a tourist locale. To the step. God, I love the Azim step. <laughs> Tis a fine feeling to be back. Were it not for our mission, I would like nothing more than to lie on the grass and watch the clouds float by. Me too. Ah, oh, fucking God, come on! Always with the rain! So, this is the Azim step. The tales do not do it justice. If you think the view is impressive here, wait until we reach the higher ground. Actually, seeing as it is your first visit, permit me to show you my favorite spot. Ah, good. No rain here in this cutscene. I will never tire of this vista. The endless fields, the boundless skies. Tis a sight to make a man forget his cares. But not his purpose, I trust. Might oh, this on. be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here? Come on, you stole it. Just take it in for once. Take in the moment. Of course. During my time with the Mole, I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard, and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth, and an offering of blood to the heavens, as is La and Dalamud. Oh. So the legends are just ancient history. That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise Azizla up to the heavens. I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would. It's always with the elegance. Oh, yeah. Seems I've been teleported somewhere else. From here, we shall travel to Mole Ilo, where we will ask Serena about the particulars of the myth and raise the matter of an alliance with the rulers of the Steppe. The way they worded that tale was beautiful. Oh yeah, very pretty. Yep, the rain is back. <laughs> they should just make it to where it just is always sunny in the uh, in the Azim Steppe. Always clear skies. This place deserves to have only clear skies.
Kian, Victor, I'm glad of your visit and the opportunity to welcome a new friend. How may we serve you? There is a matter I would discuss with the Mole. It concerns not only the people of the Steppe, but every land in the Far East. A, share, a shard of this, of the shining moon left by the wayfaring soul. Are you need, and you need this to protect our lands. I do. My friends and I wish to find the sh uh, shard and ascertain the extent of its power. I will. Will you tell me more of the place where it lies buried, this northern crag? If that is your wish. In the mountains to the north, there is a cavern called the House of Crooked Coin. Inside that cavern are pillars of stone that lend uh, legends hold holds to be the source of the Nama's power. There, I believe, will you find what you seek. Ah, yes, I know of the place. It is a brisk walk from here. And what are your thoughts on the Alliance? Should the Empire return, our lands will be engulfed in a storm of conflict, whether we want will it or no. If we do not stand together, we will fall apart. This I believe with all my heart. However... However... Along the tribes of the steppe, there are those who would revere Nama above all else. To them, the pillars are sacred and not to be disturbed. Should you proceed as you propose, such tribes are like to spurn an alliance, prompting others to follow their example. That is my concern. But it is by no means certain that the pillars will provide the power you seek. Ere you risk the ire of the followers of Nama, you, uh, might you not first visit the House of Crooked Coin? If all is, you, uh, all is as you hope, you may then consider how best to earn their blessings. I thank you for your counsel. We will do as you suggest. I have no desire to give offense to those whom I would join hands. Thank you for your understanding. Though the mole may reign over the steppe today, this decision will shape the days to come, and we would not force others to wage war against their will. Nor we. A hundredfold stronger are we are they who choose to fight of their own accord. It seems the time has come to put my skills to use. Pray lead the way. All right. And though Yushtola is uh, our own hint of the burn, the Allegans used it for for Azzy's Law. And when you look for the burn in the overworld map, it becomes clear that the craters aren't just craters. They're actually whole pieces of land that they must have taken for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, Azzy's Law does have land on it, and that land must have come from somewhere. It's not just all elegant tech. Ooh. Well, it certainly looks powerful, but powerful enough that you'll have to ask the expert. Oh, hey, Boozle. How are you doing? Such an abundance of ether. Are we in luck? <gasps> Eric got an urge to play Final Fantasy again. Uh, but the trans... Yeah! But the transaction on the website was down. Sorry, I can't renew my sub. No! Uh, please, I want Eric to get sucked into 14. Join me, Eric. We are. This is an elegant artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Aziz La from its surroundings. 
But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. Oh, that'd be good. Hmm. There's rain indoors. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. That doesn't give me uh, reassurance, Ishtola. So this thing seems to produce a lot of ether, but around it, there is a lack of it, apparently. So, like, there's a high concentration of ether in this thing, but uh, all around it, there isn't. That's interesting. And extremely sus. Extremely sus suspicious and concerning. Maybe it actually drains ether. That's the worry. That would explain the burn. If that is the case. That such an abundant source of ether should lie uh, undisturbed for millennia. It is a miracle made possible by the steppe's long history of isolation. You found that which you seek then. Great, uh, great indeed is the Dusk Mother's power. If naught else, uh, not less will suffice to protect our lands, the blessing of the other tribes must now be sought. Of course, but to which tribe should we appeal? There are so many who worship Nama that none are so fervent in their faith as the Dorfal. Their cons uh, consent shall be the key. Oh. The Dorthal, at least spoke of them, a warlike tribe possessed of unique customs and beliefs. I sense their cooperation will not be easily won. Uh, they kind of took us into indentured servitude. Nay, but they will well worth the effort. The Dorthal fear nothing, death least of all. Oh, wait, no, Dorthal, that's the ones that, uh, the undying ones or whatever. I'm thinking of the, uh, what are they called? The sons. And our alliance would be greatly strengthened by their presence. Let us go to Dorthal Ha and treat with their Hatun, Sadu. Oranir, yeah, Oranir is the one that subjugated us. Yeah, we get to see Sadu again. Hell yeah. Bye. <laughs> Sadu. People like Sadu. She's a little... M she's a little much for me. But she is pretty. Then again, everyone in this game is pretty. I think this is going to be an instance coming up, so I'm going to disband this party. Boop. She's very intense. She, she, uh, uh, she's not my speed. <laughs> my speed is a little... Slower. And not as loud. Some people like that, and that's valid. Me, I prefer a gentler touch. says a man who loves Yatsuyu. Listen, that song's a meme. I wouldn't actually. Yatsuyu doesn't seem like an easy woman to please. You again? 
Other matters demand our time, Hagen, unless it is battle you seek. Alas, not. Quite the opposite, in fact. Hey, I didn't say there's anything wrong with liking Yotsuyu. I'm saying she, she seems like a hard woman to please. And uh, a bit intense for me personally. Though I made a meme song about her. I'm sorry, just moving my, my compressor up on my desk. Talking, always talking. You say the pillars hold great power. Of course they do. They are the source of Na Nama's strength. To the Dorthal, no place is more sacred, and we will make ash of any who would defile it. Though I see that is not your wish. You seem the wisdom of our proposal, then. You will join hands with us. I said nothing of joining hands. You wish to wield Nama's power to defend these lands, and this I will allow. But for leaving the step to fight the men in iron, I would have something in return. Namely? Oh, that cheeky smile. Namely, battle. With you, Hagen. Oh. The Nardom ended ere it began. I would face you again, alone, without distractions. Defeat me. Prove yourself the stronger, and you shall have the Dorthal as your allies. Surely these are agreeable terms? Well, this is a not wholly unexpected turn of events, though I had assumed I would be the one required to fight. Alas, the Hartoon has made her choice. Uh... <laughs> Shall we dance? I don't know which is more in character for Victor. I think he would genuinely be more scared. Ha! It shall be a battle the step shall not soon forget. Ah, already my soul burns brighter. Prepare yourself, Hagen, and await me outside the Ha. I will gather my witnesses and join you anon. Chad, I'm scared. Are you still here? Go, wait for me outside the hall. I will join you soon enough. Let's see. That way. This battle gave me nightmares. Oh god. That sounds very, very sadu. Ishtola, what do you think of all this? How are you taking in the culture shock? Try as I might, I fail to see the logic in this arrangement. I can but conclude there is none. <laughs> it's called culture, you stole it. Be more, be more sensitive. When I was little, I would, I would stride up to Gorsetsu, wooden sword in hand, and challenge him. To his great credit, he never held back, and I had many a bump on and bruise to show for it. Huh. Right. Uh, yeah, easy. Ah, good. Clear skies. Yo, is that hot pants she's wearing under that? Yes! This spot shall serve as well as any. I shall enjoy this Han. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? <laughs> you stole a... Welcome to the Azim set. Speak not of peace. You stand before proud warriors of the Dothal. In the heat of battle do our souls burn brightest. We lay low the strong that we may rise higher. That is our way, the way of might. There is no other. That was a very satisfying oh, smack with her fist bump. You know, with the, with the mm, just sounded good. <laughs> Indeed, it's what makes them such dangerous enemies and such useful allies. I love Hien. Like, I love Hien's friendliness and like willingness to see the value in everybody. He's so good. Enough talk! It is time to fight! Alright. 
You me, me and you. Come, Han, let us dance. All right. <laughs> easy mode, yay! I love easy mode. Oosh. You're strong indeed, a worthy champion of the step. But you are mistaken if you think I will fall so easily. Yep, they are the undying ones. It probably means more than one thing. So sing. I could probably stand at that, right? Yeah, there we go. Fighting you is pure bliss. Listen, I told Xenos no, and the answer is the same for you. I am. I'm sorry, I'm not combat sexual like you guys. <laughs> oh jeez, chat. I'm uncomfortable. She and Xenos would get along nicely. <laughs> In death do our souls sing! He'd find her too weak. I don't know. We haven't seen her ab abilities in, uh, in compare it like within the context of comparing them to Xenos. I'm sure she's a fine combatant. I would like to see the fight between these two. That is, is that Meteor? Is this gonna pull a Meteor right now? <laughs> No big deal. There we go. <laughs> Sadu is tired of casual sex. She's going competitive. Yeah, she's playing ranked competitive sex. Yes, yes. Not since the Nardom has my soul burned so. I need an adult. Come. We have only just begun. Uh. Enough! You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze. Well, well, the sun has come out to play. Hmm. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of a Dothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set. From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever. Uh, I think the mole actually reign over all right now. <laughs> he still was like, what the fuck is going on? Yet what should he find here but a battle to determine the fate of the steppe? A battle waged without his blessing. This will not stand. You, Doman. You who come to petition the warriors of this land, forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. And then a third faction comes in. No, it is I who will demand a blah, 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 blah. Ugh, these words are as wind from a horse's backside. Plentiful. But your act sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. I think that's the nicest thing she's ever said to Magni. Like words of encouragement. Come fight. Insolent child. You will learn your place. Yeah, here. Yeah. Forgive me, brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. We will not abide any interruptions. <laughs> so be it. 
The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacool, join me. Oh god, that's the one that was looking at Hien and like having bedroom eyes, wasn't it? The sun is in good company. We may dance alone. Beg not for mercy, for you will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim! Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs. Gods, I'm turning into her. <laughs> oh my gosh. Matoya raised you well. <clears throat> I am not the patience for this, but if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. You say that like it's a bad thing, Yushtola. Now this one I did, I do remember this. We get to play... Yishtola! White Mage. We shall endeavor to be most convincing. Now, I'm a pro white mage, so I know how to keep my dots up. True white mage strats. First, we take out the DPS. He's the squishier of the two. Heal or die! Ether well. All right. Restores MP. Okay. Oh, it's instant. Okay, it's not, uh... Lucid dreaming. Oh, I didn't keep my dots up. See, I don't even need to heal Hien. I can just kill the guy first. There we go. You too must you learn down your place. Before me. Oh, that's a lot of axes. Okay, all right. Let's, uh, let's kill that middle one, shall we? And then we can just lay into him. All right, bye. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, die! <laughs> Kian, you're gonna need some healing, buddy. Down before me. Let's get this one. <laughs> All right, bro, I'm gonna head out. Peace. Hian, you might want to stand somewhere else. Where's my rescue? You wanna? Oh no, you're fine. Okay. The center is not in the AOE. Let's always be die. casting. Always be casting. Bow down before me! Okay, we can probably kill him before this goes off. There we go. Whoop. No, guess not. Tremble before the sun! Whoop. These axes will not break. You have nowhere to hide. Oh, oh no, you found somewhere to hide! Let oh. us be about it! Oh, Hien's gonna do something. Hey, nice. Ah, okay, home gang. <laughs> Predictable. What? Every step you take, every move you make, the sun sees all. Now fall. Is it match time?
time to finish Isa, this. To me. Have at you. Oh, mega holy. What strength? What grace is this? Oh, it's Yuna's Final Fantasy X dance. Neat. Hey, I finished my dance fight. Never have I felt such bliss in defeat. You're welcome. It was a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We Dothal will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield. You sound like you need a smoke or something. <laughs> what did I do to her? I just, I just fought her normally. I didn't do what anything. What does the sun say to that? <laughs> the sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. All right. Combat sexuals, the lot of them. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. Until you deem that you don't feel like it anymore. You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. You? By what are you called? Nistola, why? Are you... Are you my Nama? Oh god, not again. I beg your pardon? In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love. Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be... Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Oh! 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 Little? Sun, crave you salve to soothe the ache, fire to sear the wound in your heart. <laughs> and then they fight again. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success. Cast Asuna? Oh no, that's a vulnerability stack. There's no way he's getting rid of that. That boy just got brink of death.
You had not only to contend with Sadu, but Magni too. Such a fierce battle must it must have been. Yet here you stand triumphant. Having passed such tests, they could not well deny your allegiance. The Mole will make no such demands. Weak though we are, we will gladly stand with you. The steppe is our home, and we will defend it with all our being. You have my heartfelt thanks. Of all the tribe of the steppe, there is none I would rather have at my side. God's willing, many more will rally to our cause. I shall send word, uh, you word, when we have our uh, answers from the other tribes. I cannot thank you enough, Serena. None of this would have been possible without you. No, funny little thing about that cutscene. That was one of the first cutscenes I had seen of 14 when I watched Larry Zer, like way back in the day. Like, he made a video about this patch quest. And uh, I was like, huh, this game looks neat. We have the requisite consent. Uh, Tis time to put Nama's power to use. If the ether flows as planned, all that remains is to have the ironworks engineers do their work at the ruins. Come, let us return to the house of the Crooked Coin. Oh, hey, it's Link. Look at that. <laughs> Link, excuse me, princess. <laughs> oh, you even have the brown hair, too. That is a really, really nice cosplay. Well done. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I was very excited to do that, uh, that overlay. It was very fun to make. Can you see it again? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I gotta think of a zinger, though. I gotta think of something. Uh, hey, have you guys, um, you guys, you guys play Sea of Thieves, right? I'm sure there's some Sea of Thieves fans in here. Anybody here play Sea of Thieves? Anyone? No, pain, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, where is it? Oh, shit. Oh! No, I, oh, I... I ruined it. Never mind, I ruined it. I messed it up. I messed it up! Fuck it, that's, that's what you get. That's what you get. I didn't know that it would go off immediately. I was trying... So what happened... What happened was I needed to add the source to my to my OBS but I thought that it would like what have me adjust right because normally whenever you add a source to OBS it's like oh adjust the the whatever I was gonna say see if these nuts fit in your mouth but I uh, I ruined it whatever whatever I shall begin at once you may wish to step back Steady, you stole Steady. Good Lord, what do you do? Steady on. 
Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. Oh, nice. That e that simple, huh? Well, that was easy. I do not pretend to understand what you did, Ishtola, but you did it. Thanks to you and Victor, of course, we have taken a momentous step forward, securing our defenses. Now, as I, as much as I believe a rest is in order, we should probably make haste back to the Enclave. Agreed. The others may already have returned from their mission, and I would know how things stand. As would I, without further ado then. Let us go. Shoo. Shoo. All right, the call. We're almost done with patch 4.4. That was pretty fast. Four point five is when things got spicy. Oh yeah. Hey Alize, how you doing? Judging by your triumphant expression, I take it it went well on the Azim step. Indeed, we have secured a suitable source of energy for the barrier. Good. Tataru and I have commissioned Garland Ironworks to ensure that the field generators function as they should. A team of engineers stand ready to set out for the burn at a moment's notice. You need only say the word. I thank you for engaging their services on our behalf. The, uh, the minute of the arrangement you may leave to me. The minutia? Minutia, that's what he said. Which just leaves the small matter of our alliance. So, Yugiri and Hakuro, how fares you with our neighbors? My lord, all the factions we approached are in agreement that the Empire poses a threat, and many responded positively to talk of an alliance. From the Hengashi and Suinosato, however, we received outright rejections. The former will not break its treaty with the Empire, and the latter will not involve itself in conflict. Just as we expected, then. Well, there is naught to be done about it. We must focus on the rest. To each of the nations that we are amenable to an alliance, I will personally send a missive. And once I have attended to that, I believe we will have done everything we can to fortify Dorma's defenses. For the time being, at least, all of which means I'm, uh, all of which means I may leave for the meeting in Alamigo with a lighter heart. Yugiri, Hakuro, if you would be so kind as to hold the fort in my absence. My friends, we could not have achieved so much in so little time without your help. For that, I give you my heartfelt thanks. To the meeting, then. Hell yeah, meeting time! I actually love the sit and talk cutscenes in this game. I took the liberty of uh, asking Thancred to attend as well. He should have arrived in at the Alamegan Quarter by now. Then let us not keep him waiting, shall we? Especially because it's just all the characters that you come to know and love all in one room at the same time. Yugiri, I hope to see you see you again sometime in the future. I knew full well how Hingashi and Suinosata would respond, yet it did not to lessen the disappointment when they finally stopped uh, equivocating. Hmm. Akuro, are you perchance familiar with Nang uh, Nakshia? It is the region to the south and west of Yangxia, and home to several small nations. Such people well understand the value of an alliance, and thus did many of them receive our proposal most favorably. Oh. Who is best girl? My best girl so far, I don't have a best girl. Like, I meme about it, but if I'm to be real, none of the girls really make me fall head over heels. And I know that's going to be a blasphemy considering Ishtola is in the room, but 
I don't know. I don't find Yushtola all that exciting. She's a great character, and I, I, I love her company, and she's wonderful, but not, not personally my, you know, waifu material. As I mentioned, I have missives to write and some few other matters to attend to ere I part, depart. See you anon, my friend. Like, I think the closest one would be Lise, because Lise is fun. I like fun characters. You know? It's easily redacted from Shadowbringers. Oh, yeah. Well, because Redacted is fucking in love with you. So it's pretty easy. But yeah, I guess, I guess if I did have to pick one, it would be Redacted, because that feels the most natural. And he, he feels my speed. I feel like Redacted is the closest compatible with Victor. Yusola has told me all, and I duly told Arianje and Kryle. Kryle, in particular, has concerns uh, about Alphano, but I assured her that everything can be done, uh, that can be done is being done. She agreed to continue her own task for the time being, on the condition that I contact her the moment there is any development. So that leaves four of us to attend the council. Arnvald is here to assist with the security, incidentally, though the poor lad seems altogether too distracted for the task. Another one missing, Alphano, I s expect. Aww. Ah, but it's almost time. As soon as you are ready, present yourself to the guardsman at the palace entrance. Aww. Is Arnvald around? Oh, I want to give him a hug. Uh, several cutscenes will play in sequence. All right, sweet. I'm gonna go grab one more snack. It's an easier one to eat. Should take less time too. guys so it rained pretty heavily today and what time is it oh it's only it's only five where i'm at and it is pitch black outside it is like darkness it's like advanced darkness out because it rained and also winter time Actually, I don't know if the rain has anything to do with it, but it feels like it does sometimes. Maybe it's because there's still dark clouds or something. Yeah, it's 5.50 where I'm at. Mistress Lys, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. How's 14 been treating me? Like a princess. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamegans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we for our part are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. <sighs> Lord Hien of Dolma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be wife, remiss of me not wife, to acknowledge wife, the part wife, the science wife, of the seventh dawn wife, 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 all of us wife, together. Wife. In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. Male wife. Oh, yeah. With apologies to Lord Hien and Mistress Alize, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. I need a husband button? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, because um, Shadowbringers has a decent array of husbands. Uh, But I'm probably not going to do it the same way I do wife, because husband is a different energy, so I got to do a special overlay for husband. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. Aww. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death 
You, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino. Oh. In so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. You can tell. All right, this is me overanalyzing a bit. But you can tell that Alizé probably, well, my guess anyway, is that Alizé is likely feeling a little bit of regret about how much she kind of bullies Alphino, I would think. Like, maybe not regret, but like, you know, she's, she's setting that aside and acknowledging how much he's actually done for her, you know? As much as she likes to bully him and like, nag on him and stuff like that, I think that uh, before any of this, I think the last thing she wishes she could do was, um, I don't know, tell him how proud she is, you know, and, and that she loves him, because she does. It's always bickering when they're together, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a shame that it, take, it, it took, uh, you know, something potentially bad happening to him for her to be willing to admit that. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hian, pray tell us how things stand in the East. This is the, my last words were good luck nerd and now I might not see him again regret. Oh yeah, yeah. She do, She's not often kind to him, you know. So, maybe now she's feeling a little bit of that regret with the great possibility that she might not see him again. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. Hmm. The Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard-pressed to stop them, even with the might of six nations. Now, on the waifu thing, uh, Merlewib is the other candidate I would pick if it weren't for the fact that Merlewib does not seem like she would like me back. <laughs> I don't think I'm her type. I don't know if she even has a type, honestly. Like, I am in love with Merlewib, and I would, you know, she is number one waifu, but as far as, like, shipping fuel goes, I don't think I could, like... I, I don't think I would seriously ship Merlewib with Victor, because they don't... She doesn't... They don't seem compatible. Big ace vibes? Yeah, I wouldn't... Yeah, she does have a lot of ace vibes. Arrow ace Merlewib, yeah. <laughs> I could see that. She might be into you. She gives off that dami mommy energy. I don't know that she does give dami mommy energy. She 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 has, but she she herself does not actively give it off. You know, it's, it's complicated. The complex nuance of dami mommy energy. You know. But while we lack the strength she's very to fight the professional, time, yes. a course may yet present itself if we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Asians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning as they have so many others before and since. And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Also, I love that they reuse characters from the previous plot points. As much as I, when I evaluate, you know, my own personal way of evaluating what I deem the quality of an expansion story is that I believe it should stand on its own and, and be able to tell its own story, you know, on its own merits. 
That said, it is very nice that the stories build upon the stories of the past expansions, that it is a continual story and a continual world where these characters still continue to exist. It's not like you go through Heaven's Word and you meet Emmerich and then it's like, all right, we're done with Stormblood. Bye, Emmerich, we'll never see you again. It's like, no, he's, a, he's an active part of the world now. It's nice. It's nice. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos' skin poses problems in itself, but ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire and get close enough to strike? Mm, we ask nicely. While I see the wisdom in targeting the Assians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic, subterfuge. You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that, you have my word. Have you tried sedu to seduce the Garlean Empire? Yeah, Emmerich succeeded. <laughs> In uh, just causing one to uh, change side, sides purely due to how lovable he is. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the Battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a Servant of Darkness. Oh. Oh. We're gonna send in Russian bots. <laughs> well, it does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Galleons to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. You know, the truth, yeah. <laughs> but at the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Uh, believing doesn't matter, because some will. Trust me, Lise, some people will. It doesn't matter how stupid, how stupid the theory is, and how, how much science and, and, and evidence will prove it. Some people will somehow believe it. Not that I would know from experience, mind you. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos' death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Yep. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus's death. Yeah, was Xenos even born in Garlemald? I don't see any birth certificate papers. A war which raged until but recently, plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as Emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent. Family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. Mm. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. Mm. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. I keep forgetting that Thancred got a tan from uh, post Heaven's Word. Dorma already has Shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? I'm for Master Thankry's proposal. We shine a light upon the Assian and test the Empire's unity. Hmm. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge that we may one day lay down our arms. 
gods know we never will while the Assians remain. Ah, shit. Oh, this is different. Oh, this isn't your typical that echo. Way. Sorrow. Fucking ah. History must be changed. Uh, hi. You mind introducing yourself? Ahead looms a calamity. Yeah. Ahead looms light, expunging all form and life. Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. What's the matter? Oh, all the other scions there's, too. There's a voice. Spies in our midst. Nay, I sense no such presence. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Through wide the gates that we may pass. Uh. Everybody all right? Need some Advil? Is it over? Oh. Master Thancred! Twelve for Fend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Uh... God, this must have made people panic. Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? Like, I'm trying to imagine back in the day when this was current content, people must have been losing their minds and, like, terrified. It must have been agony to not know what's going on. I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, my lady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. God, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right? Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Yeah, it's very lucky that, uh... He was able to get out his plan before he got knocked out. Yeesh. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alize and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? Yeah, I mean, no more worse than the Echo, but uh, definitely different. So, in between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely? Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. I can't be called right now, I'm busy. Can I just put it on silent? Cold. I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul.
That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether. Mm. A consequence of his prior possession by the Asian Lahabrea. Hmm. Man, Thancred has it rough. He can't teleport anywhere. He got possessed by an Asian. He's uh, he immediately gets pulled, his soul pulled away. He's got it bad, yeah. Poor Thancred. The owner of the voice. Whoever it may be. He lost his surrogate daughter. You, called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. Yeah, Lee's didn't get affected. Fun little detail. I don't remember if this matters, but she's she's not a scion anymore. All the scions got affected. Lee's did not, because she's not a scion anymore. Yeah, but he lost his clothes. True, where exactly are we being called to? He got a tan. Actually, the tan worked out pretty nice. He looks great with a tan. I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lise, but may we leave Thancred in your care for a time? As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lise. As the Elder Seedseer says, tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with, nor can we discount the possibility of Asian involvement. Mm. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better. Mysterious. It's like we have no idea what's going on here. Just out of the blue. Danny, you have any theories? Nice sweater. I just tried to call Urian J on his link pearl. He didn't respond, but I dare to hope that he possesses some knowledge we do not. Ah, Urian J. Something happened during the meeting. Thancred collapsed. A disembodied voice suddenly started. What? But that's... We should talk about this in person. All right, we'll meet you there. That was Uriange. He heard the voices too. Oh, in Thanalan. Hmm. As we alone were afflicted at the meeting, I had my suspicions, but if the voice also spoke to Uriange, there can be little doubt. The Scions were targeted specifically. By whom and to what end is the question? One to which we must find an answer with all possible haste. Mm. What is it with the people? What's with all the people with the animal ears? Well, because this is a uh, this is a fantasy world, and these are fantasy people. Therefore, they can have any number of uh, characteristics. So endure. Oh, it's just a face thing. Okay. <laughs> Stola, got anything to say? I shall be interested to hear how Orianger's experience compares to our own. Orianger's agreed to meet us at the Rising Stones. If and if the others uh, heard the voice, we'll find out soon enough. Good luck. I should get back to the meeting with the Elder Seeds here, but if there's anything I could do, anything at all, you must let me know, all right? Promise me. Imagine being least like you just put in your two weeks with the Scions in time to watch them all uh, hit with fantasy migraines. Oh yeah, it's like, oh, thank God I quit when I did. I don't have to deal with any weird magic headaches. Urianger! <laughs> God, it's good to see you. I, I like, hold on. Time for more over, over analysis. Ah, I love these small little touches. 
Alizé cares a lot for Urian Jay, not just because he's another member of the Scions, but almost because he's kind of like a second dad to her. Because they grew up together. Urian Jay watched Alizé and Alphino, you know, from a very young age grow up. And, you know, they they've kind of have a nice little friendly relationship. Alizé especially is very attached to Urian Jay. And, uh... Just a wonderful little babysitter kind of relationship. And uh, you can see this especially in the Binding Coils of Bahamut questline, where Urianze, at the very end, after they're all, like, torn and, and rugged and dirtied up, is like, oh, oh, God, oh, oh, you're all messed up. Oh, please, uh, here, I'll take care of you. Urianze's precious. He's a wonderful... He'd, he'd be a very good dad, Uncle Urianze, yeah. Uh... As far as somebody asked, as far as how far you can go with looks like human, there is one race uh, called the Hrothgar, which is basically like lion, lion men. But uh, most of them do kind of look like human. But but yeah, if you want monstrous, there's not that many options. There's the Hrothgar, and that's kind of it. Would that our meeting were under happier circumstances. I judged the voice sufficient cause for concern even before you sent word of its effect on our comrade. <laughs> Lala fell too, pretty then. monstrous. Hmm. Aye. And all but certainly at the selfsame instant. Alas, pained as I was, I could make little sense of what few words did then reach mine ears. Who do you think is responsible? Could this be the Asians doing? That I cannot say. Not when so little is known. Real! Ere I indulge in speculation, I would examine Thancred with mine own eyes. To Alamigo then, without further delay. One other thing. During my visit to the Far East, I observed a strange phenomenon. That I'm not very interested in this game. I think that's doing a big disservice to a lot of what good this game does if all it takes to turn you off is no monsters race option. Because there's so many other things that this game does well that to, uh, to, di to just discount it on the fact that you can't play a monster. I feel like that's not giving it a fair shot. Thou referrest, I presume, to the localized reduction in etheric density. But that is your choice. Uh, that is my opinion, but um, I feel, give it a shot. You might just like it. I also generally, uh, generally don't like RPGs. That's fine. I'm trying my best to make sure that your opinion is valid, because, like, although, if that's the case, there's plenty other things that you can do in this game that have nothing to do with RPG. You know, you could play, you could spend all your time in the Gold Saucer. You could uh, play Mahjong. You could be a uh, triple triad master and just Yu-Gi-Oh your way through the entire game. You could fish. You could fish forever. Crafting and gathering is an entire game of its own. We're not here to convince people. Listen, I am a salesman. <laughs> I want more people to play this game. I mean, in the at the end of the day, it's your choice. I I, I can't change your mind, but that's that's all fine and good. But boy, I'm gonna try. Well, that spares me the trouble of an explanation. Yes, I noted precisely that at two apparently unconnected locations. I take it the phenomenon is not limited to the Far East. Indeed not. Of late, our agents charged with surveilling the beast tribes have spoken of little else. In every corner of the realm, they tell of places in which the ether hath grown thin. Yeah, I'd sell out for Final Fantasy XIV. If I, if they, honestly, I'd sell out for free. If, if, if Square Enix, Enix asked, I would, I would absolutely make an ad to sell fourteen. Fuck, I, I, I have a command. I have a command in my chat that, that fucking advertises Final Fantasy XIV and its free trial. Naturally, my suspicions first I love this game. I want everyone activity, to play it. But the areas thus affected betray no evidence of summoning. I must confess to being quite perplexed. If the same phenomenon is being observed in multiple locations on opposite sides of the world, we may safely discount regional factors. 
Needless to say, this warrants further investigation. Indeed. I shall make it my task to... Oh god. Not again. The voice. It calleth to me once more. Steady on, Thancred. Stay with us. Hold. Sorry, I meant Urian J, not Thancred. Sorry. I'm thinking of Thancred. I've got him on the mind. Yishtola, Arianger, open your eyes. Open your eyes, I beg you. Say something, anything. Not again. Please, not again. would have been stressful. This is an unprecedented predicament for the Scions, but we must remain strong. The least of us, most of all. Oh, say why he? Thank you for the five gifted subs. Hi. Thank you. You're a regularly uh, gifting person in the chat. I much appreciate it. Poor Alizé, though. Didn't the self-same thing happen to Thancred? Who's bloody next? Oh. We had spoken earnestly of doing more to ease the senior, uh, senior scion's burdens, but not under these circumstances, nor, l nor less so soon. I only hope I will be the equal to the challenge. Oh. Hello, phone. What are you talking about? What are you on about, phone? What is it? I hope that alarm wasn't important. I don't even remember why I have that alarm. Anyway, this was the best build-up for Shadowbringers for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hori Boulder will carry the Scions, literally. Forgive me, that was an unseemly display. It happened before your very eyes, my lady. None here would have behaved any differently. We have borne the two of them into a private chamber. But tell me, is it true that Master Thancred languishes in the like state in Alamigo? I'm afraid so. Though, given the circumstances, it would seem best to observe them together. I would send word to Lise that he should be brought here. Take heart, my lady. The world is full of scholars and knowledgeable folk of every persuasion. Someone out there is bound to know what ails our comrades and how it may be cured. Thus will we rouse them, no matter what. That we will, Hori. That we will. But first things first, our comrades will have questions. May I ask you explain the situation to them? I must attend to a private matter. Man, I love Scion B Team. Scion B Team's great. I hope they get voice uh, voice lines in uh, Endwalker. Oh, I presume I'd visit someone in Limsa Liminza. He's been waiting for me at the Maelstrom Command for a while now. <gasps> Gabu! You know, you should come along too. I think he'd be glad to see you. Gabu, Gabu, Gabu! 
time for baby. All the way since post heavens were jeez. I think the dude with the eye patch has had voice acting. I don't remember it. I don't think he has. Real? Pretty sure he hasn't. The scene we met him in is in voiced. Yeah, the Company of Heroes. With Mr. Salazé, are you? She usually visits alone. Still, I'd... Aww, it'd make a welcome change for a little, little one. Oh, so that implies Alizé visits regularly. As you probably guessed, it's Gabu we've come to see. The pr uh, private here will bring him out for us. Ever since the Maelstrom took him in, I've tried to visit her as often as I can. And after what befell our friends, I was taken by the urge to visit again. It's difficult to explain. No need to explain. I understand. Gabu boy or girl? Baby. Pretty sure Gabu's a boy. Here he is, my lady. Yeah, he. Gabu, it's been too long. Oh. I'm afraid there's been no change. If he can see or hear us, he has given no sign. I see. You're still fighting. I'm proud of you. We promised that we would come and visit you together, didn't we? Alphano and I. I'm sorry that we haven't managed that yet. You know, with the three of us like this, does it not remind you of that night? Of the stars beyond count twinkling in the heavens? Mm. I was feeling pretty low back then. Powerless. But I knew that my brother was close by if I needed him, and that the others would be waiting for me back at the Rising Stones. Not like now. I've seen my share of trouble since coming to Eorzea, been reminded again and again of my limitations, of how little I can change about this world. And I've come to know the sorrow of parting all too well. But to have the people I hold dear struck down before my eyes and be powerless to help them, that, that I cannot bear. No, I don't. You're right. It's pure arrogance to imagine I can solve everything by myself. You'd think I'd have learned that by now. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, that's more than enough brooding for one day. <laughs> I love you, Alizé. Come on. We have friends to save. Let us return to the Rising Stones. Yeah, of course. Sure thing, I was, eh? Yeah.
Sorry, the person that I timed out, I, that was spoilers, and I just wanted to remove it from the chat. Beware of spoilers, guys. Remember, no spoilers in the chat for anybody experiencing with us. The timeout will end uh, once 10 minutes pass. Ooh, Danny looking sharp. Yeah, all right. Looking incredibly sharp. And Valerie. I see you two around a lot. Are you, you two friends? <laughs> Man, I... I bought that outfit because I saw a, a... I assume modded screenshot of males wearing it, but... No. I can't. Sad. Bodyguard and his bodyguard. Aww. <laughs> I did some thinking on the way back, and I think Hori is right. We need to seek outside help. Ordinarily, we would turn to our own experts on such matters, but they're both among the stricken. I will begin by reaching out to the myriad guilds and research institutions here in Eorzea. Additionally, Grandfather and Minfilia had a wealth of connections between them, and I mean to explore those avenues as well. We'll find a way to save everyone. Mark my words. Much and more has happened in recent days. Some of it for the good, some not. But all around me, people continue their fight. From the shinobi who search for Alphano to the Alliance members who make ready to move against the Empire. They march on in the face of great adversity, bearing heavy burdens. Everyone is playing their part, and so must I. You have your own party to play, I know. And it's bigger than most, so I won't keep you. Just promise that you'll visit from time to time. And I promise I'll have good tidings to share with you when you do. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. And now 4.5. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, the everyone in chat should no longer present an obstacle. Now is the time to bring the Empire's might to bear. A word from your radiance is all it takes. But one word and the Imperial Army will fall upon Alamigo as a pack of bloodthirsty wolves and tear that feeble nation apart. Have you no words for me? Despite the lengths I go to, an emissary playing the part of a fool, Emissary. When first I took this face, I swore to use all of my knowledge, all of my power, to further the cause of the Empire. My deeds stand testament to my commitment. And now we know that it's Elidibus. How did he hide that hair? <laughs> and with this adamant flesh at my disposal, I could destroy the Icon Slayer as easily as one might swat a fly. Why do you hesitate? <sighs> the hoods are magic. Our enemy is resourceful. Though victory is certain now, it will not remain so indefinitely. Deliberate if you must, but be quick about it. We'll speak again when you have unburdened yourself of doubt. Until then, I take my leave. Father. Wow, a little bit likes to roleplay. Really, really getting into that role. 
He's a method actor. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I should be the one to sigh. Hello, new character. I played my part to perfection. I had earned my rest, and then, thanks to La Habrea's crowning act of idiocy, our favorite emissary sees fit to summon me back. Elidibus was ever a warrior. A most tiresome trait, would you not agree? What? Have you no words for me either? No matter. I've long grown weary of this mummery. Now, my dearest grandson, let me remind you of your place in the simplest of terms. Grandson. You do not make judgments, you administer them. Swiftly and to the letter. Naught else is your concern. Elidibus may be an insufferable bore, but he is no fool. His choices as emissary seldom err. For a grandfather, you look incredible shape. If aught threatens the balance twixt light and dark, it falls to you to remove it. Be it by your own hands or by your armies, you have ample means at your disposal. That is why this empire exists, why I built it. Solus Sos Galvis, the original emperor of the Garlean Empire. Oh dear. Alive somehow. Have I touched a nerve? You always were an easy one to read. I pity you, I do. As they say, ignorance is bliss. And I know how much happier you would be not knowing the things you know. The Founding Father was an Assian, and he created the Empire solely for the purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos. What the fuck? Okay, that's something I didn't actually remember. Oh, so... So they're upsetting the beast tribes on purpose! I, th I thought that was just their incompetence. But in them working in the, with the Assians making a whole lot of sense now. They were deliberately created to make everyone, to cause all this chaos so that more people could summon and cause more chaos. Oh my god! Don't take it personally. I merely do my duty. Yeah, it's all to according bring to Kekaku. About a calamity requires no small amount of power, and there is no surer way to obtain such power than by collecting powerful pawns. This is like 8D, 800D chess, this laden plan. The Garlean Empire has been around for nearly a century. Fucking how long do these seeds, how deep do these seeds are planted? Holy shit. Assians plan for the long game. Wow. To that end, I have labored long and hard, and I must say I am quite pleased with my handiwork. Paltry, though it seems, in comparison to Alec. I think you did a pretty good job. The Garleans are nothing to be trifled with.
Okay, well. And you're dead. Oh, <laughs> just shoot him. You fiends are over fond of your own voices. Mark me, Asian. Man is the master of his own destiny. <sighs> Such a waste of time and energy, both yours and mine. Oh, that's Solus. Lest you forget you are Emperor now. If you wish to spout drivel about man's destiny, save it for the masses. It will serve to give them a sense of purpose and you pliant pieces for the game. Oh, do stop sulking, boy. You, of all people, should understand. Ours is a struggle to restore both mankind and the world to their rightful state. Viewed thus, our goals are one and the same. The five head on this guy. I think I can stop emote only mode. I think chat gets it now. And you guys gotta behave, all right? Remember to behave. Meanwhile, at a resident uh, encampment somewhere in the empire. Oh. <laughs> chat is horny. Solus does have big daddy energy. But I guess you get that from a memorial beating. What in the world? Oh, so he's actually an Ilsabard now. Dead. All dead. Yet I see no wounds, nor any evidence of battle. Is Varus an Asian as well, or is Solus the only Asian in that family? I don't know. Maybe it's answered later. I... I wouldn't put it past being a descendant, but, um, I don't know. Damn them. They finally used it. The Empire developed an alchemical weapon in Girabanya. A gas, black rose it was called, and to breathe it is to breathe your last. And that did this. I thought the project abandoned and its vile fruit destroyed, but naught else could have wrought such an atrocity. Fools, what do they hope to gain with this butchery? Can they not see that a rule won through terror will not endure? How many more provinces must they lose? Nay, wait. This is not the work of men, but of monsters. The Asians. It cannot be a coincidence that their trial led us here. Their trail. Their objective was never to rule, but to sow strife and discord.
Such a crime does indeed bear the mark of the bringers of chaos. Black Rose cannot be allowed to kill again. We must find the Asians and put an end to their plot. Well, that was great to see. I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. Hmm. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Yeah, it's soul magic. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Urianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. Mm. And Elfano's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? <gasps> Cryo! Cryo! I thought you were busy delving into the mysteries of Eureka. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me, <laughs> regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Oh. Thank you for coming, Kryl. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? Oh, I would love to hear it. My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> 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 well, that particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yeah, ARR Alphano was very much a victim of his own ambition. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault. But I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to he needs to acknowledge the nitty-gritty of saving the world. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened. Thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. <laughs> Mum's the word, eh? <laughs> Nothing leaves this room. Right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. What's the assessment, Doc? All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. Yeah, that's what uh, Kane Senna told us. Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? 
If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Yeah, that's a Lalafell. They're the equivalent of, like, gnomes in this world. Oh, it wasn't. But that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit. Waddle, 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 waddle. Master Matoya. Back to Idleshire. I refuse to call it Edelshire. You can only trust Nanamo and Tataru and Pippin. I would trust Pippin with my life and my dog. And I don't even have a dog. This way, yes. No, this way, yes. Shire like hobbits, like goblins, yeah. Apparently, so I've been told. Of course, by chat, because, but which which means I don't know how trustworthy it actually is. I've been told that it is pronounced Edelshire. I've not heard it pronounced by anybody yet, but in game, but. Would Joe Crap's favorite scion be if he were excluded uh, from the list? Hmm. I refuse that pronunciation. Me too. Me too. Sure, the end is sure. Like in uh, Lancaster or Wiltshire, I guess. I'd heard Master Matoya was something of a recluse, but this seems extreme. Still, I'll be happy to overlook their eccentricities if she agrees to help us. Oh yeah, Alizé hasn't messed, met Master Matoya yet. Disturb my peace again, have you? <laughs> I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I mistook you for young what's his name. <laughs> you couldn't even remember <laughs> Alphano's name? Sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain-sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's more like it. Stolle used to spit and hiss like a wildcat. She too. likes her. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, <laughs> what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. If I had to pick a best girl, it would be Master Matoya. She's blunt. She complains. She lives in a cave um, alone, away from everybody, Stella because she hates is people. One of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. <laughs> she 
She has stepped on many men in her youth energy. Oh, yeah, probably. Right. Let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? This, this, this doesn't make sense. How is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryle, what did you see? The, th the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh. Oh, God! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the broodmother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? What is the Broodmother's daughter? Uh, back in Stormblood, the uh, kind of uh, Lamia women, uh, basically like the snake women, one of them summoned a primal to bring her daughter back from the dead. Uh, that was the Broodmother. She summoned her daughter back from the dead, but her daughter was basically a zombified husk because the soul is gone. Yeah. That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. No, no, Gyaxo, no, we, we don't, uh, none of the beast r races we can play. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there, is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Also, can I say, Alizé's voice actress, her delivery of all of these lines has been fantastic. The devastation in her voice at the possibility that the Scions might be dead. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. That was Lise. Apparently, a group of Popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. Oh? I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. <laughs> I think... I think Alize is the only person Matoya has ever been nice to. I'll do some digging in the meantime and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off then. Wait, that's right, and that cutscene Maxima wasn't with Alphano. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. Oh no! I chalk it up to old days, but I rather doubt it's that oh, simple. Fuck! I like the panic music while. Oh no, my broom! The broom was called, no! Okay, he's fine. Oh. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Urianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Oh! Does it now? And here I was, all set, 
to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the family egg. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting at shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time. It could be anything. It could be that we, you know, got ether to go back to the burn. It could, oh, geez. It could be that black rose substance. It could be fucking any number of things that we don't understand yet. So that was the woman who tamed Yishtola. I had the distinct feeling of being grabbed by the scruff of the neck and having the nonsense shaken out of me. When Alphino is back, I'd like to visit again and ask her what tale she has of grandfather. Oh, they fuck. They probably fuck. I almost can't bear to hear what Maxima has to tell us. But I can't, it can't be bad news, can it? Lise would have said, unless, uh, there's no point in, in speculating. Lee said that she'd notify the guards of our coming, so we should head straight to the palace gate in the Alamegan Quarter. I'll be praying for good news. Learn of what you can about Alphino's plight, and leave the search of our friends lost souls to me. So they said the last time the ether was thinning was before the Calamity, right? Yes, that is true. What are your thoughts on Lise? Haven't caught any of your previous streams, sadly. My thoughts on her is I like her a lot. I can see that she's got a lot of writing problems. I wish they had given her a little bit more to grow from and to do. Because uh, the majority of the Doma arc, she is not given a lot. She's given one moment with Hien, that's pretty nice, but a lot of her arc, quote unquote, is just, I need, I need to believe in myself, which is fine and all, but I feel it could have been fleshed out a little bit more. That said, she's inoffensive. I personally like her a lot more than I think she deserves, uh, her writing deserves, rather, but I think she's a fine enough character. She's around middle middle of the row for me, as far as like. I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphino, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Kind of middle of the road in terms of good characters in Stormblood. Uh, my top picks are still Yatsuyu and Gusetsu. Uh, Fordola, not too far behind. Uh, Hien, probably around that area as well as um, Yugiri. Uh, the pirates. Uh, the Doman, uh, civilians in Yangsha. Uh, Lise. Lise I'd put, yeah, like right below them, most likely. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. Nice to see you alive. What happened to my brother? Where is Alphino? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. Sorry, just timing out spoiler talk. No spoilers, guys, remember. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Down, girl. Careful, he's doing his best. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. Did his VA change? I don't remember. I, I don't remember his previous voice. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the once. intercession of a third party, a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Asians. This shadow hunter as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, I gathered my Populares colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alphino, however, declined the invitation to join us, preferring to continue his investigation into the Asian threat. Mmm, brave boy. Well... 
At least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. Yep, he is alive. Tell us more about these Asian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphano still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Asians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. Oh, except the name. One guy called himself Shadow Hunters. Hunters. But that's kind of it. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphino asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's Guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. I can't thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. Is it a bit loud? So sorry. Here, I'm gonna watch people with headphones. Brace yourselves. I'm gonna turn it on because that's the only way I can turn down the volume. Shadow Hunters! Oh yeah, that's going in the red. I am so sorry, everybody. That is loud. So sorry. I didn't... I didn't see. My bad. On that subject, there is much I would tell you. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. De oh, whoops. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westward? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo? Mm. We knew this was coming, but not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials head on! Yes. No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander, and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hien know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alphino too. Hmm. Consider it done. We'll send word when... Oh god, not again. Ugh. Untold sorrow must be changed. Stay with me, Alize. Stay with me. looms a calamity. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates. We're okay. Oh, you heard it too. Well, at least we're both still standing. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien. What D&D class would Alize be? I th think... Fighter? Maybe Eldritch Knight? You know, she's got some minor casting capabilities. So, Alphano is safe, for the present at least. Now all we need to worry about is a full-scale Imperial invasion. I'm actually glad Lise talked us with, uh tasked us with visiting Lord Hien. Better to be dashing from place to place than sitting around stewing over things that can't be changed. To the Enclave. Barbarian? I don't know. I don't know that Alize would rage. Like, she's perpetually angry and willing to kill, but I wouldn't say that's Barbarian's rage. 
Hexblade Warlock. I could see that, actually. Yeah, she's got light armor. Perhaps some form of Warlock. She does seem to have, like, a myriad of combat skills, maybe. Customized, custom-tailored to her. Hell, she's got a... She's basically got a Hexblade, in a way. Because it's custom-made for her. Yeah, home brewing is cheating. Oh, hey, blue, co blue cogent emissary. Where's Soraban? Is Soraban here? Oh, Dalmaskin! Person from Ivalice. The fall of Rabinasta was not the end of our nation. We who survived retreated underground and have been gathering strength to mount a counteroffensive. Dalmaska will rise again. I am come to represent the Langs of Nag Nagshia. Long have we struggled in defiance of the Empire, waiting for just an opportunity for th as this alliance presence. Hey, Serena. After their, hum uh, their humbling at your hands, Magni and his Ornir have spent every waking moment upon the training fields. Defeat does not sit well with the son and his children. Hello, pirate. The Imperials have enjoyed the freedom of the Ruby Sea for long enough. Tis time they, played, they paid their dues. We of the Blue Cogen will not submit to the Empire's tyranny, if only our Red Brethren would awaken to their folly. Victor, you have arrived in the time to witness the beginnings of our new alliance. Our proposal struck a chord with many of our neighbors, I, I am pleased to say. This guy? This is a uh, Hakuro. He is a wolfman, Lupin. Alone, Doma could accomplish little against the Empire. But in concert with the allies who have gathered here today, we might do much. Yeah, so this is kind of like, just like how they, we have the Aorzean alliance with like, Gridania and, uh, and the other two. My brain is farting. Limzalimins and Ulda, that's it. Greetings, my friends. I was just discussing future endeavors with the members of our newly formed alliance. Gyaxo, we told you what the one playable race was. It's Rothgar. It's it's uh, Lion Men, and that's it. There are any others you see, they're not. You can assume, you can safely assume they're not playable. The Kojin and the Confederacy you already know, and it was your own strength of arms that won us the cooperation of the Step Tribes. We have also been joined by our neighbors in Nagshir and the indomitable citizens of Dalmaska. Though the shattered nature of the latter's resistance will somewhat delay their official induction. These proud peoples have united under a single purpose, to stand against the tyranny of the Galian Empire. I'm glad to see your alliances coming together so swiftly. As things stand, I fear we shall soon have need of your strength. Scattered, not shattered. Well, more or less the same. I thank you for bringing me news of Alphino. His fate is never far from my faults, and not only because he is our emissary. As for the sudden deployment of Imperial forces, I agree that Alamigo would be wise to shore up his borders with all haste. Every report we receive from our shinobi indicates a massive um, massing of troops in the western provinces. It seems all but certain that the Empire is poised to bring down its fist upon Eorzea. And I would help deflect that blow, but I cannot risk sending reinforcements just yet. We will remain vulnerable to airborne assault until our wall in the burn is in place. The all-important elegant energy barrier. The energy barrier, yes. I thought to call it something more auspicious. A name drawn from the four lords of legends, perhaps. Seriu Eg Aegis, or some such. Well, just a thought. <laughs> I think it sounds cool. The ironwork engineers report that they have finished calibrating the generators and are ready to proceed to the testing stage. 
Have you time to attend the first test? You've seen the field which protects Azzy's law firsthand, and I would be interested to see, uh, to hear how you think ours compares. That is true, yeah. I will come too, if you don't mind. Though I am no Ustola, I may be able to offer some insight. Of course, time being of the essence, it would be best if we made directly for the burn. Yugiri, I give you and Hakuro to bring the War Council to a close. Understood. Your mounts are saddled and ready, my lord. Wear the storms. Let's go check this new barrier! Across the burn. Alright. Ba da da. Ba da da. My Discord has perpetually been at nine notifications because I joined the Hunt Discord. Because I've been slowly but surely gathering uh, allied seals, and the Hunt is great for getting that because for the longest time, ever since I first started playing the, this game, the Grand Company weapons um, are my favorite looking. They're so ornate looking. But uh, that does mean getting pinged on the regular. <laughs> by that discord. Small price to pay for glam. Seriously, the, that's why I'm part of the Twin Adder right now because the Twin Adder uh, Paladin sword is so good looking. And I'm not talking about the company seals. I'm talking about the, uh, the allied seals sword. Oh, it's so good. To an adder top is also nice. Oh, yeah. It seems the engineers have matters well in hand. Should the barrier work as we intend? Doma will be free to reinforce her allies in Alamigo without fear of weakening her own borders. Nice. Honored friends, the time has come to put your hard work to the test. Start the generator. We're gonna build a wall and we're gonna make the Garleans pay for it. Node 1 is operational. Nodes 2 to 8 are reporting similar energy levels. The barrier is forming. Oh, hey, it's Thancred. See, he's fine. 1,000 yams. 2,000. 3,000. Expansion remains smooth. No fluctuations detected. Five thousand. Target altitude reached. The barrier is holding steady at five thousand yams. We've done it. Is that an Imperial airship? Of all the rotten timing. But this is a gift, Mistress Alize. They can test our new wool for us. Yeah, the perfect subject. Boo! No explosion! Seems solid enough. Though I was hoping for a fireball. Hunters! 
by the gods. It's Alpha, no. What are you? Let me go! He has my brother! Uh, the wall's still up. Lower the barrier! Yeah, it's a good thing it didn't become a fireball, actually. <laughs> Be at ease, girl. The lad is not dead, merely locked in slumber. No, not him too. We could identify no cause and found no remedy. Thus I sought to return him to Doma, and into the arms of Lord Hien himself, it would seem. It is a day for fated reunions. Hmm. Would you not agree, adventurer? Or should I address you as the Warrior of Light? You're familiar with my work. Gaius Van Belsar. I, Gaius Van Belsar, the Black Wolf. That was the title I was given, one I have long since relinquished. Gaius Belsar. Sorry, I had to lower the volume to make sure that it wasn't blasting people's ears. Stand down. The Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion died in Castrum Meridianum. I am no more than Gaius Bailsa, a man without rank or allegiance. Impossible. There's no way you could have survived. Do you remember how it unfolded? Uh, yeah. Uh, so there was a big explosion from the Ultima weapon. You how went... I was deceived by Lahabrea? Right. How I was convinced that reviving the Ultima weapon would allow me to bring peace to Eorzea? I remember it like it was yesterday when I was in my duty roulette. Uh, you know, it exploded, you were like, uh, La Habrea laughed a bunch, and you were like, SUCH DEVASTATION! THIS WAS NOT MY INTENTION! And then, uh, La Habrea left, and then he, he, he was like, WE WILL SPEAK LATER, ASEAN! The ASEAN used me, as he used so many others. All to further the restoration of his wretched god. Yet even with the might of Alec at my command, you bested me. And as the Praetorium went up in flames, I was content to burn along with it. For a moment, at least. A moment of folly. To surrender my life thus would have been to betray all who died for my cause. It was for them that I dragged myself free of the rubble and swore vengeance on the Asians. So this retcon is... fine. This will mark the... fourth fake-out death in Stormblood. No one dies in Stormblood, it seems. <laughs> but just like the previous fake-out deaths, for me, I said this before, as long as it becomes something good right like i am okay with retcon retcon has a dirty connotation with it right retcon has become a word associated with negativity and something bad retcons are not bad retcons are not inherently bad in my opinion they are simply a writing tool and sometimes it can result in better stories for the future it all comes down to the execution and what they're you they use the opportunity for. So, we will see where this goes. The Black Wolf has shed his pelt, never to return to Garlemald or her legions. I live now only to exact revenge.
My principal quarry was to be La Hebrea, whom I gather you have since ushered onto oblivion. Yeah, that was his mask. Cool touch, right? But so many more remain. Long as their kind lurked in the shadows, laboring to sow chaos throughout our world, I would see each and every one dragged into the light and put to the sword. Fucking badass. Like, yes, he's a war criminal. No, this does not absolve him of everything that he's done. But good God, this motivation. They betrayed me and played me for a fool. I'm going to go fucking kill them. Are the Scions not of like mind? In this single respect, perhaps. Then I shall continue the partnership the boy began and share what intelligence I have acquired. Like, this is not a spoiler. This is just my theory, like, and not based on anything that I assume is going to happen in the future. But I think it is with the understanding. Like, we're okay with Gaius, and I think there's a mutual understanding that eventually we're gonna have to fight him again one day. When, when all is said and done and finished, he doesn't seem to regret anything that he's done. He doesn't feel as though he did what he thought was right. And I think eventually that's going to come to a point where we're going to have to respectfully fight him. Like, we're going to have to fight him eventually. When? Who knows? But I don't see him foregoing his beliefs anytime soon. You know, all that thing about the strong must rule and all that stuff. I think he still firmly believes that stuff. But right now he's setting that aside because right now it's vengeance. He's going to go kill the Asians. Among the Asians, the black-masked ilk are subordinate to those who wear red. This you already know. Yet among the red there exists a hierarchy. Those set adrift with the shards clearly stand below those still joined to the source. Oh, he knows about- Nebriales, who once dared to intrude upon the Rising Stones, belonged to the former group. And while he was indeed a dangerous foe, his powers were inconsequential next to the paragons of the source. He knows about the reflections, the 13 reflections of the source. The first was La Hebrea, who plagues us no more. There is also the white-robed Elidibus, and the elusive Emmet Selk, about whom little is known. Mm. We have files on La Habrea and Elidibus, but I believe this Emmet Selk is new to us? Yeah, never heard of him. As I assume my brother told you, we have evidence to suggest that an Asian now walks in the body of the Crown Prince. Have you identified this interloper? Elidibus seems the most likely culprit. As emissary, it is his role to maintain the equilibrium between darkness and light. That's why he wears a white robe, I guess. Your many deeds in Heidelin's name have upset the balance, and I believe he seeks to restore it by throwing his considerable power behind the Empire. As a leader of the Asians, he is one of our primary targets. <laughs> it was on the trail of this very prey that the boy and I came across the scene of a failed uprising. In the absence of a single Galian casualty, we inspected the bodies of the rebels, and the lack of any external injury drew my immediate attention. God, why is it every word this guy speaks drips of badassery? Even the simple line of, he is the leader and therefore our primary target. It's like fucking, oh, fuck. I want to rally behind this guy. Even if he is a war, you know, war uh, criminal lunatic. He's a goddamn patriot, somebody said earlier, and I agree. He loves, he loves his country, his nation. They had been slain by Black Rose, an alchemical invention of the Imperial Army. When I yet served as Legatus, I ordered its production halted and all stockpiles destroyed. Toxic gas is not a tool of conquest, but of extermination. Yep. He wants to rule, and, uh, or rather, he, he personally doesn't want to rule, but he believes a ruler should be in place. But if there's no people, there is no rule. So this is keeping consistency with his character. Sorry, yeah, he's not a lunatic. That's, sorry, me throwing insults. I still have, a, you know, personal feelings about him. As you can see, Wall is still Toxic on the defensive. Gas. This must be the new weapon Maxima warned us about. Something deadly enough to sweep away all resistance in a matter of hours. Gods, 
You don't think they're planning to use this in Alamigo, do you? Put your fears to rest. We infiltrated the production facility and destroyed all existing stores of the chemical along with the plant itself. Even should they rebuild the operation, they will not soon manufacture another batch. A lot of science did die under his command. Yeah, like I said, war criminal. <laughs> he, uh, he's done a lot of bad shit. Regardless, I would draw your attention to a directive we discovered in the plant's records. The document was marked with a recent date and authorized with the signature of one Zeno C. A. Galvis. A dead man signing the death warrant for thousands. Tis bad comedy. But the tale does not end there. Within that same facility was a chamber filled with devices of elegant design. Cloning technology, we realized. Oh. And what should we find in each and every incubator? Look at all those solaces. But a young Emperor Solus. And we see where Elubis gets his bodies. All of which prompts the question, were the Asians responsible for these abominations, or was it the will of the Emperor? I must know which hand guides the Empire. Though I have given up my rank, I am yet a son of Garlemald, and I will fight for the future of my homeland. Mm. It is time I return to the Hunting of Shadows. We should focus on our common foe. To reopen old quarrels now would serve no purpose. Mm, I hate you that you're right. You saved my brother's life, so I'm willing to let sleeping dogs lie. But in truth, it's not my decision to make. Hmm. <laughs> Wall has been on the defensive this entire time. We'll settle this another time. There was a time when I scorned those who placed their faith in false gods. Even as I, in my blinkered conviction, placed mine in Asian promises. Now this is a nemesis I'd be happy to have. Like, uh, me, this is just me personally, like no one has to feel this either, but I personally consider Gaius my wall's nemesis. Unlike yours, my strength of will and my restraint was found wanting. We shall meet again, warrior of light. He threatened to conquer my home, threatened my friends, killed a lot of my other friends. He is my nemesis. He's like 60, he looks amazing. So that was the infamous Black Wolf, an unexpected ally to say the least. Yeah, you know. Well, I am content to leave the fine tuning of the barrier to cleverer minds. Let us bid our friends from the ironworks farewell and see what can be done for Alphano back in Dorma. I hope that volume is better. I enjoy how Gaius basically said no to dying. Yeah, it's... Now, this game does a good job of retcons in that it they, they make, like... The retcons in this game are, like, reasonable enough. Like, they make enough sense that it could be mistaken for not a retcon, you know? Like... But the Gaius one is just kind of, like... I think probably the most retconny of the retcons in that it's like, uh, you thought I died, but I didn't. And you know, it's whatever. It's just don't think about it. Just don't think about it. Alphano is safely es en ensconded in a private chamber. My finest healers will examine him as we speak. It is examining him as we speak. 
additive retcons, not removing stuff to make it fit. I guess so. Retconning is a is a spectrum anyway. Like there are soft retcons and all that. I've spoken with the physician, and there are no outward signs of illness. Alphano is lost in sleep from which he cannot be awoken, just like the others. It seems that even the lands of the Empire were not far enough away to escape that cursed voice. It's more of a, it's actually not as we implied. Don't worry, it was planned. Y yeah, it's, it's like, uh, there was nothing at the moment that implied that there was a sign. You know, like, Gosetsu and Yugiri, their fake-out deaths is not a retcon, because they set it up at the beginning, right? Where it's like, we didn't find their bodies, so maybe they're out there somewhere, right? But, you know, going back on something that happened previously, just because there's some tiny, plausible, like, like, oh, I get, like, stretches that you gotta make. Those are... Whatever. It's like, like I said, it depends on what they do with it. It depends what they do with this new thing now that they've retconned in. That's my stance on it. As long as they turn it into something. Uh, Gos Gosetsu and, and not Yugiri, um, Yotsuyu, sorry. Not, not Yugiri, my bad, sorry. I'm filthy American whose Japanese names confuse me. It seems that, uh, even the lands of the Empire were not far enough away to escape that cursed voice. I share your frustration, Alizé, I do, but Alphano is returned to us alive and otherwise unharmed. All that remains is to find the means to wake him. Until then, you can but fulfill your duties as a scion, yours and your brothers both. You're right, of course. There are arrangements to be made and little time to make them. To business then, my lord. Now that we know Sheryu's wall works as intended, can we expect reinforcements for Alamigo? You most certainly can. As promised, we will send troops to bolster our allies in Aeolzea without delay. What a bro. Pray be aware, however, that they will not arrive without delay. Save for some few who boast teleportation magics, the bulk of our forces must be transported by sea, a lengthy voyage for which the smaller vessels favored by the Confederacy are ill-equipped. Accordingly, I mean to enlist the assistance of the East Oldenar Trading Company in finding suitable ships. As for navigating the distance in question, we are in a happy position to be able to call upon those who plotted the course of my people's exodus to Aeosia. My voice for Alizé sounds a lot like Kar Maharian. Well, I'm an American who does, is not a native Brit, so I'm limited in my British dialect. Beyond the procurements of ships, I think it's unlikely that our Eastern, uh, East Aldenard friends will consent to any involvement in military operations, but I am certain they will afford Alphano a birth home of their vessels. I shall have a Kairujan accompany him every ilm of the way to the Rising Stones. You have my thanks, Lord Hien. You giddy, I will go ahead and with our friends to Alamigo. Enlist all those capable of teleportation and put them at the disposal of the Aeorzean Alliance as soon as possible. They will form the vanguard. Most of them haven't been to Aeorzea, so they can't etherite. Yeah, that's that's a good touch. Yes, my lord. This is exactly what we'd hoped for. Lise and uh, the Alliance leaders will be glad indeed to welcome the combined strength of the East. wrong stream for this no worries i mean it's downtime talk i like chatting with chat for how renee speaks is elvish just french no i think that's just she just has a french accent just like how some characters have british accents no they're uh they're not etheriting someone unconscious they're carrying alphano all the way our supplies of black rose have been ruined but the new plant is already under construction we should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive your radiance Shit. See that you do. Hello, Solus. Ah, yes, the infamous Black Rose. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention.
A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garleans must look to Magitek to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. Ah yes, the ends justify the means. How very noble of you. Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler... well. Sometimes even I catch myself believing. Now you're talking... Now he's talking a lot like Asahi. So, like, talking down and sarcastic. Yeah, even he notices. A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. <laughs> Go forth and do crimes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Wage your war and all that and what what. <laughs> While you do what, precisely? I love his stupid little bounce in his step, the way he walks. Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. <laughs> I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. You cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Oh, yeah. Because before Varus, the former emperor, i.e. his uncle, I think it was, like, was basically a warmongering psychopath. And, uh, he just recently died and Varus took up the mantle. Are you truly so naive? It was Solus then Varus? Oh, well then... That was Solus that was, uh... Empire? Huh. Varus was fighting... Fighting his uncle. Okay, never mind. So this Solus... Rather, Solus, not this one. Unless it's this. It's complicated. Anyway, Solus was the original emperor that died, I think, late in ARR? Or like, late in Heavensward? Something like that. And Varus became the new emperor. But he did not appoint an heir, which meant it was harder for Varus. And Varus had to fight his uncle to grab the throne. Which did not do good for the empire. Varus is crowned in Heavensward, gotcha. You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? Mm. So he, quote-unquote, died on purpose at that time to sow, I guess, whatever chaos in Garlemald. It was by design? <laughs> oh, God, he's so pissed. Well, of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed. I gotta say, the Asians are good at their job. You know, causing chaos. They have done a fantastic job of that.
now. If you have no further questions, I must be on my way. At least this one? No, La Habrea. Gotta give credit to La Habrea that he has sowed the seeds for people to summon, like, primals really, really well. It's just unfortunate that he was tricked at the last moment. Since we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. Because you gotta get, you have to give La Habrea credit where it's due. He, he, uh, you know, tricked. He almost tricked the Alamegans to summon Ralgar. He was pulling strings that caused the uh, the Sylphs to be captured. La Habrea, like, when you examine, you don't see a lot of him, but when you examine the fruits of his labor, you realize he's been pulling a lot of strings. He was a mastermind. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. What do you And of all like the options available, you chose the founding father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandsire, hey? <laughs> If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. You will be the capstone of this world, I the anchor and shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence. <laughs> so that means the, <laughs> the Garlean Empire is very young. <laughs> <laughs> Chortles. The Garlean Empire has not been around for a very long time. It's only, it must be, at most, like, a little over a hundred years, right? Can't have been around all that long. Solos was pretty old, to be, f to be fair. I guess so. Only like a hundred years, more like 50. Jeez. They've expanded incredibly quickly in 50 years. It was a republic first, then became an empire. That would make sense. Yeah, it must have been a nation before it became the empire as we know it. We must leave now to convene with Eorzea's leaders, and it may be some time before I return to Dolma. Hakuro, I leave you in my command. My lord. I shall an assemble an advance party with all haste and join you in Alamigo forthwith. Ceruleum was a super fuel to, progr to progress? Oh yeah. They didn't know how to work that stuff until Solus came in. Yep. And you know what? I'm willing to bet... I'm willing to bet Ceruleum was planted by the Asian somehow. I'm, I'm willing to bet... Just like oil, like ceruleum was planted in Hydaelyn, the, the, the planet, like thousands of years ago so that it could process and become like the, the basically material that it was today, so that it could be used as such a powerful substance. I would not be surprised. <laughs> the Asians killed the dinosaurs. I knew it. I just received word from Lise. The Alliance has established a base camp near Alamigo northeast, uh, Alamigo's northeastern border. Once we've arrived in the locks, we're to report to a resistance officer stationed in Port, uh, Porta Praetoria, who will point us to the right direction. Let's not keep them waiting. Who, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! No, no, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, 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 it didn't, actually. Asians are basically reverse Flash. It was them all along. Victor Quibbles. You remember when you went to Balmung and somebody gave, uh, gave you 
A bunch of gill thinking that you were a dancer at the quicksand. It was me, Victor. I dressed up like you. I possessed your body. I possessed your body and make you made you dance at the quicksand. And that's why you have the random tattoo on your ass. It was me, Victor. It was me all along. Ah, oh, you must be the science party, all right. <laughs> Show tattoo? Absolutely not. Oh, I love seeing all the ban the banners. The the green one on the left was that Doma. Welcome back, you two. Greetings, Lord Here. Glad you could join us. Glad to be here. I would have come sooner, were our own defense is not in question, but I am pleased to report that our soldiers are assembling for deployment to Alamigo as we speak. We're grateful for your support. Thanks to the efforts of our allies, it won't be long before we've established defensive positions on this front as well. Uh, I would say refrain from spoilers. I think I will do them um, after I get a good fill of Endwalker. Maybe during Endwalker. I might go back and do them, like, mid-Endwalker series. Who knows? <clears throat> we have some good news, too. Elfano has come back to us. As for the bad news... Mm. So, Alphano won't wake up, Gaius van Baelsar is alive and hunting Asians, and the Empire is planning to poison us all with toxic gas. Does that sound about right? <laughs> Ordinarily, any one of those things would have left me in shock. But the way things have been lately, it's all starting to seem pretty normal. Getting back to your report, are we sure this Black Rose is the weapon Maxima was talking about? It fits the description. And it seems we have Alfino to thank for sparing us an early demonstration of its effectiveness. I have a feeling this won't be the last time his bravery in the Empire will serve us here in Eorzea. Lucky. The threat of an unknown weapon has had us all on edge. But now that we know what we're dealing with, we can take steps to defend against it. As for Gaius, I'm not sure what to think. Am I happy he's alive? Not in the slightest. Am I happy he's hunting Asians? Aye, oh, I'd have to say I am. <laughs> oh, speaking of Garlians you didn't expect to see, we have a tale of our own, as it happens. When we sent envoys to the Imperial Army to request talks, they returned with the message that Barisos Galvus would be attending. They said yes? What the fuck? The Emperor himself. Well, Varus did sanction the Popularis peace mission. But knowing that an Asian walks in his son's skin, I do not see how we can trust him or anyone from that nest of vipers. The Alliance would proceed with negotiations regardless, if only to give ourselves more time to prepare. We do, however, require your cooperation. Ah, uh, right. Yes. So, as a condition for the talks to go forward, the Empire has requested that a member of the Scions be present. There'll be a representative from each Alliance nation, of course, but I'm afraid we have to ask that you come along too. Oh, and most of the Scions are a little bit, uh, out of commission right now. Alizé, I believe in you. God, please. You know how much I hate politics. But then, what choice do I have? Alphano and the others aren't going to do it. Aww. Very well. I shall attend as the Scion's representative. Hell yeah, you get him, girl. In case you're wondering why I didn't ask you, the Empire also requested the presence of Eorzea's champion. Ah, separate. 
Mm, I'm not fond of politics either. Oh, you're not, are you? Come on, if Alizé can put on a brave face, then so can you. Now, we don't know what Varys means to bring to the table, or why he wants you there, but having you close at hand should make all the difference. All right. The meeting will take place on the border. Anticipating an early assault, we mean to position the bulk of our forces nearby. That's smart. The Alliance leaders should already be on their way. Once you're ready, we can head out and join them. Now, ah, oh yeah, I think, I think that's Dolma right there. Yeah. Now this is actually my, I think, one of, if not my favorite cutscene in all Stormblood. Well, I don't suppose it's polite to keep an emperor waiting too long, shall we? Yep, we shall. How nice of them to provide a tent. Yeah, we're also head of state from winning the Nottum, that's true. Esteemed representatives of the Eorzean Alliance. On behalf of the Galian Empire, I thank you for inviting me here today. As this parley was convened at your request, I invite you to speak first. Uh, thank you, Your Radiance. Very well, Your Radiance. I, Nanimo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, should be pleased to oblige you. As recent events in Alamigo and Doma have made plain, the subjugation and exploitation of neighboring nations is not a sustainable policy. No, it's causing a lot of people to uh, be very upset. Should this day end in war, you may very well defeat us, but you will never extinguish the people's desire for freedom. Though it may not be in our lifetime, there will be another revolution, another war, and the cycle will continue. Doma has entered into a concord with the nations of Eorzea, a partnership wherein we recognize one another as equals. Garlemal could be afforded similar treatment. You need only set aside your ambitions and join us in paving a path towards peace. <laughs> you will not win me over with sophistry, Your Grace. As you know only too well, this alliance lacks the strength to keep the peace within its own borders. Even now, your struggles with the Beastmen continue unabated. Uh, just give us a couple of weeks to gain reputation. I think we'll be fine. Divided, you sow this fertile soil with the seeds of your differences and reap naught but discord and chaos for your trouble. Eorzea must be united under one leader, one purpose. I would offer you both and bring an end to your strife. With all due respect, your radiance, the only thing that you offered the people of Alamigo was fear and hopelessness. The citizens of Dorma can also attest to the meager arms of imperial rule. There is no purpose to be found in a life of oppression, each day more uncertain than the last. Our people are willing to die for their freedom. A great many already have, and countless more will, if we don't put an end to this madness here and now. Maybe not say madness. We brought order and stability to your lives. This madness and bloodshed is of your own making. You broke the peace, not Garlema. Oh, we didn't ask to be ruled. Peace, order, 
You kill our peoples, despoil our lands, take everything that is ours. And what? You expect us to lick the boot that grinds our faces into the dirt? I expect you to weigh the costs. To recognize that countless lives have been lost on both sides in pursuit of a greater good, and to not squander all we have achieved in a fit of petulance. To be... In all fairness, Varus, you are saying that we should submit to you so that we don't have to fight anymore, but, you know, that... Why are you the determiner of that? You know? Like, oh, you shouldn't fight me because that's just gonna cause more people to die. Yeah, it's a game of chicken. Your Radiance. I fear I can personally attest to the dangers of pursuing one's vision with such righteous fervor. For a thousand years, the Holy See of Ishgard waged war with dragons. A thousand years of sacrifice, of sorrow and hate, in which we bathed in the blood of friend and foe alike. Had it gone on any longer, we may well have drowned. Yeah, Emmerich knows from experience. Yet we have chosen to raise ourselves out of this bloody spiral, and have since made peace with our former enemy. So I understand. No doubt the dragons were more receptive to your overtures in the wake of their leader's demise. Oh, he's... Uh, yeah, he, uh, he's got a point there. You speak of peace, yet use war to achieve it. Your father would not have bothered to obscure his intent with honeyed words. He understood that strength is all that matters in the end. Okay, uh, on that point, though, you're you're using the you criticize society yet you participate on it. Curious, like you you can't you can't say that, Varus. You get, what are you gonna if someone's if someone's punching you, and you want them to stop? What do you just you ask them nicely, and and if you ask them nicely and they don't, what do you do? That is true. They do still have one leader, but you know. We did have to kill one of them. He's not wrong there. Without his clarity of vision, I can but wonder what will become of Ishgard and her people. There was a time when Galamal too lacked a leader of conviction. Weak and unable to wield magic, we were at the mercy of the strong from whom we sought refuge in the bitter cold of the north. Were it not for the discovery of Ceruleum and the subsequent development of Magitech, we might never have gained the power to take back that which was rightfully ours. And that's good. That's good that you did. You speak as if your people were the first to have been driven from their homes. Limsa Laminsa was built by wayward souls in search of a place to call their own. On the shores of Vilbrand we found it, and from those humble beginnings did we grow and flourish, and all without robbing our neighbors of their liberty. Um... Uh... Um... About that. So saith the pirate. Am I to believe that you simply asked the kobolds to yield up their lands and that they were happy to oblige you? That you did not drive them out like rats in the hold of one of the many ships seized by your privateer? He, he's got you pinned there, wife. I'm, I'm sorry, but Limza has a very dirty history. I'm sorry. He's not wrong. I will concede that after centuries of exile, reclamation may be mistaken for invasion. Nevertheless, it is not. And those who till stolen soil have no right to object when cast out in turn. Your uncompromising nature rivals that of the Ixil. 
They too lament circumstances which they themselves perpetuate. Were they but to embrace peace, we would welcome them with open arms. Indeed, some few have done just that, and now receive of the Twelve's Woods bounty. Would that your people might learn from their example. That is true. Like, they just want some peace and want to live as they see fit. What's wrong with that? <laughs> you dare compare us to the Birdmen? You who thought to invoke the Twelve and threaten all of creation. Oh yeah, the Elementals. Um, yeah, and the Twelve, yeah. God, he's got a counterpoint for everything, doesn't he? I came here in the hope of finding some speck of common ground, but I see now these discussions will accomplish nothing. Uh, here's his, he's just being a hypocrite. Oh, but you wage war against the beast tribes. We want peace with them. You should too. No, no, no. Well, what he's saying is that... I think his point is that we have no right to criticize what the Empire has done, considering we've done similar. And he's right in that. We have. We have done similar, if on a smaller scale. He is just saying that he has the bigger stick, therefore he has the right to rule over us and, you know, control us and dictate how we do things. Not too different how we kind of... We kind of control the beast tribes, let's be clear. We we influence and, and manipulate the, you know the shipment of crystals to them, albeit to stop their summoning, but why are they summoning if not because we are, in a way, kind of controlling them and oppressing them? And we're able to, because we have the bigger stick. That's what, he's, that's what he's trying to say. He wants to do with us the same way we do with the Beast Tribes, because he has the bigger stick. Despite what you people may believe, I am not wont to choose the sword over the olive branch. Tis but a pity men are loath to accept one without first being shown the other. Wait! I beg you. This meeting was supposed to be a chance to find a way forward together, not to bemoan the missteps which brought us here. Please. If you truly consider violence a last resort, there must be a way we can come to an agreement. Maybe Alizé has learned from her brother. As Mistress Alizé says, we did not come here to bicker over the past, but to discuss how we might strive towards a brighter future. Emperor Varys, may I suggest a short recess, that all present might compose themselves prior to beginning anew? That is true. That is the one difference between us and the Garleans, is we give compromise. Garleans, they, the Garlean Empire has not given much compromise room. Very well. I pray this intermission will suffice to move these talks in a more constructive direction. Yep. Should have gotten Lollarito in here. For once, I actually would like his presence. He is a master manipulator wordsmith. And I would love to see that conversation, honestly. You would run circles around this guy? Oh, yeah. Also, I like that this is just a normal tent with... I know it's because, you know, Garley and advanced technology, and, you know, nothing says 14 has to be purely medieval fantasy, but I love... There's, like, air pipes and electric wires and steel-reinforced girders. I kind of love it. It's really silly, and but, like, it gives the nice contrast between the Garlean Empire and us. <laughs> Garleans have AC. Oh, they, no, not only do they have AC, they have heaters, because they're in the north. Whatever a battle I had in mind was lost when Varus mentioned my father. The man is certainly skilled at keeping his opponents off balance. Oh, Emmerich. The two best boys together. 
For a moment, I feared our talks would descend into violence there and then. Alizé speaks of her dislike for politics, but her honest plea may very well have prevented an early battle. Hello, Strawberry. For years have we warred with the Empire, and with no end in sight, a parlay such as this represents a unique opportunity, and I would not squander it with bitter words. Why do I get the feeling the Emperor is hiding something? Well, we still don't know what his ultimate goal is. Sure, he wants to stop summoning and, and subjugate everybody, but there's got to be something more. We don't know what that more is. Varus holds fast in his ideals, just as I knew he would. He will not be swayed from his path. I do much wonder at Emperor Varus's decision to attend this, these negotiations. It is plain he has no intention of hearkening to our en uh, entreaties, but what then is his goal? Tis true the, that Lamins's, Limsa Lamins's beginnings were not wholly honorable, but our all wrongs do not make the Emperor's deeds right. Yeah, that is, I mean, yes, yes. But we still need to atone for that, Merwood. We, we, we do need to kind of fix that problem soon, hopefully. Pure whataboutism. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very much whataboutism, but he's not wrong. He's not wrong because we're kind of simply pointing out the wrong things he's done. So he's turning it around and saying, oh, but what about you? Well, you know. You're clearly okay with when you do it. Why can I not do it? No. Phew. This is not my forte. After his raid, like, he's obviously wrong, right? But he's got a, a smidge of a point. After his radiance's little performance, it was all I could do not to swear at him. I honestly don't know how I could end up playing the mediator. I just asked myself what Alphino would have done. Tried my best to do the same and... By some miracle, it worked. But there really is no common ground to be found with that man, nor do I think he looked for any. So the question becomes, what did he come here to do? Because you may be certain it, was n it wasn't to make peace. Whatever it is, I can't make it out. Not yet, at least. We do have a little time before the parley is due to reconvene, though. So why not try consulting our illustrious leaders? Mayhap they have some insight to share. But the audience has its own bodies in the uh, in the closet that he exploits to prove a point. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I kind of love him as a villain right now. It's like, he's got a little bit of a point. A little bit. But he, he's still wrong, but he's got... He's coming from somewhere. This parlay was never like to bring peace, but I had hoped to learn something of Emperor Varus's relationship with the Assians. As had we all. Yet, if he is in league with them, he is not like to volunteer the fact. And if he is not, how much weaker would his position seem for their presence? If we are to approach this particular subject, we will need to be subtle. Would that I knew more of the man. It would, if you would indulge me, Lord Hien, you received an imperial education, did you not? Is it true that the Emperor's will is considered absolute? There is no higher authority in all Garlemald, nor else in the heavens, come to that. Veneration of the gods is forbidden, the only worship permitted being that of his radiance's own person. Mm. That sounds suspiciously like a religion in itself. I share your disdain for their hypocrisy. Even as they uh, denigrate the idea of faith, they revere their leader with a fervor others reserve for the divine. Tis a flaw common, common to much of the doctrine they fed us, logical on the surface perhaps, but contradictory upon closer examination. I wonder if a discussion of various discrepancies might prompt Varus to reveal something. Well, it hasn't worked out so far. Yeah, he's like the god emperor of mankind. 
twelve have mercy, but for Lady Alizé's timely interjections, we might well have come to blows at the negotiation, uh, negotiating table. Not that the Emperor of Aris left us a great many options. It's unconditional surrender. All he will accept, do you think? Ere he arrives, I'd have said yes, but having heard him speak, I cannot help but think he came with some other end in mind. Exactly! He's building up to something, I know it! Hmm. How then should we approach the rest of the parley? Have you anything to say, Warrior of Light? Hmm. Say nothing of Xenos or the Asians. That'll just make him mad. You believe he is more apt to reveal the truth if he is put at ease. Mayhap you are right. Thank you, Victor. You're welcome. Also, I just have to do this one thing. It's for good luck. There we go. Uh, actually, the Emperor of Warhammer 40k did not want to be worshipped as a god. Yeah, but he is, you know. Same outcome. I will say one thing for Varus. He is well versed in Aeorzean history. His interest in our affairs is that of a beast in its prey. The Conqueror would know his enemies. All should know their enemies, yet there is much and more we do not know of the Empire. Hmm. I'm sure Varus would be happy to tell you more. Wait a minute, what the hell is that? <gasps> oh, D, hey D. It's all your fault, it's all your fault. Are you hooked? Are you hooked? It is my fault, and I am happy about that. If you don't know, Dice Queen D recently started playing Final Fantasy XIV, and she has been fishing a lot and putting a lot of time in the uh, in the Golden Saucer, and I am happy about that. Anyway, this is spoilers for the story. If you've come in here, be wary of the spoilers. Uh, if you care about spoilers, this is towards the end of Stormblood, about to start Shadowbringers. So, uh, careful. Be wary of spoilers. You would have me ask the Emperor himself. Well, mayhap there is wisdom in that. If we can skirt the storm of his displeasure, we may yet come to our answers, even if it does mean sailing close to the wind. All right. Before we talk with Alizé, I'm going to go use the bathroom and get another snack. Be right back.
back with Apple. I have Apple with me. If you're wondering what specifically, they're Gala Apple, my favorite one. You've spoken with everyone then? Good. Now, all that remains is to await the pleasure of the Emperor and hope that we fare better at the second attempt. Now then, who would have the floor? Before we resume, I wish to offer you an apology. After you graciously accepted our invitation to discuss an armistice, we have done naught but rebuke you at every opportunity. I believe I speak for all of us when I say we are deeply sorry for our discourtesy. I'll admit your familiarity with our affairs surprised me and served to remind me how little I know of yours. Yep, gotta be as polite as possible to the this god emperor man. I think all here can understand the desire to reclaim one's homeland, but why expand further? That is my question. If I may, the answer can be found in the imperial doctrine they took great pains to impart to my people. Recognizing the threat icons posed to the world, Solus Zos Galvus decreed that they were to be eradicated. To this end, he began a campaign to unite all lands under the Galian banner. Or so we were taught. Yet the Emperor only reached the burn, the Baron said to have been laid waste by icons, after conquering all the lands that lay between. What is more, I am quite certain the practice of summoning was not nearly so widespread in the days before the Empire's founding. Yep. <clears throat> when you put it like desperate. that, it all starts to sound like an excuse, doesn't it? But to distract from what? Why are you really waging this war? Yeah, it's like, sure, stopping primal summonings is a good thing, but it's so coincidental that they just so happen to be summoned a lot more frequently once the Empire came to power. Is the first time we've heard the song? Nope, we've heard it a few times before. Finally, you ask the right question. I can but hope you heed mine answer and at last accept the righteousness of our cause. My goal is this, to return the world to the way it once was, the way it was always meant to be. And what do you mean by that? In doing so, mankind will be made whole once more. And what do you mean by that? We've tried to hear you out, and you've made some good points. No longer will we suffer from the dissension born of our differences. There will be but one race, a perfect race, as we were when time began. And you went full Nazi and lost me. All right, okay. What in Rolga's name are you talking about? I am talking about the origins of the star, of the source and its 13 reflections. At the instant of the great sundering, t'was not only the world that was shattered, but mankind itself. Thus were we divided into myriad races, each with its own unique imperfections. Hey, I like my cat ears. That is why man looks upon his neighbor and feels fear and hatred, why he wages war, why he kills his brother. Uh, you all in your own way have proven as much today. The peace you seek is but a fleeting solution to a fundamental problem. Okay. One which calls for more drastic measures. I, I, I don't know that becoming one race will actually fix that. To bring about everlasting peace, our worlds must be rejoined. I think you've been sipping the Asian Kool-Aid a little bit too hard there, buddy. That 
is the goal the Empire would see realized. The glorious future unto which we shall one day shepherd mankind. A rejoining of worlds. I have heard this tale of the source and its reflections before. How do you know if we don't try? Well, because apparently, according to the Warriors of Darkness we met before, uh, it means destroying the world. Are these not the self-same desires as the Asians? Emperor Varys, do not trust in their words. They will lead you to your doom. My father thought to use them, but in the end, he succumbed to their temptations. He embraced summoning like so many other pawns before him. Do not tell us you mean to do the same. <laughs> to be a pawn, free from the burden of choice would be a blessing. Ah, no free will. Good. But I forswore that privilege the day I learned that the Galian Empire was built by the hand of an Asian. Oh, He's basically become like full-on nihilist where nothing matters, none of his choices mattered, so he's like, fuck it. Let's do what they say. What? I think Varus is grass, very scared yes. grasping at straws. Absolutely. My grandsire, the former emperor, is of their number. And who better to build an empire capable of bringing about the calamitous change we desire? Whether he'll admit it or not, Varus doesn't believe he can win. He believes the only way is to follow the Asians. Would you condemn me for this alliance? For bowing to the will of these shadowy masters when the prize is true and lasting peace? And it is consistent with the Garlean belief that the man with the bigger stick is all that matters. And right now, he believes the Asian has the biggest stick. Your prize is a lie. Your masters are demons. I come not to conquer, but to liberate. To free man from the prison of divergence. Imagine a world united. One perfect race beneath Ugh. a single standard. It's saying, saying that does not make your... your case better, Varus. Uh, can you stop saying that phrase? It's not really making you look good. Buddy. <laughs> An army before whose might these servants of darkness and light would fly as leaves in a storm, never again to meddle in man's affairs. Don't Asians want to destroy the world? They, they, well, to them, destroying the world is a means to an end, and the end is one perfect race, apparently. We would be the masters of our own fate. He believes that we would become as the Asians are by destroying our world and joining all the reflections. I bid you join me, not as subjects of Garlemald, but of a new nation. And together we shall win freedom for ourselves and generations yet unborn. You want to trigger another half dozen calamities. You can't be serious. Have you forgotten how many died? There will be no one left. Do you truly imagine we would aid you in your bloodletting? It is unthinkable, unconscionable. And what is the alternative? To be as cattle waiting for slaughter? I would have us work together that we might take fate into our own hands. Into your hands, perhaps. But what of the other worlds, your radiance? With every calamity, you obliterate a star and every soul that dwells on it. Yep, that too. 
and the Asians. We are all but tiny, momentary specks within an indifferent universe. We cannot hope to oppose them until we have been made whole once more. You don't know that. You don't know that. We've done it. Fuck, Gaius can Are speak these to his experience the with words it. of Garlemald's ruler? The flaws and foibles which you so abhor are what make us who we are. Every nation, even yours, Emperor Varys, is made whole through the combination of these imperfections. The strengths of one compensating for the weaknesses of another. Yeah, we killed La Habrea and Nabrialis. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others, fostering community and cooperation. That the protector of an empire should not only reject these fundamental truths, but seek to change them at so dear a cost to life is indefensible. Oh wait, no, we didn't kill, yeah, we didn't kill La Habrea, uh, Thoradin did. <laughs> But still. Such a man is not fit to govern. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, Nanamo. And you, warrior of light, would you refuse me as well? We can beat the Asians as we are. Thank you very much. You may have the bigger stick. It would seem the Alliance is of one mind on this matter. Varus Sos Galvis, you may have the bigger stick, but we have many sticks. And anybody who plays D&D knows that action economy rules. You Aeosians never cease to disappoint me. Though I suppose I have only myself to blame for expecting more from savages. This discussion is at an end. I bid you make ready for our next meeting. It will not be at the negotiating table. You know what? Credit where it's due. It's nice that he makes a formal declaration of war this time. At least gives us time to prepare. Yeah, and they call us the savages. Manners, if nothing else, yeah. Least we tried. I love this theme. Ba -ba 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 -ba. the banners together twin adders why can't you be normal <laughs> like all of them are are straight and rectangular and then there's there's the twin adder <laughs> yeah green is doma yep there it is emmerich the Asians are terrible beings indeed that they would found an entire nation to further their dark designs it would seem that the Empire's history is as sinister as Ishgard's own. Twin Adder ain't straight and it's proud, yep. Yeah. Ah, land of the gaze. I came back, uh, back to find Doma's advance party ready and waiting for battle. So as worrying as our little chat with the Emperor was, it did buy enough time for at least some of our allies to arrive. Alright, I think, is this the one? The Face of War. Uh, nope. Three more after this. Or two more after this. I'm not sure what I was expecting from our meeting with the Emperor, but it wasn't that. Still, a 
At least we know now what he's really after. Aye, a future built on a mountain of bodies. I too want the Asians dead, but not at any cost. The last of the reinforcements from Dorma arrived not long ago. I pray it will be enough. Given the Emperor's stated goal, this is a battle we can ill afford to lose. If the Galleons come in force, we may not have much say in the matter, even with our combined strength. We knew from the first that the odds would be against us. But if there is even the slightest chance of victory, we must do everything in our power to seize it. We must seize it, full stop. Here, here. The two of you are to join an irregular unit and support the main host. I won't bother asking if you're minded to fight. Yes, hello, I am the heavy armor. After coming this far, how could I not? And for once, there's no one around to countermand me. Not that they would. Not even my brother. <laughs> but we all know who really made the difference. Ready to frighten some Garleans? Hi, my name is Heavy Artillery. And I'm ready to fire. I wouldn't want to be on their side. <laughs> Might I ask you to accompany the Dorman contingent? They are strangers here, and your presence would do much to raise their spirits. No, black mages are siege units. I am heavy artillery. We would be honored. When our people stride out with you in their midst, I dare say the Eorzeans will feel an ilm taller themselves. High spirits have a way of spreading. Dragoon is an airstrike, uh, yeah. What I wouldn't give to join you. But my duties as field commander will not allow it. I'll leave the front lines in your capable hands. What is Red Mages? Uh, suppressing fire. Oh yeah, Red Comrades, Mage's flashbang. Yeah. Ready your arms. The hour of battle has come. Red Mage's concussive shots. May the crystal guide us to victory. Yes, ninjas are black ops. Uh, dragoons are airstrikes. I think all the tanks are, as the name implies, tanks or front linemen. Warrior is a battering ram. Yeah, you guys, you guys have better ideas than I do. Warrior is a battering ram. Uh, Paladin is the. Uh, Since the others couldn't be here, we'll have to fight twice as hard. If Alphano wakes to find the Imperials have won, I shall never hear the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> the Paladins are um, riot team, I guess. I know that's not military, but phalanx, yeah. It's strange. I thought I would be terrified when the fighting started. I should be terrified. But with you at our side, I can't help feeling everything is going to be all right. So please, don't you dare leave me alone. I got you, bro. No matter what happens, we have to survive together. Together. Would uh, Dragoon be more odious to than airstrikes? No, you see, they're an airstrike because they are the thing. They are the bomb being dropped. All right, Gimlet Dark. So I don't know where everyone else is. I guess I can go to the exit and bring in the party members. All right. Okay, let's see who is on the list. Uh, I think Megalar is off to work. 
So they are uh, not available. Uh, rival, let's see. Rival, rival, is rival here? Rival, I think, is not. So Ash, is Ash here? You are up on the list, Ash. Uh, I guess they are. Okay, Ash is not here. Uh, Ko Kosa'a, is Kosa'a here? Yeah, there you are. Hello, hey, we've got our airstrike. Rival said 99, aw, okay. Uh, Kosa'a, Valerie, is Valerie available? Yep, there she is. Got Valerie and Dracon. Dracon wireless earbuds. Is Dracon here? Dracon is not. So we'll skip them. Mimi May. Mimi Nay, sorry. You will be on the list. And then I'll add the rest of these people. So Dark Quibbles is already on there. Helen. Uh, Saranthos. Oh, Dracon! Oh, Dracon is here. Uh, Mimi Nay, I'm so sorry. You mind relinquishing your spot for Dracon since he is here? He was next on the list. I'll put you down as the next, though. Uh, sure. Thank you so much, Mimine. Thank you. Much, much appreciated. All right, Dracon. So, Dracon, I'll cross him out, and Mimine, you will be... I'll put a star next to your name. <laughs> Uh, so Dark Quibbles, then Helen, uh, well, Saranthos. Oh, you ca you went last time, okay. Uh, Nadia, I'll add Nadia. Uh, who else is left? Uh, Sammy. Sammy. Well, you're part of my A squad. Let's see, Lind. I don't know if you're watching the stream, Lind, but I'll add you. And then Crystal, I think? Yeah, Crystal Blue. All right, and uh, I think that's everyone that I haven't added to the list yet. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to be better about rotating people out so that everybody gets a chance. All right, everybody ready? Uh, Yukino, do I have Yukino? Is she here? Uh, oh, there she is, Yukino. He, no. All right, Gimlet Dark. We're gonna unsync this one as well, just to speed it up ever so slightly. Oh wait, actually, since we can get Mog Tomb Tome Stones, uh, we can only get those if we sync it, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, might as well sync it. Might as well, so we can get some Mog Mog Tomes. Here we go. Let's fight the fight the Garleans head on. Did I get the jacket, by the way? Uh, I did not. I'm not too interested in the jacket. It's not my style. Dungeon we fight with NPCs. Oh, that's cool. Leave this to me. Yeah, even synced up, we're gonna do fine. All right, White Mage, flashbang. Also, this music.
Oh, the, love the Garlean theme. Ba, 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 ba. Spread out and be wary of artillery fire. Trust me, I am artillery fire. So let's see, we've got artillery, we've got flashbang, we've got, uh, uh, what is it? Airstrike, and we've got siege unit. Awesome. We have an airstrike. Hello, come, come here, come here. Oh, the Alamigo theme is in here. Aw. Oh. God, they put everything in here. Stormblood theme. Storm of blood, all of blood, all of fallen brothers. This was a nice goodbye to the expansion. Oh yeah, the war expansion having just a big ol' just war dungeon. Straight up war. I also like that it, the, uh, the dungeon theme plays throughout the entire dungeon. Not quite yet. I'm a caster now. There we go. Go get it off. Yeah, slide casting for the win. Really invent. I don't know what that is, but. Oh, it's a big line. Garlean pizzas. Oh, F. Rip Dracon. He just put his. his ley lines down, too. Oh, that sucks. Sad. Forgetting that I have a uh, passage of arms at level 70. Should have used that more during the Tsukiyomi fight. Nope, not getting out of this chair. I'm casting mode right now. There we go. Very nice. Ooh, one thing. If the aiming top drops, you mind mind if I call dibs? I'm gonna call dibs on the aiming top. I have been wanting the aiming top from this dungeon for the longest time, but it never drops for me. Cause like, it's the alliance set. The alliance set looks really nice from this dungeon. In fact, uh, the alliance top for healers is what I use uh, for my white mage because it's so good. Maybe chest is nice too for all us reapers. Oh yeah. I mean, all the armor in this dungeon looks amazing. Super fashionable. Oh jeez, shit just falling apart. Oh, this is awesome.
I used the striking top for this dungeon on my Sam Glam for the longest time. Oh yeah, is that the one where it's like sleeveless? Where it's like a long coat and sleeveless? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, and we get to see everyone. Also, I love this. Ready? I love this this black mage in a white mage stance. <laughs> yeah. Pippin! Oh, it's Pippin! Look at him go! Alright, I'm just gonna hollow ground this. GPS away, healer! Hell yeah! Now don't worry, Dracon, we adjust to you. They're all here sort of feel. Yeah, I really like that. It's like everyone fighting the, the, the Empire, everyone coming together to fight the Empire. Prometheus. No, he stole sun, uh, the sun to give to the mortals. No! My Requiesca! This boss is so wide. Fuck your opener bosses, yeah. Spin. Let's just puzzle that. Please, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. Thank goodness I didn't use my requiesce cat. I was like, I'm about to. It's about to be time. Very nice. Oh, that's so cool. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I like to pretend they're smites. There we go. Da, 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 da. <gasps> Emmerich! Oh, look at the Ishgardian Knights! Look at them go! Me. The Knights of the Holy Sea! What's up, Ian? Welcome back. Uh, just notice if Kosa was a monk or a ninja, we would have the original FF party makeup. Oh, you know what? What's funny, though, we are the party makeup of the Crab Guide party. 
Because in, in the crap guides, I put one Paladin, White Mage, uh, Dragoon, and Black Mage. Look at that. I, I put White Mage and Black Mage because I thought them the most, like, iconic uh, Final Fantasy characters. You know, like, everyone recognized White and Black Mage, right? I thought Dragoon because Dragoon is also pretty iconic. And Paladin, because it's the most, like, you know, it's the most tank, you know, basic-looking tank, you know, generally. It's not unique to Final Fantasy, but, you know, your sword and shield, as you would expect for a tank. Plus, I gotta have the sword and shield. As one! Hey, Pippin! Slash. Hello, Colossus. I love having a bla uh, black mage, uh, being a, having a black mage as a dragoon main, dragon eye on a black mage. Yes, I love, I play dancer, so I love giving dance partner to like a black mage or a, uh, or a samurai. Super duper fun. Quickly, to me. Oh. Thank you, Kane. No damage. Get him, Hyun. Self-detonate? Oh, no, you don't. Lease! Oh, or Yugiri. This day you die! Is it random? I've seen Lease knock this thing down before. That's pretty cool. It's random? Neat. Yeah, that's what I thought, because I, I deliberately remember least doing that. He end did it? Ah, uh, that would make sense. All the Stormblood leads. These savages bested our vanguard. Impressive. But in the end, they're only that savages. Well, let us be brief. His radiance awaits. Mm. All right. Which one do you think? Julia or An Ania? Let's go red, because red glowy stuff is always evil. That's a signature, like, gun blade technique. It seems like most of the Garlean soldiers are trained to make that, like, X slash with their gun sword. Saddest ley lines. And let's see where it goes. Okay, here's the safe spot. This is cool. 
playing tennis with their, like, slash. High five, we hit nobody. Hell yeah, we're so cool. Tag in. Safe spot, not anymore. Plasma. No, you don't. Oh, jeez. All right, you're dead. You can stop fighting now. I said you can stop fighting. You're dead. Okay, now I'm gonna do their jammy jam one more time. You should feel honor, savages. Few who have witnessed this twice. I'll stand right here. Hello. Ah, oh, perfect time to LB3. Uh, never mind. Too early there, friendo. <laughs> Premature media relation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it looked cool, though. I saw what you were going for, and I thought it was very cool. Released too early. It happens to the best of us. We have served our purpose. Come, we shall withdraw for now. Oh, they don't die. Okay, so maybe we'll learn about them. Yay, joy! All right, let's see. All right, let's hope. Huh? Ah, oh, it's pants. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, all of you. Oh my gosh, there is fire going on in the background. Okay, thank you so much, Dracon, Valerie, and Kosa, for joining me in this. I respect it, Cat Boy Dragoon. Hell yeah. All right. Let's get on with the story, shall we? Dark Quibbles team beat us? Ah! Oh! There you are, and none the worse for wear. Indeed. I had hoped we might do more to help, but there seems to be no one left to fight. <laughs> A tactical withdrawal, perhaps? We should give chase. Finish them off while we have the chance. Hmm. Imagine the other surprise when they wake to find the war already won. Yeah. Oh, no. The light will expunge all life. Only you can forestall the calamity. Throw wide the gates. No! 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 Not... Like... That was it. Come on. Oh no, don't tell me. Are you all right? Quickly, we must get her back to the encampment.
Oh, my whole family's gone. Ah! So the Garleans have been routed, have they? Well done. Though this exchange was no more than a test of our strength, like us all. They won't be taking any chances now that the Emperor has joined the fray. They want to take their time, whittle down our defenses. Still, with your help and that of the Eastern allies, we've passed the first. We passed the first test. Our line is broken. As for Alize, well, she's in good hands over at the infirmary. My lord, the Carurgians has have completed their examination of Mistress Alize, and it is as we feared. She is locked in a slumber without any outward cause. Just like the others, damn it all. Aye, the Garleans picked a fine time to come knocking. Five scions incapacitated, and with the enemy on our doorstep, I cannot spare the men to assist in the search for a cure. The best I can do is to see to it that Alizé is escorted safely back to the Rising Stones. You, Giddy, and I will return to our encampment. The main contingent of our forces from the Far East is under sail, and all must be made ready for their arrival. I'll not keep you then. Safe travels, you guys. And then there was one. Judging by the Garleans' recent movements, or lack thereof, they won't be launching another offensive in the immediate future. You should return to the Rising Stones. Given the plight of your fellow Scions, I can understand you can feel on edge, but you'll be no good to anyone without rest. I kind of do like this, though, that, like, we're on our own. Like, now, you know, Warrior of Light has a chance to kind of express themselves on their own with nobody to fall back on. Yeah, I'll disband the party. Good idea. Hey, Sammy. How you doing? Hey, I have that top of my warrior, too. I like that top. Thank you for taking me along, Joe. I'm going to go to sleep now. Good night, Valerie. Hope you have a great night. Hey, Turvy. What's up? <gasps> Hori Boulder! He's the quest giver. Nice. Ah, Victor, welcome home. Word has it that you and Mistress Alizé have given the Garlands quite a thrashing. Speaking of whom, where is Mistress Alizé? I was certain she would have arrived by now. By the Twelve, not her too. Alker and I will ready the infirmary for her arrival. We will also need to be sending, uh, send a message to Tataru post haste. Well, then I had something other than grim tidings to share with her. And with you too, for that matter. It grieves me to report that Archon's, the Archon's condition remains unchanged. As we speak, Coltane, Kryl, and Master Matoya continue to explore every possible avenue. Alas, their efforts have yet to bear fruit. But all is not lost. We are still hale and whole, after all. Though I suspect you would be- you must be tired from your journey. You should rest, my friend. Leave the worrying to us. For the time being, at least. And thus is the end of 4.5. 4.6 will be two more quests. Or 4.56, rather. Meanwhile, at the border of Alamigo. Ah, uh, hello, Xenos. Safe to assume you're not starting Stormblood today? No, that's tomorrow. Ooh. 
Oop, whoops. All right, 4.56. Zelidinos. Ah, Victor, yours is a welcome face indeed in these troubling times. Though if you've come to inquire about our stricken brothers and sisters, I'm afraid I have naught to report. Coltenay and the others have continued their tireless search for answers, and I too have done all in my power to assist them, alas. My apologies for the intrusion. I was told Master Alphino had been brought here and wished to see if his condition had improved. Uh Oh, it's Max uh Maximus. Hey, nice new getup. Master Victor, I've heard about the your part played in driving back the Empire's forces. Thank you. That you were able to stop them, if only for a short while, gives me hope. Uh, you you so happy about your own nation being beaten? I realize how strange such words must sound coming from a Garlean's lips, but I speak them out of the love I bear for my homeland, because I wish to see an end to the bloodshed. That is why I chose to share all that I know with the Alliance. Oh, fucking bro. Maxa bro. Though I will surely be branded a traitor, I am content to bear that ignominy. It will seem a small price to pay if it helps to prevent this conflict from escalating any further. Hell yeah, treason. But enough of my prattling. The war is not, uh, not what brought me all this way. I came to see Master Alphino. Oh, an acquaintance of Victor and Alphino, are you? Well, far be it for me to turn away good company. If you will follow me, sir. Man, everyone... Uh, Alphino is like collecting big brothers. First he got Astinian, and then he's got me, and he's got Maxima, then he got Arnvald. When word reached to me that Alphino had returned, it seemed only right that I visit him. Poor lad, it pains me to see him thus, but I take solace in the knowledge that he is safe and well cared for. He fought valiantly at the burn. The Popularis could not have with wished for a more common ally. I know not how he came to be so afflicted, but I pray a cure can be found soon. On the unrelated note, you may be interested to know that I traveled here in the company of another acquaintance of yours. Who would that be? He awaits my return at Northern Silvertier, and I am certain he would be glad to see you, assuming you can spare the time, that is. Who would he know that I would also know? Who, who do you suppose is waiting for him at Northern Silvertier? Maybe Kryle? No, Kryle's busy doing stuff. Yeah, maybe Sid. Could be. I don't know. I guess he would know of Sid. I'm pretty sure all Garleans have heard of Sid. He and he developed the airship after all. Danny, how you hanging in there, buddy? Doing a good job out there? Serving nice drinks. They're both Garleans, so guys, not all Garleans know each other. <laughs> how you doing, bud? Good to hear. Alright, I gotta go do, go do some more work. Rest, no rest for the righteous. Yeah, hashtag not all garlands. Gosh. Oh, <gasps> it's the Enterprise, right? I'm pretty sure. I'd recognize those blue sails anywhere. Yeah, Garland Ironworks. Ah, oh, there you are. I was beginning to think you would not come. Hey, the boy! I haven't seen you all expansion! It sounds like you've been through the mill. You should have called me. 
Though I must confess, tracking down missing souls isn't exactly within my field of expertise. As you may have surmised, I heard much of M Master Garland's uh, growing up in Garlemald. Indeed, he has long been a source of inspiration to me. Most Garlians would say he is a traitor, that he turned his back on his country. We of the Popularis, however, consider him a revolutionary, a man willing to defy the Empire's dreams of subjugation, that his inventions might bring about a better future for all mankind. Please, revolutionary is a term best reserved for my work. I am but an Imperial Defector who thought to aid another Imperial Defector. Aww, bros. Whatever Master Garland says, I am humbled to find myself in such distinguished company. Yeah, he's practically a celebrity slash war slash, slash criminal on on the uh, on the run. Speaking of distinguished company, we heard that uh, Raubon from Raubon that you ran into an old friend in the burn. Is it true? Gaia still lives. Yeah, for better, or for worse. Like most in the army, I never had the privilege of seeing the Legatus without his mask. To think I, ha I walked halfway across the burn in the presence of the Black Wolf. And he claims to have severed ties with the Empire to hunt Asians, did he? Careful, Maxima, Nero's the jealous type. Yeah, Nero's gonna be really upset when Sid, uh, to know that Sid found a new, more respectable boyfriend. After his humbling at the Praetorium, one would think that he'd have the good sense to stay dead. Should we meet again, I shall be sure to tell him so. Commander Aldine also spoke of the Alliance's meeting with the Emperor, though I still labor to believe that he, uh, what he told us. Did his Radiance really claim that Garlemald was founded by the Assians? Uh, but that is madness. The very notion is absurd. Every fiber of my being rails against it, and yet I see there is no escaping the truth. From the very founding of my homeland, my brothers and sisters have laid down their lives in service to a lie. The Assians must be stopped to save my people, to save all peoples. Yeah, I mean, behind all the imperialism and nationalism and a bunch of other isms, there are people. In, in Garlemald, normal people living about their lives that don't realize the pain that their nation is causing. For all the Empire's many crimes, even I did not suspect. Even I did not suspect. Had I known, I would have left a lot sooner. But that is in the past. Here in the present, we must apply ourselves to the problems of how the Garlians, uh, how the Empire's ambitions may be thwarted. Not only in Eorzea, but in the Far East as well. The Ironworks will spare no effort to achieve that end. Seriu's wall was a good start, but we can do more, and we will. We'll show them what it means to achieve freedom through technology. Begging your pardons, I bear a message for the Warrior of Light. Go on. Commander Aldine requests your presence at the Alliance headquarters in Alamigo. He will discuss matters of strategy at your earliest convenience. You got it. Ah, yes, the inevitable messenger. I knew it wouldn't be long before duty called you away. Time, no doubt, being of the essence. Could I tempt you to a ride aboard the Excelsior? If there is a faster way to Raubon's side, I would personally apologize to the commander for keeping him waiting. I... Sid, listen, buddy. I'm Aorzean. I can teleport. <laughs> but I appreciate it. It's a nice gesture, nonetheless. Thank you. Oh, whoops. That's the wrong thing. There we go. Sorry about that, chat. I swear, every time you board my airship, you seem to be barreling headlong into danger. And every time you somehow contrive to emerge victorious, which, of course, is an admirable skill. But no one is invincible, Victor. Not even you. So please, take care of yourself out there. <laughs> stupid Aorzeans and their stupid magic. I pray you remain safe on the front lines. Though ill-equipped to join the fray, I shall do all I can to assist from headquarters. Good night, Minori. Thanks for joining in. My colleagues and I have been tasked with evacuating uh, casualties by air. See that you aren't among them, eh? Ha! 
Have you read what the devs have said about the basis for Garlemald? I assume, like, I don't know, Britain? It kind of looks Victorian. Commander Aldun is waiting. Victorian slash Gothic. Like, I don't know. It's Rome through and through. Uh, not from what it looks. Roman. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. You're here. Good. I summoned you to discuss strategy. But first, I would apprise you of the Garlean's movements. So upon us speaking with Raban, several cutscenes will play in sequence. Here we go. Russia, Germany. Could be. There have been several skirmishes along the border, but as yet, neither side has delivered a decisive blow. We had long assumed that the Garlians would overwhelm us in a straight fight, but we seem to be gaining ground, albeit slowly. As to why that might be, the most likely explanation is that they have yet to commit all their forces. Still, we're winning, and our latest intelligence suggests the Emperor has retreated back to Garlemald. They're trying to out-endure us, I think, um, I guess. In light of this, we're considering launching an offensive with the aim of pushing the front line forward and giving ourselves some room to breathe. <laughs> Biggest sauce, Dickus! Commander! The Imperials! They've broken through our defenses to the east! <laughs> if I pl ever play a 14 based DD game, I'm gonna make a Garlean named Biggest Zos Dickus. What? Our scouts say their forces are being led by Lord Xenos. Oh. Lord Heon and Commander Hext have taken their troops to provide support, but we don't know how long they can hold out. So they've been biding their time, waiting for his arrival, have they? Very well. Send word to our allies, requesting reinforcements for the front line. Should the worst come to the worst, I may need to enter the fray myself. But what of you? Do you still have the strength to fight? Hmm. You need only say the word. Also, yes, Sauce is the middle name of the Emperor. I would have to figure out the uh, naming convention for Garlic. Much obliged. Given the choice, I'd take you over a hundred soldiers. Aw, thanks, Ra Oh, you charmer, Raban. Ah, oh, no. Why won't they open? Please, I bid you open. What's wrong? Is it the voice again? Are you sure you're in a fit state to do this? Well, what choice do I have? May Ralga grant us strength. Give him hell, lad. I, for my part, will defend this place to my dying breath. Meanwhile, at the border of Alamigo. <laughs> sock on D's not. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Garlean sock on D's nuts. Let's go, Lise. Expansion in one like pat cycle. Well, not one pat cycle, but yeah. Get him. Ready? Yotan. Okay. Ah, insta dot. Oh, it's my gap closer. Okay. Second win. Yeah. He's really strong. I am 
here. I am here slashing samurai. Pressing one, it is really easy. This one's for you, Ida. Oh. Samurai slice. I'm pressing one. Okay, we want to go over here, I think. And then run. Yeah. Slice, slice, slice. I did choose easy, didn't I? The warrior of light is still nowhere to nowhere in sight. Ah, oh, come on, Victor Quibbles. Hurry your stubby little cat legs. Oh, it's time gated. I gotcha. Hold your ground until the warrior of light uh, arrives. Gotcha. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, you giddy. There we go. Threaten the needle there. Ah, I see. 45, 46. Gotcha. Shouldn't I do this fight as a samurai? No. I think there's a... Plus, my samurai is only level 50 right now. Victor doesn't do cardio. No, I'm a tank. I'm so... Behold, a taste of my true power. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no. It's a. Uh. Here it comes! Not a pentagram. Oh no, lease! It's a four square. Set, uh, the weave of a shinobi power. Oh no! Come on, Yugiri. The art of my forebears. Tetragram. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Stack. 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 Yes. Shake a, a bag of catnip. Victor, look! It's your favorite snack! Ninjas are supposed to be quiet. Oh no! Ah! You get it! Garlean, Garlean weaponry and magic? That's cheating! Damn you! Oh. Magic with a Garlean body. 
That's hardly fair. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Still, he must be stopped, no matter the cost. I got you here. Ah, bringer of light. It has been too long. No words to mark our reunion? <laughs> so be it. Equilibrium must be restored, and only your death will redress the balance. Oh, shit. Get him. We will suffer your interference no longer. Time for games has passed. Wow, no joy. I almost missed Xenos. He was at least having fun. He's using Nebrialis's attack on you? Oh. Blood of Darkness, yep. Vein Splitter. Splitter, uh. guys don't look at the deaths of their enemies Mother chose her champion well. Yet, for all your strength, you will still fail. Ah! Oh, come on. Please. I beseech you. Please, man, your aim is really off right now. Not the time. Someone calls to you. Too late, alas. Literally the worst time you could have called me. He clearly doesn't respect do not disturb. This is weird. 
At last, I found you. Bitch! Please, there's no cause for alarm. There's every cause for alarm. I am about to get shanked. Though, I confess, this is not where I had intended to meet. But the place of our meeting is of no consequence. Like the war you wage. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. Okay, yeah, but I am about to get stabbed by a man. The better path leads you here, to me. I have need of your strength. You have to send me back right fucking now. Right now. The battle is over. The danger passed. But your work is not yet done. Go to the Crystal Tower. I have left something for you near its base. It will serve as a beacon of sorts. One which I pray will help you on your journey. All you need do is find it. I will take care of the rest. Soon, we will throw wide the gates. And the path to the first will be yours to walk at last. Oh, okay, good. No stab wounds. No broken swords. Where is this? Oh, <gasps> Emmerich. You're awake. Thank heavens. <laughs> Xenos, the Garlians, what are you talking about? We just defeated Nidhogg yesterday. What happened? Do you recall the confrontation with Xenos? You were the first to come to the aid of Mistress Lys and the others on the front line. Okay. In the midst of your duel, it is said you faltered and that the Crown Prince seized the opportunity to deliver a mortal blow. So I'm dead. We're all dead. Yet before his blade could find its mark, he was distracted by the arrival of a second adversary who bore you away from the battlefield and into the hands of our chirurgeons. Oh? Lest you wonder, he left before you awoke. <laughs> As is his wont. Ah. A Stinian never was one for emotional farewells. <laughs> Though Zeno spest it all before him, the battle clearly took its toll, for he retreated shortly after your rescue. Seeing this, the remaining Imperial forces decided discretion was the better part of valor and pulled back, allowing us to re-establish our position. We have since received word of renewed unrest in the provinces, doubtless inspired by the efforts of the Aeorzean Alliance and our Far Eastern allies. Nor does the good news end there. We have also come into possession of intelligence suggesting unrest within the Imperial Court. This would certainly explain why both the Emperor and Lord Xenos appear to have abandoned the fight. Hmm. A long-awaited ray of hope in these dark times. What about the Scions? 
Is that Lizay all right? Yet to awake, I'm afraid. But please, concentrate on your own recovery for now. You have carried the hopes of some half dozen nations, and we are all eternally grateful for your efforts. But no one is without their limits, not even you. You overestimate, you underestimate Leave this my power. Fight to us, my friend. I've been streaming for nearly nine hours. Your rest. Ah, but before I forget. Yes? <gasps> I was asked to deliver a message as soon as you awoke. Damn. A reminder that you are not alone, though many of your allies have fallen. When you are well and rested, you are to return home, where friends will be waiting for you. Now, if you will excuse me, I must return to the front. May we meet again soon, under happier circumstances. Am I still going to do that dating sim? I don't know. Maybe. Well, this is a most unexpected surprise. I thought you can find to bed. Oh, <gasps> Dad! When I heard that you had collapsed on the battlefield, I confessed I feared the worst. But you, with you standing here before me, I see now that the reports of your defeat were greatly exaggerated, thank the fury. As long as we have you, Ms. Master Quibbles, history suggests that we have a fighting chance. Speaking of fighting, you may be surprised to hear that the war's effects can already be felt even here in Ishgard. In anticipation of a need for reinforcements, Aswarel will soon be departing to the front lines with a contingent of our finest knights. I would advise you to stay until your strength has returned, but I know it would be an exertion in futility. Indeed, I suspect you have already decided on your next destination. Dark days lie ahead, of that I have no doubt. But the light of hope shall ever guide our steps so long as we have the will to press onwards. And press onward we must. Farewell, my friend. I pray our next meeting will be under happier, happier circumstances. Hey, that's what Emmerich said. Last quest, returning to the Rising Stones, a requiem for heroes. Now we start my favorite expansion. I've done my waiting, all 20 streams of it. Am I gonna watch the Shadowbringers trailer? Oh yeah. Doing good work, doing good work, keeping company. All right, nice, okay. We applaud your hard work, hard work. I played video games. That's all I did. Taru, it's okay, I'm fine, I'm alive, I'm all well and good. I didn't get whisked away. <gasps> By the twelve! I don't believe it! <laughs> I'm fine, everybody. 
Hug, hug button. They need to give us a hug animation. I rushed back as soon as I could. I swear, my heart nearly stopped when I heard you'd collapse like the others. What in heaven's name is going on? Well, see, I fought this guy named Xenos, and uh, turns out he was actually a Lydibus, which was one of the ass. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. Oh, well, that's helpful. And what else did he say? The better path leads to him? Hmm. <gasps> if his is the voice you've all been hearing, perhaps the others are with him. Uh, maybe. Sir sure. Emmerich said the fighting had reached a stalemate, didn't he? But if that monster masquerading as Xenos comes back? Thancred, Yastola, Uriange, Alphano, Alize. You're going to need all of them on your side to defeat him. And I forbid you from going to face him on your own. <laughs> Do you hear me? I'll get him back. So if you must leave, go and find the others. Bring them home. As for where to start, you said the stranger had left a beacon for you at the Crystal Tower, right? Right. But how are you to find it, now that the tower has been sealed shut? There has to be a way. If anyone would know, it's Sid and the researchers of St. Koinax find. Don't you worry, we'll find that beacon for you. And thus, the wait for Shadowbringers. Oh, meanwhile, at the Imperial Palace. I pray you have good reason for abandoning the front. How could I remain there while the rumor that my son is possessed by a demon spreads like a sickness here at home? Didn't exactly hide it on the battlefield either. I will fight for the throne a second time. But what of you? Did you not tell me you would destroy Eorzea's champion with the ease that one might swat a fly? A minor setback. He will not escape me again. Where is your grandsire? I would have words with him. How should I know? Do you hide from each other's sight as well? I imagine he's doing what all Asians do. Hmm. He must have found a way to take advantage of this turmoil. You guys gonna work Men on your cooperation skills? To be played with Asian. You underestimate us at your peril. This war will not be decided by you and yours. Man must choose his own fate, and I, for my part, will do all within my power to see Garlemald emerge victorious. Pray forgive the intrusion, Your Radiance, but the requested preparations are now complete. 
We stand ready to begin production of Black Rose upon your order. Uh-oh. And that has been Stormblood. Thank you so much, everybody, coming along for this journey. We only have one expansion left to be caught up. Just one more. Damn, Lisa's stacked. Sorry, I like Lisa. She's very pretty. One more. One more. It's actually great that the expansion got delayed, for me anyway, because now I have uh, two more weeks. Or one and a half weeks, I guess. Because today would be the day that uh, early access would have started. Oh, look at Hien. Two weeks. Alright. Is Revolution used anywhere in Stormblood like Dragonsong was? Oh yeah, plenty of times. All right. Taru. I knew you'd be all right. And to celebrate your return, I made you this, a brand new traveling outfit. Oh, I do hope it fits. Oh, a new one. That's right, we did get one at the end of um, Heavensward. Um, uh, but now is not the time to fuss over your measurements. I must go and speak with the research of St. Coinox find. Uh, you go and rest while we track down that, that beacon. Alright, the one nobody likes. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an acquired taste. It's on the edgier side. It doesn't quite fit everyone's style. Uh, fit like any style like the Heavensward one does. It's a very different style. Actually, we didn't get one at the end of Shadowbringers, did we? Huh. Uh oh. My enemy. My friend. Had I been but a step faster. So Xenos can body jump, apparently. Savages! A pity your hunt leads you elsewhere. Not that I am surprised. Yep, that's May Xenos. you find joy in it. Grow stronger, more savage, and savor every triumph. In the meantime, I will reclaim that which is rightfully mine. Apparently that's how his echo works, is it allows him to body jump. Back to the Crystal Tower we go. Sealed off by Grahatia so long ago, back in ARR. We'll not be able to open it. We can certainly search around it.
That's a good screenshot moment. In the midst of a requiem for heroes, a voice rings out across time and space. In fields of tranquil light, sow you seeds of darkness. All right. Oh, spoiler. Oh, wait. Oh, just spoilers. Oh, that was close. That was very close. In the words of Yoshi P, you may not consider Xenos your friend, but he very truly considers you his. Yeah, it's very it's very much a one-sided relationship. It's very much a one-sided relationship. Now, last thing I want to do this stream is uh, watch that good old trailer, shall we? This trailer kind of has spoilers, but not really, in that it shows what's going on with things, but not spoiling things that happen in the expansion. So if you want no spoilers, like absolutely none whatsoever, it does, there is benefit to waiting to watch this expansion after a certain point in the MSQ. So if you want no spoilers, bow out. But there's ever the, the slightest inkling, teeniest, tiniest of spoiler. It's not big, but it's there are some for those who want to go in blind. But yeah, here we go. of the progression of jobs that Warrior of Light goes through right now. He is an archer, as he was in the 1.0 trailer. And he's flashing back all the other expansions, including the 1.0 trailer as well. And then he's 
gonna go to Boone from Hadward. Dragoon is not working out. So goes Monk from Stormlord. Punch! And then you're like, what? Master Matoya? You stole a what? I will hold the line. It's like, what's happening? What the hell is this? And then you see Chubby Makote, what? Rich assholes? I love the music. I love the showing off of this new area. I love the bunny dancer. Ugh. Also, you can see fuzz on her belly. She's got fuzz all over her. And then I love this part. Zooming up to this crystal tower. Like, what? And then Eternal Wind is playing. Time, what's happening? Become what you must. Oh. So good! Ah, I love the Shadowbringers trailer! I love Shadowbringers! I'm so excited! I can't wait to do it tomorrow! Ah, it's tomorrow! Ah, I love Shadowbringers! I love Shadowbringers so much! Ah, I need a smoke after that? Oh, me too! Ah. Ah. Anyway, we're gonna Shadowbringers tomorrow with a very special guest who will be joining me as well as the next day and then the one after that. I've got a couple of guests lines lined up. Oh, man. But yeah, we're gonna call the stream here. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. We're gonna call the stream here. We're gonna look for somebody to raid. Ah, oh, join me tomorrow. Please join me tomorrow for Shadowbringers. It's my favorite one. Let's see. All right, let's see who's on Twitch. Hmm, hum, 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 hum. Who is online? Who is online? You know what? Bosco's online. Ed Bosco. He is online and doing wrestling right now. So, uh, <laughs> you don't know Edward Bosco, voice actor, good pal, uh, Remy from The Unexpectables, Icon of Sin from Doom Eternal, or, or Doom, the original, I, I don't remember, but he, he voices a lot of cool people. And he's doing WWE right now. Uh, Ward Bosco. How many years the Edward Bosco, yeah. This but yeah, uh, 
What shall our raid message be, everybody? What are you thinking? Stood alone against the storm. What are you thinking? Throw wide the gates. All right, everyone, throw wide the gates. Throw wide the gate. He's not going to have any idea what we're talking about, but I've been trying to get him to try Final Fantasy. But, of course, he is a busy man. But everyone, throw wide the gates. Bye.